On day one, I spawned in as a medieval knight. And look at that, I already have iron gear and 10 hearts. It was a good thing I had the gear because I was immediately attacked by a group of hoglins. Where did you guys come from? Since I had an iron sword, I was able to defeat the first few with no problems. The last, however, started to run away. Hey, get back here. The hoglin ran into the woods and I ran after him. But soon, I couldn't see which way he went. Which way did he go? I ran in the direction he had been going before and soon stumbled on a large fort in the distance. I could see the hoglin looking down at me from the second floor. I started running toward the the entrance of the fort when suddenly the ground opened up and I fell into a dark hole. Ah! 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 Why am I still falling? Just as I was starting to think I might be falling forever, I suddenly landed in a pool of water. <coughs> <coughs> Where am I? I swam out of the pool and saw I was in a dimly lit, dark underground area. And what was this? Now I only have five hearts? I was so confused. Maybe this was all just a bad dream. I saw a good spot to rest and set up a small camp. Maybe if I could fall asleep, I could wake up from this nightmare. On day two, I woke up, still in the same place. I decided it was best that I look around and try to find out what was going on. Level 100. Huh, I guess I better see what's behind this door. I climbed up the stairs and saw another door, which was also labeled. Level 99. 99. Okay, interesting. I'm guessing level 1 is how I get out of here. This is gonna be quite the journey. I better start looking for the door up. As I walked further into the room, I realized that this didn't look like a room at all. The area was a dark jungle, and there was even a sky. This must be some kind of powerful magic. I better start collecting some supplies. Who knows what could be hiding out here? I started by knocking some cocoa beans off a tree, then started punching the trees to collect some wood. After I had gathered a decent amount, I started walking through the trees to look for a door. I soon found a nice pond to stop at to rest. As I rested, I was suddenly attacked by a pack of mungai. What did I do to you? These little guys were vicious. If you saw them from afar, you would probably think they were pretty cute, but it turns out they were all just a bunch of little imposters. Shouldn't you little minions be helping a supervillain somewhere? They put up a tough challenge, but my iron sword was too much for them, and ultimately, they were all defeated. Sheesh, I gotta hurry and find that door. I kept wandering through the forest and eventually saw something glowing off in the distance. Is that it? Is this the door to the next level? I opened it up and headed up the stairs. On day three, I emerged onto level 98. Okay, it looks like that was the door to the next level. I'm glad I didn't run into any more mobs, but I'll have to keep an eye out. Turned out I needed to keep an ear out too, because just then, I heard someone calling for help. Help me, can someone help? Who could that be? I rushed toward the sound of the voice and stumbled upon a man being attacked by a group of mungai. Uh-oh, not more of these fun guys. I hopped in with my iron sword and started slashing away. I could tell they had nearly killed this poor guy. What do you think you're doing? You belong in suit. I swung away until there was only one left, and as I killed the last one, my iron sword broke. Well, I'm glad they're gone, but so is my only weapon. Anyway, how are you doing, buddy? The man rose to his feet. He was clearly hurt, but was hanging on. That was a close one. Thank you for rescuing me. I was a dead man for sure. No problem. Say, do you know what's going on here? Well, one moment I was walking through the forest looking to sell my wares. I'm a traveling merchant, you see. And the next I was falling down what seemed to be an eternal pit. I landed at the bottom and have been trying to make my way out ever since. Sounds like we're in the same boat. If we stick together, we can get out of here faster. C'est magnifique. Let's do it. Oh, zut. The merchant tried to take a couple of steps, but his leg was clearly hurt. It's my leg, but do not fret, mon ami. We will persevere. By the way, my name is Benoit. What is yours? The name's Zozo. Zozo what? Just Zozo. Sorry, I phrased that weird. Let's go! On days 4 to 5, we had made our way up a few floors to level 95. On the previous floor, I had crafted some wooden tools to fend off some weaker mobs, but nothing too major had happened. Benoit's leg was keeping us from moving too fast, but everything was going well so far. Hey, it looks like there's some stone deposits up ahead. Let's try and get some stones for new tools. Benoit took a seat while I got out my wooden pickaxe and started mining out some stone. After I had mined out a decent amount, I put down my crafting table and fashioned together a full set of stone tools. I also made an extra sword so Benoit could defend himself. Here you go, Benoit, just in case anything happens. Using my new stone pickaxe, I decided to keep mining into the stone deposit. Maybe I could find some iron. As I continued to dig through, I couldn't believe what I found. Is this the next door? Why was it buried? under the stone. These doors aren't going to be as easy to find as I thought. I opened the door and sure enough, there was a staircase leading up to the next level. Come on, Benoit. Let's see what's waiting for us ahead. On days 6 through 8, we reached level 93, and I noticed things were a little different than the other floors. A few monkeys scampered by, and I could see an arena up ahead. Something doesn't feel right. Benoit, I think you should hang back while I go check things out. I approached the building slowly, but I didn't see anything, so I stepped inside. Just then, I heard a thump as a big bun fungus slowly emerged from the shadows and into the light. Easy there, big guy. 
carrot. Give me carrot. I don't have a carrot, but maybe we can find you something else. Do you have carrot or you carrot? Me carrot? I'm not a carrot. No, you carrot. I eat carrot. Me no carrot. You carrot. No carrot. Carrot. The bun fungus lunged at me and attacked. Our conversation wasn't really going anywhere, so it was probably best just to get into it. I'm not a carrot. Knock it off. For as silly as he was, the bun fungus was really strong. Clearly, he was always eating his carrots, which was contributing to his powerful blows. How about you take a bite of this? I swung my sword again and again as he chased me around the arena. He was getting some hits in, but I was holding my own. After a hard-fought battle, I was able to land the final blow, and the bun fungus was defeated. As he disappeared, I noticed he had also dropped a compass and a small crystal. I took a look at the compass first. Door locator? Is this what I think it is? I took a closer look at the compass and could see the compass was pointing me in a direction. I'll have to see if that leads me to a door. But before that, I took a look at the crystal. I'm not sure what this is supposed to do exactly. What happens when I place it? I set the crystal down, and suddenly, an image of a princess began broadcasting out of it. Hello there. I've been captured by the wizard who controls this fort, and I'm in need of someone like you to rescue me. Help me, brave adventure. You're my only hope. Oh no, she must be in real trouble. I gotta get to the top. I headed back outside and met up with Benoit. I explained the situation and he agreed to help as much as he could. We took out the compass and headed in the direction it pointed us. We soon saw the door and headed inside. But this time, there was something different. An elevator. I wonder what that's about. There was a staircase leading up to the next level, but next to the elevator was a power switch, so I flipped it on. Let's see where this goes. Benoit and I entered the elevator and hit the button inside. The elevator started to move. On days 9 through 11, we stepped out of the elevator into a large cave. Wait a second, this is the cave where I started. I took a look around to be sure, but there was no mistake. This was the same cave. If this brings us back to this floor, that makes me think there will be more elevators on future floors. Maybe we can set up a base here. That makes sense to me. How are you feeling? Definitely better, but I don't know if I can keep going up these stairs. How about I get things started down here, and you go look for the princess? That's a great plan. Before I go though, I think we should set up some kind of distraction to scare away any mobs that might try to come after you. I was thinking I could build a large statue. Great idea. I got straight to it working on the statue. I thought it should be something scary, but also something that could believably be in this world. After a bit, I had finished the first part. This is coming along great. Can you guess what it's going to be? With the first part complete, I headed back over to the elevator and stepped inside. There was just a button inside. I wonder how high it will take me. On days 12 to 14, I emerged from the elevator to see that I had returned to the same level as before. I must have to activate the elevator on a given floor to travel to it. Looks like there's no shortcuts. I then entered the door to the stairs nearby and headed up to the next floor. When I walked out, I saw that the biome was completely new. I was now in a swamp biome. This is a swamp, but the water looks off. In fact, it looks poisoned. To test this out, I headed to the edge of the water and tossed some wood I had into it. With a sizzle, the wood disintegrated completely. Oh, I'm gonna have to watch my step. Otherwise, that could be me. Unlucky for me, though. I could see my only way forward was going to be jumping on lily pads across the swamp. I sure hope those parkour lessons were worth it. I jumped ahead, landing on the lily pad. I had some close calls, too. As some of the lily pads were actually drop leaves. That could have easily dropped me into the poison. Phew, I'm glad I made it across. Well, let's find that door. I I started heading in the direction of the next door. I really hope I'm not too late to save the princess. As I was walking, I was suddenly attacked by a giant mosquito. Ah, no hugs, no hugs. The mosquito was vicious. I tried to keep it away, but it kept wrapping itself around me, trying to bite me. It did some serious damage. Get off of me, you bloodthirsty psychopath. I managed to knock it back and hit the mosquito with my sword, finally defeating it. Look, I don't want to run into another one of those ever again. I kept following the compass and headed off to find the next door. On day 15, I had made my way to floor 85 when I saw a house in the distance. Another house. I wonder if there's another monster hiding inside. I gotta be careful. I took my sword out and started sneaking up to the door when the door swung open. Charge! Wait, wait! I stopped running and realized it was just an old woman. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not used to meeting people who don't attack me. <laughs> that is quite all right. I'm not used to meeting new faces either. I've heard of many people coming to this place, but so far none of them have made it this far. You must be the most skilled of them all. Thank you, but you mentioned others? What do you know of this place? The woman took a deep breath before beginning her story. Hundreds of years ago, a young wizard lived alone in the mountains. In his isolation, he became a powerful wielder of magic. For a time, he would show others his magic, but was laughed at and bullied for being weird. That one day, a young knight asked asked him for his help uniting the Broken Kingdom. The pair forged a powerful friendship, and peace was restored to the land. However, the young knight, now king, wanted the wizard to do more. He didn't just want peace in his kingdom, but he wanted to control the entire world. When the wizard refused, the king banished him. Now he lives here, capturing and toying with wayward knights and explorers as revenge for what his friend did to him. That's awful. It almost makes me feel bad for him. Don't. He didn't have to do this. He made his choice. He's nothing like the wizard he once was, and has been corrupted in his anger. I see. Well, that helps. 
I better get going. The wizard has to be stopped. You should come with me. Thank you for the offer, but I'm actually quite happy with the new life I've built. It suits me here. But I have something that should help you. The old woman tossed out a potion of endurance. I picked it up and took a drink. Immediately, I felt my strength returning, and I regained all ten of my hearts. Oh, wow, I feel amazing. Thank you for this. You're very welcome, young man. Take this as well. You might find yourself needing it out there. She threw out a poison resistance potion, which I picked up. Thanks again for all of your help. I'm sure we'll see each other again. On days 16 to 19, I was traversing the swamp when I came across a cave. These stone tools aren't going to cut it for much longer. I should see if I can find some iron in that cave. I headed into the cave and soon saw several iron ores. I got to mining and managed to mine a few of them. Alright, let's go see if I can get a few more. I started making my way down the cave when I heard a horrible roar. I turned around and saw a huge crocodile looking right at me. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. The crocodile charged at me and attacked. His powerful jaws did a lot of damage. My stone sword felt like it was barely doing anything. My iron armor was pretty weak, and he even managed to break some of it. With armor missing, my health was really starting to drop, so I had no choice but to run away. Okay, okay, you win this one. I ran back out of the cave, and luckily the crocodile didn't follow me out. Man, there was so much more iron in there. How much did I get? I took a look and saw I had gotten enough for maybe a couple of tools, but that was it. Well, I don't have enough to fix my armor and make new tools. I'll only be able to do one or the other. I decided that I would build a sword and do my best not to get hit. I quickly made a forge, smelted down the iron I had, and crafted an iron sword. This is gonna be a risky move, but who knows how likely I am to find more iron. I equipped my sword and snuck back into the cave. As I made my way, I could see the crocodile just up ahead. He hadn't noticed me. With the amount of armor I had left, I could probably only take a couple of hits. Here goes nothing. I sprang into action and started furiously swinging my sword. I jumped forward and back, doing my best to dodge the croc's bites. Despite my best efforts, he managed to get a hit in. Uh-oh, this is gonna be a close one. The crocodile snapped at me furiously, but at long last, I was able to land the fatal blow. Oh man, let's not do that again. With the crocodile out of the way, I mined out the rest of the iron I needed. With the freshly mined iron, I smelted it down and made myself a new set of iron armor, which I gratefully equipped. I'm feeling safer already. On to the next room. From days 20 to 22, I eventually found myself on floor 78, which looked extremely similar to the floor the bun fungus was on. Or at least, the building in front of me did. Okay, this building looks just like that other one. There's gotta be a scary monster hiding in this one. There was just one problem. The building was completely surrounded by poison water. How am I gonna get across this? I threw down a crafting table and quickly made a boat. I set the boat in the water, but it immediately started smoking and disappeared into the poison. That was when I remembered the poison resistance potion the old woman had given me. I drank it down and jumped into the water. Hmm, I probably should have just stepped a toe in before jumping all the way in, but it seems to be working. As I crossed, I saw some clay at the bottom of the swamp, so I stopped and mined some of it out. I can use this for the statue. With the clay collected, I continued across the swamp and soon reached the other side. I made my way up to the opening of the arena and took a peek inside, but didn't see anything. The arena was filled with poison, but my potion had run out. I hopped across the drop leaves, just barely making it to the other side. Phew, that was a close one. I don't see anything, though. <laughs> What was that? Suddenly, a strange plant creature rose out of the swamp and started moving toward me. It was a whisperer. All right, no need to panic. He let out a shriek and started to attack. This whisperer was insane. He would wave his arms, which caused plants to fly up from the ground. He also summoned a large flower that would attack me. Oh, I gotta get out of the way of these plants. I jumped around the arena, using the lily pads to try and get hits in, but his special attacks were making this difficult. The closer I can get, the better chance I'll have. It was risky having to jump across the poison pond, but if I couldn't get close enough to get hits in, there was no way I was going to win. You're not so tough at close range, are you? Finally was able to start wearing him down and let out a flurry of hits. Soon enough, he was down. As he disappeared, I noticed a chest on the other side of the room. What could be in here? I popped the chest open and saw it was full of gold ingots. I'm not sure what I'll do with these, but I'll hang on to them, just in case. With my new loot, I looked ahead and saw the door leading to the next level. Inside of it was another elevator. I flipped the nearby switch to activate it. I'll bet this takes me back to the first level. I should go see what Benoit is up to. I entered the elevator and headed down. On days 23 to 26, I re-entered the cave and saw that Benoit had been making some small improvements to the base. He had set up a small crafting and smelting area, but had another request for me. Zozo, mon ami! Could you give me a hand with this next project? I need a place to sell my wares. I agreed, and we got to work building Benoit a shop. It seemed a little silly since as far as I knew, I was the only customer he could have. But he was a nice guy and I wanted to help. C'est bon! This shop is amazing! Merci, Zozo! No problem! So have you got something to sell? As a matter of fact, I do! If you have some money for me, 
I'd be happy to sell to you. I don't have any money, but I do have some gold bars. Give me one second. I headed over to the crafting area and tossed out some of the gold bars. Using my pick, I managed to shape them into some gold coins. These should work great. I headed over to Benoit and asked him what he had in stock. For now, the only item I have in stock is a bow and some arrows. I'm hoping to find some more inventory around the caves. A bow could be really helpful, actually. I'll take it. I tossed Benoit some of my coins and took the bow and arrows off the shelf in return. With my new item, I was going to be even more deadly than before. On days 27 to 31, I decided I would do some work on the statue before heading back up the tower. Benoit seemed to be pretty safe so far, but the sooner we could finish the statue, the safer I felt he could be. Soon, I had finished the second part. Go ahead and put your guesses for what it will be in the comments. And while you're down there, feel free to hit subscribe and ring the bell. I love having you on these adventures with me. Next, I headed over to the elevator to take it back up the tower. On the next level, I saw I was now in a Badlands biome. Okay, I'm starting to see the pattern here. Looks like every so often there's a mini boss, and then the next floors take place in a new biome. Interesting. I didn't have too long to think about it though, as I was suddenly attacked by a couple of tarantula hawks. Stay back, you buzzards! These guys weren't too big, but they were intense. I was actually really surprised by how strong they were, given their size. They were trying to keep their distance, but I was able to use my new bow to get hits on them. It didn't take too much longer, and I was able to take them all out of the sky. These mobs are getting tougher with each floor. I can't even imagine what's waiting for me on floor one. That's when I noticed that the durability on my bow had greatly depleted. Hey, what's this? My bow isn't very durable. I'm gonna have to have a chat with Benoit about this later. On days 32 to 35, I had reached floor 64 when I noticed there was some terracotta nearby. Ooh, I'm gonna need that for the statue. I better go pick it up. I mined out a good portion of terracotta, then continued on my way. This Badlands area was huge. It's going to be tough to find the door. As I continued to explore, I nearly ran into a rattlesnake. Oh, watch out! I whipped out my sword and gave it a few strong swings, quickly taking it out. That was a close one. Not too shabby. I looked to the side and saw a small roadrunner was watching me. I saw you fighting tarantula hawks earlier, as well as that snake. The tarantula hawks kidnapped my daughter. Would you be able to help me rescue her? I'd be happy to help. Show me the way. The roadrunner pointed to where I needed to go and I set off. As I reached the area the roadrunner had mentioned, I realized I had made a mistake. Oh brother, this is obviously some kind of joke. The daughter was clearly a stuffed dummy and there was a cage suspended right above it, plainly meant to trap me inside. What is this, some kind of kids cartoon where a roadrunner tries to outsmart those around him? Like I'd fall for that. I took another step forward to get a better look when suddenly the sand beneath my feet gave way and I fell into a massive hole. I can't believe I fell for that. On days 36 to 39, I was still falling. This feels like the hole I fell into on day one. Seconds later, I crashed into a pool of water. I looked around and... Yep, I was back in the starting cave. You've got to be kidding me. This place is full of jerks. Which reminds me, I need to talk to Benoit about that bow he sold me. I made my way back over to the base and saw Benoit standing in a shop. Hey, that bow you sold me nearly broke after one fight. I paid good money for this. Oh, dear Zozo, I am so sorry. I would never intentionally sell you a poor quality product. Please, let me give you a discount on the next item. Mm, okay, fair enough. What have you got? Benoit tossed out an enchanted fire aspect iron sword. I think you'll find this sword is the quality you're looking for. I closely looked over the sword and everything seemed to be in order. Even with the discount, it still cost me the rest of my gold. From there, I headed back into the elevator and eventually reached the floor I'd been on before. I could see the roadrunner not too far away. Hey you! What's the big idea? Throwing me down that pit! Upon hearing my voice, he jumped in the air and started running away. Hey, get back over here. I've got something to say to you. The roadrunner was fast. I did my best to keep up with him, but it looked like he was getting away. Lucky for me though, he ran into a dead end. Now you listen here. I'm getting really tired of these games. I walked over to him and hit him once with my new sword. Ouch! Okay, okay, don't hurt me. I'm just so bored and thought it would be a funny prank. You didn't actually get hurt, right? No, but I didn't think it was very funny. I'm in a bit of a rush, so it's frustrating to have to go up all those stairs over and over again. I'll let you live, but don't mess with me. I left the Roadrunner and headed in the direction of the next door. On days 40 to 43, I was exploring the new floor when I noticed something was following me. I turned around and caught a glimpse of who it was. That Roadrunner again? He better not be up to something. But just then, a huge guster came out of nowhere and attacked me. This big guy was tough. I tried hitting him with my sword, but he seemed to be immune from the fire damage. He managed to hit me a few more times, and my health was getting seriously low. He even managed to suck me into his vortex and throw me into the air. It looks like this might be the end for me. But before the guster could deliver the final blow, the roadrunner jumped out and finished it off. Wow, thank you. But why are you helping me? I felt bad for pranking you. Clearly, you're just trying to do the right thing. My name is Rody. Here, let me show you something I think you will like. 
I followed the roadrunner for a bit and soon saw he had led me to an oasis. There was a small hut nearby too. It looked like it used to be a smithy. You're right. This place is just what I needed. Thanks for showing it to me. Feel free to stick around. The roadrunner agreed and I went and looked in the chest. Inside, I found some iron ingots as well as a shield. Using the iron ingots, I managed to repair my armor as well. Take a look at that tree too. I headed outside and saw that the nearby tree was no ordinary tree. There were some golden apples growing on it. I walked around the tree and knocked some of them off. These are going to be a huge help in the fight ahead. On days 44 to 49, we continued crossing the desert until we saw a large desert arena in the distance. I could see a corridor ahead leading into the stadium with two guards standing by. Hey, Rody, why don't you hang back while I check this out? It could be a trap, a real trap. I tried talking to the guards, but neither of them said anything. As I started to walk into the corridor, a bunch of arrows started firing. And this is the only way in? Great. I stepped into the arrows, trying to use my shield to block them. I managed to block some of the arrows, but I still took a ton of damage. With one heart left, I finally got through. Yeah, that could have gone better. I finally stepped into the arena. After I had stepped inside, the doors closed behind me. That's not good. Just then, a man dressed like a wither skeleton was standing on a platform at the top of the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, our challenger has arrived. A big round of applause, please. Hey, buddy, you know it's just us here, right? Thank you for that warm welcome. And now, let the games begin. This guy was clearly nuts. He must have been in the desert for too long. Just then, another door opened and a husk came running out. A single husk? What a joke. This is going to be so easy. Just then, a huge horde came running out after him. I guess it wasn't going to be so easy after all. The husks weren't very strong, but there were a lot of them. To keep them from ganging up on me, I ran ahead to get them in the line. Suddenly, the ground shook and parts of the arena floor opened, revealing pools of lava. What kind of sick games are these? I kept trying to get the husks lined up as I took care not to fall into the lava. Once they were lined up, I started to quickly cut through them one at a time. It took a little while, but finally, they were all defeated. Okay, yay, I won. Can you let me out now? We have a winner. Time for round two. The floor shook again as some pillars rose up from the floor, and this time, a few giant and normal-sized gladiators came charging at me. How many rounds of this am I going to have to do? Luckily for me, the two big gladiators turned on each other, with one of them taking the other out. The bad news was that they are now all focused on me. I ran around the stadium, doing my best to try and block the trident throws and get hits in. This was a much tougher fight, but I was determined to win. Eventually, I was able to take out the trident guy, so I could focus solely on the gladiator. You know what they say about the big guys. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I managed to get the gladiator lined up with the pit of lava. I swung my sword, knocking him in and defeating him. Ladies and gentlemen, the final round! The arena shook again as the lava pits and columns disappeared. Then a door opened and a huge scorpion came running out. This wasn't going to be easy. This was going to be my hardest fight yet. If I can just stay away from that stinger, I might be able to do this. The scorpion was tough and hit hard. Ouch, you'll pay for that. Suddenly, the arena shook again and the lava pits and columns returned. But this time, they kept moving in and out. That guy just couldn't make this easy for me, could he? he kept fighting the scorpion. And at one point, my health had dropped dangerously low. But I couldn't give up now. At one point, I was able to catch the scorpion in the lava pit, but he was able to crawl back out. Looks like I'm just gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way. I kept hitting it with blow after blow with my sword until at long last it was defeated. And the crowd goes wild! Well done, brave sir, well done! Please take the spoils of your accomplishment. Another door opened, revealing a room with a chest. I headed over and took a look inside. An elite power bow. And whoa, tons and tons of gold! Just then, Rody came running up to me. Hey, nice job! I was thinking I would keep adventuring with you, but after seeing that, you mind if I live at your base? That shouldn't be a problem. Let's go. I entered the next room, where an elevator was waiting. We went inside and headed back to the base. On day 50 to 53, Rody and I emerged from the elevator back at the base. Rody was going to need a place to live, so we got right to work building him his own space. I wanted him to feel right at home. When we had finished, Benoit came over and asked if I could give him a hand with the statue. Benoit and I used some of the blocks he had collected to build out the next part of the statue. He said things had been going well since I had been here last, and he even had something new for me to buy in his shop. We soon finished, and I headed over to his shop. All right, so you said you've got something new for me? Oui, oui. Take a look. I have a whole stack of diamonds. I'm sure these will be very useful for you. I paid Benoit with the gold add one from the arena, then took all of the diamonds over to the crafting area. I put together a full set of diamond armor, then used what was left to make a diamond sword, as well as a whole set of diamond tools. That princess has nothing to worry about. I'm on my way. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back up the elevator and stairs and emerged in a frozen tundra. Oh man, it's freezing. I don't know how long I can stay out here. Just then, I noticed that my health started to decrease. I was literally freezing. To make sure I didn't freeze to death, I got right to work building a quick igloo and campfire. This is going to be tough going. I'm not going to be able to survive away from a heat source for too long. Once I had warmed up, I set back out, following the direction of my compass. As I traveled, I kept having to take breaks and set up a small fire to warm up. Eventually, I found the door, built into an ice spike. I made one more stop to warm up. I wasn't sure what was going to be on the next level. Once I was feeling good, I entered and headed on up.
On days 58 to 62, I had reached the next floor and noticed that the weather wasn't as bad here. I think my armor is enough to keep me warm. Thank goodness. I was moving at a glacial pace before. I pressed on and soon saw a penguin. How adorable. I should go say hi. I ran up to the penguin when it suddenly attacked. Whoa, I thought you were supposed to be cute and cuddly. I managed to fight off the penguin when I heard something just ahead. I ran forward and saw a bunch of penguins standing around something. It was another adventurer. Hey, leave him alone. I charged and began swinging at the penguins. They were feisty little fighters, but I was able to overwhelm them and take them out. I headed over to the adventurer. Oh no, it looks like he's dead. But what's this? Laying on top of him was a crystal, similar to the one I had picked up earlier. I set it down and the princess appeared, the way, saying the same thing as the one I had found. But wait a second, like this princess looks completely different. Very there very must be two princesses in danger. That's the only thing I can think of that makes sense. I better hurry up. Soon after, my compass had led me to the door and I headed in and up the stairs. On days 63 to 66, I emerged on a floor that looked like an ice beach. Ahead in the water, there was a huge ice spike. My compass had been pointing me to it, so I assumed that was where I needed to go. In the distance, I could see a bridge leading out to the spike, but as I started to cross it, I saw that the end of the bridge had been destroyed. It looks like I can still get across by jumping across those smaller ice spikes, but it's gonna be tricky. If I slipped and fell, I'd be falling into sub-zero water, where I could quickly freeze to death. I had to be careful. I was about halfway across when I nearly slipped. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I was right on the edge, so close that it almost looked like I was floating over the edge. I regained my composure and managed to make it the rest of the way across. Phew, next time I do parkour, it's gonna have to be with lower stakes. I kept jumping and finally made it across the gap. I started to climb the ice spike. When I got to the top, I nearly jumped off in fear. There was a massive polar bear waiting for me. This must be the boss to get through to the next door. Wish me luck. I charged as the polar bear let out a large roar. He swung and nearly knocked me over the edge several times. This guy is tough. How am I gonna beat him? Just then, I had an idea. I was scared of falling off, but shouldn't he be too? I made some space between us and ran over near the edge. Come and get it. The polar bear charged at me full speed. At the last second, I jumped out of the way, causing it to slip right off the edge and down to the ground below. Piece of cake. As I looked over the edge, I could see some of the ice below had melted too. Almost looked like it had formed a word. Interesting. With the polar bear gone, I entered the door and could see that there was an elevator and path to go up. I stepped into the elevator and headed down to the base. On day 67 to 70, I entered the base and went over to talk to Benoit and Rody. Both of them were really excited and impressed by how far I had gotten. They also told me how much fun they were having down in the base. I was glad to hear it, but something was bothering me. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys about something I found. On one of the last floors, I found a crystal with another princess message. Maybe there's two princesses, but some Something did seem off to me. Before they could answer though, the old woman from the swamp came out of nowhere. This place is full of tricks. That's probably all it is. You should just ignore it. Whoa, what brings you down here? I thought I would pay you a visit. This is quite a nice place you've built down here. If your offer still stands, I wouldn't mind living down here after all. I thought that sounded great, so I got right to work building her a house. I thought it was strange that she had changed her mind, but in any case, it would be good to have some more friends around. Once her house was complete, I headed over to Benoit to see if he had anything new to sell. As a matter of fact, I do. I managed to find some lapis. You can enchant your armor with this. I made a fresh set of coins with my gold and exchanged it for a stack of lapis. I entered the old woman's hut and used her enchanting table to upgrade my gear. I'll be able to tackle any biome or enemy now. I stepped outside to head back up the floors when I remembered we had a statue to work on. I made my way back up and got going on the next part. It didn't take too long and I was soon done. On to the next floor. On day 71 to 74, I returned to the last ice level then started making my way up to the next door. Oof, it's usually not this difficult to reach the next level. Once I had maneuvered to the door, I entered in and was surprised by what I saw on the other side. Did I just enter the nether? The whole app atmosphere had changed. But in the meantime, I decided to mine the magma blocks off the wall. I was going to need those for the statue later. I headed through the door. Wait a second. This looks like the same room, but the door is farther away. What's going on? I ran down the hallway and passed through the door. It was the same hallway again, but the door was even farther away than before. What kind of twisted joke is this? I ran through the next door and it was the same thing, but the door was even farther away. I started running for the door, but paused about halfway through. Uh, I must have missed something. I'm gonna go back. I turned to go through the last door when suddenly a bunch of piglins came bursting through, wielding axes. Ah! I tried to run away, but didn't have any other choice but to fight. With my upgraded gear, I managed to knock both of them out pretty quickly. Okay, maybe I just need to keep moving forward. I moved ahead, when suddenly a couple of blazes spawned. I swung furiously to avoid catching on fire. Suddenly, there were more piglins too. I kept fighting and swinging. I had come so far. Soon, they were all defeated. Ugh, okay, let's keep going. Wait, which way was I going? I was completely turned around. I headed toward one of the doors to go through it. At the time, I didn't know that I was heading back the way I came in, but it turned out that was just what I needed to do. On day 75 to 78, I emerged from the door and found myself in the end. What is going on? Now I'm jumping through dimensions. I took out my compass to figure out where the next door was, but it was just spinning in circles. Looks like I'm going to have to find the next door the old-fashioned way. I started making my way toward the nearest end city when I accidentally looked to the nearest enderman in the eyes. He attacked! Back off, slender boy! 
boy. I took a few swings of my sword, but I was able to knock him out. It might not be a bad idea to gather up some ender pearls, actually. Those could come in handy. With this in mind, I started my raid on the endermen. One by one, I struck them down and collected the ender pearls. At one point, I even had multiple of them attacking me at once, which was a little scary. But eventually, I had gotten all the pearls I felt I needed. That ought to do it. But hey, might as well collect some blocks for the statue, too. I took out my pick and mined up some of the end stone on the ground, getting everything I needed. Then, I headed to the nearest structure, which was covered in shulkers. Time to duck and cover! The shulkers started firing at me, and I did my best to block their shots with my shield and hit them with my sword. I wasn't perfect, though, and soon started levitating. Ugh, that doesn't feel so good. The levitating effect wore off, and I dropped to the ground. Luckily, I wasn't too high, and it didn't do too much damage. Finally, I was able to get close enough to the shulkers to finish them all off. Alright, let's see what's up here. I entered the end city and started following the path. There were more shulkers along the way, which I was able to fight off. Sometimes their levitating power even helped me out. It took a little bit to get through everything, but eventually I emerged on the roof and could see a door. That door looks a little weird, but it must be the way through. Let's see what happens. On day 79 to 84, I suddenly appeared on the end central island, and much to my fear, I could see the ender dragon flying around in the distance. This wizard isn't messing around. Looks like I'm gonna have to fight the ender dragon. I lunged forward as the dragon swooped around overhead. What ensued was an epic battle. Okay, first things first, I gotta take care of those end crystals. It's a good thing I got those ender pearls. By throwing the ender pearls, I teleported to the top of the towers and destroyed the end crystals. I had to be careful not to blow myself up, but one by one, I managed to destroy all of them. All right, big guy, it's just you and me now. I ran into the middle of the island and worked on bringing down the dragon's health. The dragon flew by overhead, trying to blast me with its dragon breath. The dragon soon landed, and I was able to get some hits in. As the dragon flew around, I took aim with my elite bow and managed to get some hits in that way too. At long last, the dragon swooped in low, and I hit him with an arrow, finally destroying him. He exploded, dropping a ton of XP orbs. I did it! If I can beat the dragon, surely I can beat a wizard. It was just then that I noticed a chest that appeared on top of the center column. I ran over and opened it up. Look at all these nether scraps. And what's this? In the middle of the chest was a paladin sword. I took it out and equipped it. With the sword in hand, a bunch of light started sparkling around me, and I leveled up into a full-blown paladin. I feel even stronger now. And look what my sword can do. As I swung my sword, I could see it was launching a light sword in the direction I was aiming. So cool. Just then, I noticed there was a button and trap door nearby too. I hit the button and dropped into the hole. When I landed, I saw a familiar room, one with an elevator and some steps. I hit the switch and headed into the elevator. On days 85 to 89, I emerged in the base where Benoit, Rody, and the old woman came running out to meet me. You're back. That must mean you're getting close to the top. You're doing great. Thanks. I've just got a few things to do here, and I think I'll finally be at the top. First of all, I wanted to finish the statue, using the extra materials I had collected. No dragon was as scary as one breathing fire in your face, so I made sure to add a stream of fire. And just like that, it was finished. Is this what you thought I'd build when I started? Let me know what you think. With the statue complete, I headed down to the crafting area and used the gold and netherite to create some netherite ingots. Then I used the ingots to upgrade my tools and sword to netherite. Now that everything was upgraded, it was time to say goodbye to my friends before heading up to the final floors. Well guys, it looks like there's actually some hope of us getting out of here. It's been awesome getting to know you, and if I don't make it, hopefully this base can help you until the next adventurer comes along. You are a great friend, Zozo. I know you can do it. We will see you soon, Manami. I turned and headed for the door. I was a man on a mission, and no one was going to get in my way. On days 90 to 94, I emerged in a stone corridor. As I stepped into the room, I was immediately attacked by some hoglins. Luckily, I was able to quickly destroy them. There was something familiar about this place. Wait, I think that was the hoglin from day one. This must be the castle I saw before. I was getting close, but I had to stay focused. I opened a nearby door and immediately took some damage. What was that? I took a look inside the room and didn't see anything dangerous. I shut the door again and took more damage. Oh boy, this place must be trapped. I'm gonna have to watch my step. I proceeded down the hallways and ran into more mobs. This place was crazy crawling with enemies. The mobs fought like their lives depended on it, which they did. Unlucky for them though, my new armor and weapons were stacked. They didn't stand a chance. After a ton of fighting, I finally pushed through a large group of them and had a moment to heal up. Well, I might have a few arrows sticking out of me, but I'm still here. I headed back into the corridors, fighting off skeletons as I went. This paladin sword was definitely coming in handy, as I was able to cut down enemies from far away. I kept pushing, taking out piglins and other enemies along the way. I finally entered a room and could tell something was different. On days 95 to 96, I entered a banquet hall and saw something illuminated on the wall. Subscribe? I keep seeing this word everywhere. In any case, I'm happy you're here and appreciate your support. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing. On days 97 to 98, I had gone through a side door and found myself facing a white wall. Suddenly, there was a clicking sound as a drawbridge lowered. Standing in the center of the room was a giant pigless. Uh-oh. This isn't going to be an easy fight. The pigless charged at me. He quickly hit me twice with his mace, which nearly depleted all of my health. If I was going to survive, I was going to have to be more 
more careful. Not bad, Baconator. But let's see how you like this. Huh? I had swung my sword, but the piglet disappeared. Where did he go? Suddenly, he reappeared right next to me, nearly catching me off guard. Holy cow! This guy packed a punch. It took everything I had not to get hit, and I had to keep eating golden apples to stay in the fight. By using my paladin sword, though, I was able to hang in there. My friends are counting on me. I can't lose. I kept swinging and fighting until at long last, I landed the final blow, destroying the piglet. It was time to face the wizard. On day 99, I stepped into a large hall. Up ahead, there was a large wooden door. I stepped forward, and the door creaked open, revealing the wizard standing on a platform ahead of me. I walked into the room. Wizard, your traps have failed to stop me. I won't let you continue to keep people captive, and I'm going to free the princess. Get out of my way, or I'll move you myself. Ha ha ha, you've done well, but I can't allow you to leave this place. Knights and adventurers can't be trusted. Then you've made your decision. Think fast. I swung my sword, sending a sword beam flying at him as flames began to appear around me. I jumped out of the way and the flames exploded. This guy wasn't messing around. I'll show you what real magic can do. The wizard shot blasts of green energy at me as I continued to fire off sword energy. He was strong, but I was getting hits in. Suddenly, there was a crash of thunder and a red cloud appeared above me as fireballs started to rain down. Ah, that's hot, that's hot. Haha, -ha, what do you think of this? There was a poof, and a bunch of wizards appeared, who all charged at me. Holy cannoli, I didn't even know it was possible to do this kind of magic. The wizard clones were aggressive, but I was able to cut them down pretty easily. Then, I kept firing off sword blasts. Oh, why isn't this working? The wizard was getting frustrated. I was winning. Suddenly, he started firing off all of his spells at once. This was starting to be too much to handle. I could just keep hitting him. As one of my sword hits landed, he suddenly started to glow and burst into an explosion of light. Was that it? I did it! I think something didn't seem right about that. But the princess, I need to save her. On day 100, I took a look around the room and saw there was a lever hiding behind one of the banners. I flipped the switch, which opened a secret door. I headed inside. I'm Zozo. I'm here to rescue you. Zozo, my hero. You're here. Where's the other princess? The what? Oh, yes, the other, uh, oh, forget it. There was a burst of light, and the wizard was standing in the place of the princess. You, I defeated you, and I'll do it again. Wait. <coughs> Sorry, it's hard to keep doing the voice. I really didn't mean any harm. What are you talking about? You threw me down a hole. You set me on fire. I fought a giant scorpion in an arena. All illusions. In case you didn't notice, I'm pretty good at magic. In fact, it has all been an illusion, including everyone you've met. They're all parts of my personality, manifested by different people. You were never in any real danger. Then what was the point of all of this? The truth is, I'm just lonely. The only true thing was the story of the old woman, or... Uh, I told you about the king. Well, I'm sorry that that part is true, but don't you think if you have the power to create anything, it'd be better to do something that actually helps people? The wizard thought about it for a second. Uh, yeah, I guess I was too busy feeling sorry for myself to see that. I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused you. Please, let me send you on your way. There was a flash of light and we were suddenly back outside of the castle. I ran back into the land as the wizard and all his personalities waved goodbye. I guess in the end we all got what we wanted. I escaped and the wizard got himself a new friend. Perhaps one day we'll go on an adventure together. On day one, I spawned in as Mikey from Mizen. All right, JJ, what are we doing today? Wait, where's JJ? Mikey is never without his best buddy JJ. Oh no, JJ must be in trouble. Luckily, I've got eight hearts. It must be because I'm a turtle. I've got this tough shell to help protect me from danger. And I'm probably a really good swimmer. This'll help me find JJ for sure. I looked up and realized I'd spawned under a tree filled with apples, so I reached up to pick myself a thinking snack. But before I could take a bite, an arrow flew past my head. Oh no, skeletons! I grabbed as many apples as I could carry and ran away before one of their arrows hit me, since I had to stay in one piece to find JJ. Hey, what's the big idea? I'm just picking apples. I just kept running and running until I found a log cabin in the middle of the woods. It wasn't anything fancy, and it definitely needed some repairs, but it was cozy and a perfect place to hide for the night. There was even a lake right next to the cabin. Maybe I could go swimming once I was sure the skeletons were gone, and there were probably fish to catch in there for dinner. I just wish that JJ were here to see it too. On day two, I went exploring around the lake and gathered some wood. I gathered enough wood to make an ax. I could use it to fix up the cabin for when I found JJ. Next, I went back to the apple tree to gather some more fruit. 
Hey, with enough apples, maybe I could even make a pie. But I didn't have the chance to think too much more about that, because there was a gremlin chef coming up to pick apples too. Please don't take all the apples. I need at least four. Don't worry. I left you plenty. Oh, thank you. I was worried. Have you seen my friend JJ? He's missing. Don't know anyone by that name, I'm afraid. Someone in the village might. You should go ask around. Thanks. I will. Just be careful. Someone's been stealing animals and supplies around here. Maybe they they took your friend, too. I sure hoped not, but if JJ was in trouble, I would find a way to help him. Thank you, Chef. Good luck with whatever you're making. It's pie. Great minds think alike. And I guess he was pretty great. I took my apples back to the cabin, and along the way I found some sticks and string. I used them to craft a fishing rod and went fishing in the lake. I caught three fish. On day three, I decided to work on fixing up the cabin as much as I could. I patched some holes in the wall and added a fence all around it for some extra protection. While I was working on the cabin, I found a secret back room. It was hidden behind a picture hanging on the wall. There was so much space back there, I had no idea. If I couldn't find that room without looking super carefully, then I was willing to bet no monsters would be able to find me in there either. I decided to make the secret back room my new base, and got to work filling it with everything I found so far. The apples, the fish, and my tools. Then I went back to the lake to try and catch some more fish. Before I started fishing, I saw a block near the trees that looked a little strange. I used my pickaxe to break it open, and inside was a nasty silverfish. I should have been more careful. I knew they could contaminate blocks in some areas. I managed to fight off the silverfish, and when I got finished, I felt myself getting stronger. Defeating them made me a better fighter, and I knew I could handle the next enemy way better. Clearly, the exercise helped, because now I had 10 hearts. I was so excited, I swam around the lake, and I was an even faster swimmer, too. What an exciting day. But I couldn't lose sight of my goal. I had to find JJ. On day four to five, I was walking toward the village to see if anyone there could help me find JJ. On the way, I found a bush full of sweet berries. I stopped to pick some of the berries, when all of a sudden I was surrounded by skeletons again. This time, there was no way for me to run away. Why are you doing this? What do you want? The boss wants us to bring you to him, just like your little friend. JJ, you know where he is? Of course we kidnapped him in the service of the fallen king. Who is that? Wouldn't you like to know? Yes, I would. That's why I'm asking. Enough talking. You're coming with us. But I was stronger this time than I was before. I'd have to face them, and I wasn't going anywhere without a fight. The skeletons started closing in on me, but I pulled out my axe and started swinging as fast and as hard as I could. I wasn't sure if I'd make it. There were so many of them. But I fought hard and used my newfound strength and speed to get them tired out and taken down. Then I grabbed my berries and ran back to my base, safe and sound. But I still had so many questions. What did they do with JJ? Where did they want to take me? And why? And who was the fallen king? And what did he have planned? I needed to get a good night's rest, because there was definitely a big fight waiting for me in the days to come. On day six to eight, I found a cave in the woods where I could do some mining. I was going to need a lot more tools if I was going to find the fallen king and get JJ back from him. Wow, this cave is amazing. Look at all of this stuff. I found some flint, coal, iron, and even some gold. I took all the materials back to my base, crafted some furnaces, and crafted a pickaxe, a sword, a bow and arrow, and a pair of shiny gold boots. These will help protect me when I go up against those skeletons again. It had gotten pretty dark by the time I was finished, and I heard some strange noises coming from outside my cabin. I looked outside, and there were a bunch of gas trying to get inside. They were floating by the fence, opening their mouths, and getting ready to shoot fireballs at me. You picked the wrong cabin to mess with. If you just turn around and leave, we won't have to have any trouble. Otherwise, I'm I'm going to get my bow and start firing arrows, and you won't like that very much. I waited for them to leave, but they didn't listen to my warning. <sighs> Time to fight some gas then. I grabbed my bow and shot the first arrow. Before long, they were retreating, running away from the cabin like they were scared of me. I guess they were. With my new equipment, I was even tougher than before. With the danger gone for now, I hopped into bed to get some well-deserved rest. On days 9 and 10, I finally made it into the village. I was looking for answers, but I was also looking for some more supplies. I couldn't keep eating apples, berries, and fish. I needed all my strength if I was going to find JJ and defeat the fallen king. But when I arrived in the village, something was wrong. All of the shops had their doors closed and locked, and no one was walking around outside. It was as if they were all hiding in their houses. Hello? Anyone here? But no one answered. Maybe they were scared of me, but why? I was just a friendly turtle, looking to buy some food and ask some questions. Someone opened their door and pushed out one loaf of bread, before closing it and locking it again. Oh, that must be for me. Thank you. 
I took the bread and headed back to my base. As I made my way through the woods, I saw a dark figure standing between the trees. He was wearing black armor with purple horns. So, this is where you've been hiding. Who are you? Don't you know by now? After all, I am the one who took your friend. The Fallen King! What have you done with JJ? I'll tell you. If you just come with me. Never! I drew my sword, ready to battle with him, when suddenly a friendly cat jumped out of a tree and landed in front of me. No, don't do it! He's too strong to take on by yourself. But he has JJ! He took my friend too. I'll help you, but if you try now, you'll lose. As I watched, the Fallen King sprouted a pair of purple wings and flew away. I'll be back. Then it was just me and the cat. What's your name, kitty? Bella. Nice to meet you, Bella. On days 11 to 12, I built another bed in the cabin so Bella could have a place to sleep. I just knew she and JJ were going to get along great once we saved him. Then the two of us went out to gather supplies for the coming battle with the Fallen King. She was really good at catching fish and didn't even need a rod to do it. Suddenly, she looked up at something. Look out! I turned to see what she was warning me about, and I saw a wither skeleton running toward me with its sword drawn. It hit me, and I fell to the ground, losing hearts. I tried to get up and fight back, but it hit me again, hard. I lost more hearts. Luckily, the wither skeleton didn't follow us, but the damage was done, and I was getting pretty worried. I went back into the mine and looked for anything I could use, and I found some more gold. Yes. Perfect! I hurried back home to craft a gold sword and went back out looking for the wither skeleton. It was still by the lake when I got there. This time, I was able to fight back and knock it down. Back at the base, I gave Bella my old sword. Now we're both ready to fight. While I was gone, she planted seeds for wheat and apple trees. When we finally got JJ back, I just just knew he was going to love the amazing base we were making together. On days 13 to 15, I was working on the cabin when Bella came and found me. There's something you need to see. What is it? I found a book. I think it's about the Fallen King. Take a look. It looked like it was decades old and the pages were almost falling out. I picked up the book and started to read. Long ago, there was a greedy king. He was an ordinary man, but his evil heart made him seem more like a monster. All day long, he would steal from his villagers, taking their food, their gold, and even even kidnapping people to take to his castle. There, he would force them to compete in challenges for their freedom, trying to see which one was the strongest, the toughest, and the smartest. When he found the winner, he would defeat them in a challenge one-on-one -on -one to show that he was the very best in all the land. The people rose up and stormed his castle, rebelling against all the pain and strife he had caused. But the king had a secret plan in place, and just when they thought they had defeated him, he became something else. A shadowy warrior with purple wings and horns. He went into hiding, but promised to one day return to take back the throne once again. When the fallen king returns, only a brave hero led by the power of goodness and friendship will be able to stop him. But what did any of that have to do with me? It's you. You're the hero. No, I'm just me. I can't defeat some magical king. I just want to get my friend JJ back so we can have fun exploring. But... Forget this. I didn't want to admit it, but I was scared. What if I wasn't strong enough? What if I let everyone down? JJ, Bella, and myself. On days 16 to 19, I woke up and noticed that Bella was gone. And when I looked outside, I saw footprints. Someone must have come to the cabin and taken her. But it didn't look like the work of the Fallen King, and I could see snow tracked on the ground that hadn't melted yet. I remembered that there was snow further up in the mountains around the forest. That must be where Bella is. I hiked up the mountain until the whole world around me was as snowy and icy as it could be. It took me two whole days to make it. But then, I finally saw Bella. She was locked in a cage, guarded by snow nightmares. Bella, what happened? I managed to escape these guys before I found you, but they must have tracked me down. You have to help me, please. I'll do my best. It's not just me either. Look. I looked. The snow nightmares heard me planning and started closing in on me. I drew my gold sword and started to swing at them. They went down one by one, and suddenly I noticed myself getting bigger. I gained two hearts, and I had a total of 12 now. I released Bella from her cage, and together we fought off the rest of the snow nightmares. Then we freed the fox. Thank you so much. How can I ever repay you? What do you know about the Fallen King? He has my friend, and I have to defeat him. I knew now I could do it if I tried. I've only heard a little bit, but I know there is supposed to be a legendary potion. The only way to defeat him for good, so he never comes back again. Do you know where it is? I'm sorry, I don't. I don't even know for sure if it's real. And with that, the fox scurried away. But we knew more than we did before, and tomorrow we would start looking for the potion. On days 20 to 22, we made it back to the cabin and found it covered in even more gas. Get out of here, you creeps! 
I started firing arrows at them with my bow. They scattered before they could do any damage to the base, and Bella and I went inside. Tell me more about JJ. He sounds pretty special if you're going to all this trouble for him. He's my best friend. We do everything together. Or we did, before the Fallen King skeletons kidnapped him. But he always knows how to have fun. He's the best at challenges, and he supports me through the good and the bad times. Maybe we could do something to honor him, to remember what you're fighting for, like build a statue. That's a great idea. Before I went to gather supplies for the statue, I placed torches all around the perimeter of the base. This should keep any more nasty monsters out. With that long overdue change taken care of, I went to harvest some wood for the great big statue we were going to build of JJ. I found some chickens and harvested their feathers. Back at the cabin, I cleared a whole bunch of grass and blocks to make space for the statue. Then Bella and I got to work building. It was so much easier with Bella there to help. Work always goes by faster when you have a friend lending a hand. Or a paw. And hey, by the way, thank you for watching. If you liked the video so far, that would mean the world to me if you subscribed and turned on notifications. That way, you'll be sure to catch my next adventure. Thanks! On days 23 to 26, I was in the cabin when suddenly a skeleton came up to the door. He was wearing full armor and carrying a big impressive sword. Get out of here, bonehead! I attacked him with my own sword and managed to chase him off. As he ran away, I noticed that he dropped something. Huh? It was a shield. A brigand shield to be exact. I decided to test it out. Bella, attack me with your axe. What? Just do it. I want to try something. She ran at me with her axe and the shield protected me. It blocked every single blow. Wow, this thing is amazing. Just as I was preparing to test out my new shield some more, I heard someone rustling around outside the door to the cabin. If that's another skeleton. But when I looked, I saw a cat instead. Bella, are you here? I heard from the fox that you found a safe place to stay. Kiki, it's you. This is my friend I told you about. How did you get away? I managed to sneak out while the king was busy with something else. Someone named JJ helped distract him. That's my friend. Was he okay? He was, but he definitely needs help. But I'm so tired from running for days. Can I stay here, please? Of course. I let Kiki inside and decided to ask her some more questions tomorrow. On days 27 to 31, I asked Kiki what she might happen to know about a legendary potion, the one that the fox had told us about. I don't know much about it, but I do know someone who does. A wise old monkey who lives on an island not too far away. So we'll need to find a boat. Don't worry. I know someone who will let us borrow his. Come with me. Kiki and I said goodbye to Bella and left to go get ourselves a boat and travel to see the wise monkey. We borrowed a boat from a kind man with a shop by the ocean and set sail toward the island. After a couple of days at sea though, we suddenly felt something hit the side of the boat, shaking it all over. What was that? I looked over the side of the boat into the water and saw a huge shark ramming itself into the boat. It snapped its teeth at me and tried to bite me. No way, we've got places to be. I shot an arrow at the shark, but I missed. It tried to bite the boat, but I fired another arrow. This time, I hit it. Wounded, the shark swam away and out of sight. I guess these waters are more dangerous than I thought. We'll have to keep an eye out for more trouble. Somehow, I had the feeling we would encounter more danger before we had everything we needed. But it was all worth it to find my friend. On days 32 to 35, we found a hut along the beach surrounded by palm trees full of coconuts. I stopped to pick some coconuts to take back to my base. Hey, those are my coconuts. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Excuse me, are you wise, Jim? Who's asking? I'm Kiki, and this is my friend. We heard you might know something about the legendary Potion of Light. I might, but how do I know I can trust you? We're preparing to fight the Fallen King. He has my friend, JJ, and we need to rescue him. So you're looking for the potion, eh? We all turned around, and there was the Fallen King, hovering over the water with his wings spread out wide. You'll never find it, and you'll never defeat me. Get ready for a beating, Fallen King. We won't let you get away with this. Oh, really? You and what army? Find me when you're ready. Pathetic. Then the Fallen King turned and left, leaving us looking on angrily. We turned to Wise Jim the monkey. Would you like to come back with us to our base? It should be safer there. Yes, please. Let me just pack a bag. And he grabbed as many coconuts and bananas as he could carry. Okay, now I'm ready. So with plenty of snacks for the journey, we all boarded the boat together. On days 36 to 39, I had arrived back at the base with Kiki and our new friend, Wise Jim. While he enjoyed some bananas and took in the new view, Kiki, Bella, and me all got to work building a new area for him to stay in. We added a treehouse onto one of the trees just outside the cabin. Here, this is just for you. We hope you like it. Like it? I love it! Once he was all settled, I decided to ask him what he knew about the legendary potion or the potion of light. The potion of light? Yes, I've heard many stories about it. 
I can't say for sure where it is hidden, but I do know that it is buried in an abandoned mineshaft out in the Badlands. But be warned, it is a harsh landscape, and there are no friendly creatures that live there. The Badlands, huh? Sounds pretty bad. I'll need to make sure I prepare before I go. Before I could leave for the Badlands, though, Bella and I needed to work on the next part of the JJ statue. I couldn't help but feel like if I could finish it before I faced off against the Fallen King, I would be brave enough to rescue the friend it represented. With the power of friendship on my side, no Badlands monsters, skeletons, or even the Fallen King himself could stand in my way. From days 40 to 43, I headed down into the mines to look for some diamonds. I saw Kiki running out of a tunnel, screaming. What's going on? Spiders! That tunnel is full of spiders! Did you happen to see any diamonds in there? I did, but the spiders were crawling around all over them. Yuck! I'm out of here! Just a couple little spiders? I fought gas and skeletons. I can handle spiders. I took a look into the cave and saw the spiders all over the ground. They were pretty big, and I didn't want to get anywhere near them. So I fired an arrow at the spiders from a distance instead. They didn't like that too much, and they swarmed at me. One of them bit me, and it was poisonous brought me down to two hearts. I had to draw my sword and fight it if I wanted to survive. It was a close call, but I managed to defeat the spiders without breaking my sword or losing any more hearts. Yes. I scooped up the diamonds and rushed back to my base with them. There, I used them to craft a diamond axe, diamond sword, and diamond boots. Sparkly and super strong and durable. On days 44 to 49, I journeyed to the Badlands in search of the underground mineshaft where the Potion of Light was hidden. Wow, look at all of this sand, and it's so hot out. I hope I can find the potion fast. I'm already getting thirsty. As I was walking through the sand and looking for some shade to take a quick break in, I suddenly locked eyes with an Enderman. Uh-oh. But then I remembered. I was much stronger than I had been before, and I had all my upgraded gear. This was going to be a snap. After just a few hits, the Enderman went down. I was honestly kind of surprised at how easy it was. Maybe I could take on the Fallen King after all. Maybe it wouldn't even be that hard. As I kept walking, I saw more Endermen up ahead, attacking a horse. Hey, leave him alone! But the horse didn't need my help. He took down the Enderman all by himself and then galloped over to me. Ha, huh, I'm Id. I'm Zozo. I'm out here looking for a special potion. Have you heard anything about it? I found the mineshaft where it was hidden, but it was gone. All that was left was a note saying it had been taken away and hidden somewhere else by the ocean. Oh, I guess I need to head that way then. Are you trying to fight the Fallen King? Let me help you. Hop on my back, and I'll get you there faster. So I jumped onto Ed's back, and we rode off into the sunset. On days 50 to 53, I rode on Ed's back all the way to the beach. After how dry and dusty the Badlands were, it was amazing to breathe in that cool sea air. Hmm, do you think we could take a break and go swimming, Ed? The water looks great. Sounds like a swell idea to me. So we hopped into the water and started splashing around. It was so much fun, and I couldn't wait to splash around with JJ when we finally rescued him. But that would have to wait. We had company. Oh no, it's the shark! That's right, the shark was back, and he looked hungry. He was a super scary enemy before, but that was before I got my diamond sword. Take that, sharky! With a few strong hits, I was able to turn this shark into sushi and Ed and I were safe again. Now it was time to look around. Maybe the legendary Potion of Light was around here somewhere. That's when we found a little cove on the edge of the beach and the friendly ocean nymph that lived there. I asked her about the note telling us we could find the Potion of Light on the beach, but she told us if the potion was ever here, it's gone now. Bummer! How am I ever going to fight the Fallen King and save my friend JJ? I think the friendly ocean nymph felt bad for me because she gave me a diamond helmet to match my axe, sword, and boots. I'm even tougher now. On days 54 to 57, I decided I needed to beef up the base's security to keep me and my friends safe from the Fallen King. After all, he's attacked us before, he could always do it again. Maybe the base needed a bigger wall, made of stone this time. If I mine enough stone to make a big strong wall, there's no way the Fallen King's forces are going to get in and kidnap us. So that's exactly what I did. When I'd finished mining the stone and building the wall, I put torches along the top for extra safety. That's when Wise Jim came over. Hey. I've been whipping up a new enchantment that'll help you defeat the Fallen King, but I need a favor. Some zombies have been hanging around my favorite banana tree. Go scare them off. That enchantment sounded pretty sweet, so I grabbed my bow and arrow and went after the mob of zombies hanging around Wise Jim's favorite banana tree. I've gotten so strong now, these guys are no challenge for me. I ran in, firing arrow after arrow, until those nasty zombies were running for the hills. I know JJ would have been so proud of me. When I went back to Wise Jim, he gave my diamond sword an unbreakable enchantment, making it stronger and tougher than it had ever been. I bet the Fallen King 
Something is shaking in his boots. Don't worry, JJ. I'm almost strong enough to come and save you. On days 58 to 62, things got serious. It all started when I was working on my JJ statue. I think I was about half done, and it was looking great. I needed to make it perfect, so when I rescued JJ and all my new friends got to meet him, he'd be able to see what a good job I did. I was so wrapped up in making the statue perfect, I didn't even notice that some of the Fallen King's scariest goons were on their way. A gang of skeletons in full diamond armor with diamond swords. This has gone on far enough. The Fallen King has sent us to crack your shell, destroy your base, and leave nothing standing. Give up or face our wrath. But there was no way I was going to give in. I told Bella and Kiki to hold inside the base and make sure nobody got in. Well, Wise Jim and I took on the diamond skeletons. Let's show these boneheads who's boss. But the fight was way harder than we thought. The Fallen King must have sent some of his best men, because as we fought, they just wouldn't go down. Thankfully, Wise Jim and I fought hard, hard enough to defeat some of the diamond skeletons and send the rest running. We were just about to celebrate when one of the fleeing skeletons fired an arrow from the woods and hit Wise Jim. No! I tried to help, but it was already too late. Wise Jim was gone. On day 63 to 66, I chased the diamond skeleton into the deep dark forest as he ran away. He destroyed Wise Jim, and I needed to avenge him. There was no way I'd let them escape, no matter how spooky the deep forest got. Get back here. You want to fight? Let's fight! I backed him into a corner and threatened him with my unbreakable diamond sword. Tell me, where can I find the legendary potion of light? You'll never get it. It's being guarded by one of the Fallen King's strongest warriors at the bottom of the King's Royal Gold Mine. And besides, you're not leaving this forest alive. That's when the other surviving diamond skeletons came out of the woods around me. Oh no, this whole thing was a trap. They were trying to lure me away from the base this whole time. This is for you, Wise Jim. I'll never forget you. That's when I fought the strongest I ever fought and defeated all of the skeletons except one who was shaking with fear. Thankfully, he could still be useful to me. Tell me, where can I find the Fallen King's royal gold mine? On day 67 to 70, using the last Diamond Skeleton's instructions, I made my way to the Fallen King's royal gold mine. It was huge and horrible. Villagers that the Fallen King had kidnapped were being forced to mine gold for him, or they'd be attacked by some of his skeleton warriors. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to get you out of here. Who's the boss around these parts? The captured villagers told me to travel further into the mine, where I'd meet one of the Fallen King's strongest warriors, Dorzen, the Soul Eater. A huge red monster with a scary smile and a fist made of stone. He was so tough, even my diamond sword would have trouble hurting him. He was waiting next to a pit filled with lava. It isn't too late to give up, Dorzen. Tell me where to find the Potion of Light and let all these villagers go, and I won't have to hurt you. But Dorzen wasn't interested in talking this out. I don't even know if he could talk. He just attacked me and managed to take all of my hits while beating me again and again. He was for sure the toughest enemy I'd ever faced. It was such a big mistake to come here alone. Just as Dorzen was about to throw me into the lava pit, Ed the horse charged in. Get away from my friend, you monster. Ed charged right into Dorzen and knocked him over into the magma pit. Dorzen got burned and ran off. He'd probably think twice about messing with us again. Thanks for the save, Ed. On day 71 to 74, Ed and I searched through the mine to find where Dorzen may have been hiding the legendary Potion of Light. Ed was still grateful for me defeating the shark that attacked us on the beach, so he was more than happy to help me rescue JJ from the Fallen King. Eventually, after mining through some stone, we found a secret door that led into Dorzon the Soul Eater's lair. Talk about spooky! The place was dark, lit only by a few little torches and scary-looking weapons on racks over the walls. There were even a few villagers locked up in a cage. We let them out, of course, along with all the others. But no matter how hard we looked, we couldn't find the Potion of Light. It didn't make sense. That skeleton told me Dorzon was hiding it in the Fallen King's royal gold mine. Look, I found a note. What does it say, Ed? I don't know. Horses can't read. He was right, so I took a look at the note. It came directly from the Fallen King. It said, Well, well, well. It looks like you found your way into my mind. Exactly as I expected. You're an impressive one. I can see why JJ talks about you all the time. If you care about him, I suggest you stop looking, or both of you are going to get hurt. Rats! 
Looks like the Fallen King was always one step ahead. On days 75 to 78, I headed back to the base to build some improvements and think about what I'd learned. After Wise Jim died, I was worried about Bella and Kiki, and I realized that if more of the Fallen King's army attacked, they needed a safe place to hide. I added an iron safe room to the inside of the base with a secure door and torches to ward off mobs. If someone attacked, they could hide in there while I fought off the bad guys. I had also taken some gold from the Fallen King's gold mine and turned it into a chest plate and some leggings. That's when Doors on the Soul Eater returned, and Bella and Kiki ran off to hide in the new safe room. It was time for me and Doors on to finish this. He was tough, even with his lava burns. And with my new armor, I was able to get an edge and defeat him for good. Doors on won't be eating any more souls. And for defeating such an evil monster, I got upgraded. I was bigger, stronger, faster, and my shell was tougher than ever. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see the Fallen King take me on now. That's when I noticed that Dorzon had dropped a note. A note I was never meant to see, directly from the Fallen King. It read, Once you've captured Zozo, take him to my mountain castle. My other operative will meet you there. And now, he's gonna be meeting me. On days 79 to 84, I traveled alone to the Fallen King's mountain castle, where Dorzen was going to meet another one of the Fallen King's goons. Surely this guy would be able to direct me to the king himself. But when I finally arrived at the castle, after two days of mountain climbing, I didn't find any monsters waiting for me. I turned to see a viking named Bjorn walking up behind me, carrying a diamond axe. Hello, my friend. I see you too are seeking the Fallen King. He kidnapped one of my friends too. Maybe we can work together. That's a great idea. Let's do it. You can help me free my friend JJ, and I can help you free yours. Wait, how did you find out about this mountain castle, Bjorn? A uh, good question. That's when Bjorn suddenly attacked me with his diamond axe. Thankfully, with my upgraded shell and a full set of armor, he couldn't do too much damage. I pulled out my diamond sword and hit him until he gave up and dropped his weapon. Bjorn was the Fallen King's other goon all along. Okay, Bjorn, if that is your real name, tell me where I can find the Fallen King. It is my real name, and the Fallen King's true base is in the Dread Palace in the volcanic magma fields. But that's one of the most dangerous places on the map. How could anyone live there? The Fallen King is undefeatable. He can live anywhere he likes. And if you think you can just waltz in there and defeat him, then you've got a death wish, kid. On days 85 to 89, I made my way back to my base, feeling more doubtful than ever. Sure, I had a cool sword and a tough shell, but what's that worth compared to the Fallen King and his army of evil? What if there was no way for me to save JJ, and he just ended up being forced to mine gold for an evil king in a palace full of lava? I felt so down about all this that I decided to just go to bed. That's when Bella came and woke me up. She had some words of encouragement for me. Don't you remember the story? You're the hero who's destined to defeat the Fallen King. Maybe the story is wrong, Bella. He's so much more powerful than I thought. Even some of his foot soldiers were able to beat Wise Jim. How can I beat him? That's when Bella had a genius idea. Maybe you can use your natural skills against him. You're a turtle. You have a tough shell. Maybe you don't need armor. But why would I fight without armor? Isn't it obvious? The Fallen King wears a huge set of heavy armor. It's tough, but it slows him down. If you go in there without your armor, you'll still be tough because of your shell. But you'll be able to run circles around the Fallen King. Maybe that's the edge you need. It was a wild idea. So wild, it just might work. On days 90 to 94, I prepared for the final battle against the Fallen King and to rescue JJ. I removed my armor, just like Bella said. I was so much faster. I bet the Fallen King could never be this fast. I bet I can leave that meanie in the dust. But if I'm relying on my natural defenses, I'm gonna need to make sure I've got one heck of an attack. I needed to gather the material to upgrade my diamond sword and my bow. Enough that even the Fallen King and his strongest minions won't stand a chance. First, the sword. Using some of the knowledge from the books Wise Jim kept in his treehouse, I gave my unbreakable sword three more enchantments. Sharpness, which increases damage. Knockback, which knocks my enemies back when I hit them. And finally, Fire Aspect, which sets my enemies on fire when I hit them directly. I can't wait to show JJ this awesome sword when I rescue him. Next, I upgraded my bow. Just like my sword, I gave it extra power, which makes it do even more damage. Then I gave it knockback so I could stun my enemies and knock them off their feet. And of course, flame, so my arrows will set my enemies on fire, just like my sword. Yes. Ha! The Fallen King isn't going to know what hit him. Hang in there, JJ. I'm going to defeat the king, save you, and set everybody free. Believe it. On days 95 to 97, I started to get nervous. Sure, I was a lot stronger and faster and had way more powerful weapons than I used to, but every time I'd faced the Fallen King before, he was so scary, I needed to run away rather than defeat him. 
What if he's got even more tricks up his sleeve? No, no, I can't think like this. I can't let him get into my head. This is just what he wants. To try and calm my nerves, I decided to finally finish my JJ statue. Even if I was too weak to take down the fallen king and save my friend from his clutches, I'd have this statue to remember him by. But when I actually finished the statue, everything changed. I realized it'd been the first time in almost a hundred days that I'd seen JJ. But this wasn't JJ, it was just a statue. He couldn't talk to me, play games with me, do fun Minecraft challenges with me. He couldn't do anything that JJ could do with me. He could just sit there and remind me that he's gone. That's it, I can't afford to be a coward. Even if I'm afraid, even if I'm in danger, it's worth the risk to get JJ back. I know I'm strong enough to do this. It's time to take the Fallen King down. And when JJ is here again, he's going to see this awesome statue that I made for him. There's just one more thing that I need to do first. On day 98, I spoke to my friends at the base, Bella, Kiki, and Ed the Horse. I told them that I was going to go to the Dread Palace, take on the Fallen King, and get JJ back. I want to come too. Yeah, let me tag along. Let's take down this evil guy. No. Kiki, Ed, you've put yourself in too much danger already. You two hang back and stay in the safe room. We've known each other the longest. We started this, so we'll finish this. Nobody can disagree with that. The two of us took the time to discuss a battle plan before we set off. After all, the Fallen King had always been one step ahead, so we needed to make sure that we would be two steps ahead if we wanted to beat him. And with that, we were ready to set off. Anything else you want to say? Seeing as this might be the last time we see each other, if this goes badly and the Fallen King captures us. Good luck! And make sure to subscribe to Zozo! Z-O-Z-O! -O. We've got even more crazy, wild, and exciting adventures to come, where our hero fights diabolical villains, makes awesome bases and weapons, and meets more interesting friends, like us! All of us agreed, and with that, Bella and I set off for the Dread Palace. On day 99, the assault on the Dread Palace finally began. Just as we expected, the Fallen King had the place heavily guarded. A bunch of diamond-armored skeleton warriors were assembled outside the front gate. But it's okay. We planned for this. Good luck, Bella. I believe in you. The first stage in the plan was simple. Bella would go in first with her cat speed and agility and distract the first wave of guards. With the skeleton army drawn away from the front gate, it was time for me to storm in and take charge. But of course, it wasn't that easy. In the opening hallway of the Dread Palace, the Fallen King had built in trap doors that dropped down into pits full of molten lava. Yikes! Thankfully, I was able to dodge the trap doors and keep going. But it wasn't over yet. Not by a long shot. Once I made it past the first few hallways, the Fallen King deployed another one of his deadly minions, the Behemoth a huge, extremely powerful monster. I needed to be careful. Even a couple hits from a monster like that would destroy me. But because I was only wearing my natural armor, just like Bella and I had planned, I could run circles around him. I hit him several times with my fully upgraded sword, setting him on fire and knocking him down for good. Is that the best you got, Fallen King? Maybe I underestimated you. Hey, over here! I recognized that voice. It was JJ. I'd finally found him. No time to waste. I ran over to the cell the Fallen King was keeping my best friend in and set him free. I was so excited to be hanging out with him again. But we weren't done yet. I told him to head back to our base. I have some unfinished business to take care of. On day 100, with JJ saved, I needed to make sure he and everyone else was never captured again. I needed to fight and defeat the Fallen King once and for all. I ran deeper into the Dread Palace, sword and bow ready to take on anything I saw. First, more diamond armored skeletons, which I was able to take out with a quick volley of arrows. Bam! 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 They ran away, screaming and on fire. Then, a behemoth and soul eater tag team emerged from the dark as I got even closer to the throne room. These guys would have seemed tough a while back, but after what I'd been through, nothing could stop me. I pulled out my enchanted diamond sword and went to work, sending them burning and running just like the skeletons. I felt unstoppable until I reached the throne room. There stood the fallen king, and it looked like this whole time he was waiting for me. At long last, you're here. You've been a thorn in my side for too long. Now I'm going to destroy you personally. Are you ready to see true power? Rather than replying, I shot the Fallen King with a bunch of super-powered arrows. But all that seemed to do was make him laugh. But that's when he got really scary. The Fallen King unleashed his true form, growing larger and more powerful than he'd ever been before. I 
couldn't fight him like this. I needed to run. I kept running down the hallway as this giant, terrifying version of the Fallen King left the throne room and chased me. You can't run forever. You're mine now. I ducked into the Fallen King's supply room, closed the door, and began building a brick wall in front of it. But that wouldn't hold him for long. He was already starting to smash his way through it. Think. Think. But that's when I saw it, sitting on the shelf, the legendary Potion of Light. Wasting no time, I grabbed and took the potion. That's when everything changed. I grew to the same size as the Fallen King. My hearts and armor literally doubled. I was faster, stronger, and even had the power of light on my side to go against the Fallen King's darkness. When he breached the wall, the battle was on. I attacked him relentlessly, dodging his attacks and striking back at him. Just like Bella said, even in his upgraded state, his heavy armor slowed him down. He couldn't stop me from getting him. Curse you! Curse you! I struck him one more time with my burning sword, and the fire consumed him. The fallen king was no more, and everyone he'd captured was free. When I finally returned to the base, I saw that JJ and Bella had returned safely, and were hanging out with Ed and Kiki next to the statue I made. Hey, is that supposed to be me? On day one, I spawned in as Monkey D. Luffy, the rubber boy with a straw hat. Yo ho ho, I'm going to be the future king of the pirates. But it looks like I'm just a little kid for right now. At least my dreams are big. I gotta go find some good food to eat so I can grow up to be super strong. But there's nothing around this village but coconut trees. Whoa, a storm is rolling in. I better take cover. Is that a lightning bolt or a person? That's the straw hat, Zozo. I be Captain O'Kilowatt, and you've had the misfortune of washing ashore of me island. Here you will be doomed to wander the many dangerous terrains in search of me greatest buried treasure. If ye succeed within 100 days, ye may keep what ye find. But if ye fail, ye will never be allowed to leave. Buried treasure? Well, Monkey D. Luffy is a pirate, so that treasure is as good as found. Ye had better hope that you find it, or ye will never voyage on the sea again. Challenge accepted, you stormy scallywag. Good luck, Zozo. You'll need it. <laughs> Captain O'Kilowatt laughed evilly and rained down lightning on the village, so I ran for cover. He attacked several houses and even wiped out the villagers. Talk about no mercy. I have no idea how big this island is, but I'm going to scour every block of it until I find that buried treasure. The dangers ahead are completely unknown, but I will face them with a bravery suited for the future king of the pirates. On day two, I started to explore the nearby tropical forest. I have six hearts right now, so I need to stay in the least dangerous areas for right now. Who knows, maybe the buried treasure is in the easiest place to find it. That would be one crazy trick, wouldn't it? Oops, did I say this forest wasn't dangerous? What I meant to say was, it's filled with ghosts. Somehow, they kind of look familiar. Are you guys the ghosts of the villagers from back there? Yes, we are. Why couldn't you have been hit by that lightning instead of us? Just lucky, I guess? Not for long, Zozo, because we ghosts are going to haunt you. Oh no, I can't punch ghosts, and I don't have any weapons that can affect them. I gotta run to safety. Ah, get away from me! All of a sudden, I saw something swoop down from above. It picked me up and carried me away from the ghosts. When I got my bearings, I saw that I was at the top of a tall tree. There was a bird with a colorful beak in front of me. Wow. Were you the one who saved me? Yes, sir. I'm Stan. Stan the Toucan. And whenever there's someone in trouble in this tropical forest, I come to the rescue. That's cool, man. I'm Zozo. Want to join my pirate crew? Sure can, man. Every great pirate needs a bird sidekick, after all. I'm looking for the buried treasure of Captain O'Kilowatt. Do you know anyone who can help? I just might. Follow me. On day three, Stan the Toucan took me to a small workshop among the trees. Wait until you meet my friend, Titus the Armorer. He makes all sorts of useful items. Sweet! An armorer could be useful to have on my pirate crew. Yes. He could make me items and gear fit for a pirate king. I looked around and saw lots of really awesome armor. Did you make these all by yourself? Sorta of kinda, my good pirate. I do the crafting, but it takes brave adventurers like yourself to gather materials for me. I've had loot brought to me from all the terrain on this island, and I always take what I'm given and make it into something better. Neat! I've accepted Captain O'Kilowatt's challenge, so I'll be visiting all of the terrains myself. What can you tell me about them? Well, the main ones are the ancient ruins, the Cloud City, and the Misty Maze. 
nobody who has looked for Captain Okilowat's treasure has ever found it. But there's plenty of rare items I can make for you, if you bring me back stuff from each of them. So, you're saying I should visit each of those three terrains in the next 97 days, if I want to have a chance at winning? Pretty much. I set off for the terrains without a moment's delay. Luffy never passes up a chance to adventure. He also never travels without his crew, so I took Stan the Toucan with me. On days 4 to 5, I was still in the tropical forest, so I made sure to gather wood from the trees. Once I had enough, I made my first set of tools. Yes. The wooden pickaxe will serve me well in gathering stone, but I won't be needing them for long. Because I'm going to use that stone to craft myself a set of stone tools. Alright, time to build a base for the brand new Straw Hat Pirate Crew. I laid a bunch of wood blocks for the foundation and made sure to give lots of space for all the new friends I'm going to recruit. I get the captain's quarters, of course and Stan gets a birdhouse all to himself. I too can. Believe this base is wonderful, Captain Zozo. Oh, I get it. Two can. Well, two can play that game, Stan. Very funny. But leave the puns to me, won't ya? Gotta put a kitchen in here, too. I may not have a chef on my crew yet, but I am starting to get really hungry. While I was placing down the chest, I saw a strange item fall out of a tree. Say, isn't that the gum gum fruit? It is! Not only did it fill up my hunger bar, it also made me stretch out like a crazy rubber boy, and I grew to the size of regular Luffy. I've got nine hearts now! With that much health, I'll be able to last much longer in a fight with mobs now. I'm that much closer to becoming the king of the pirates! Yo ho ho! On days six to eight, I was on my way to the ancient ruins when I saw a flock of giant penguins. How adorable! Except, they didn't seem friendly at all because they were chasing someone down. And it looks like another human. And look, they're wearing an enormous chef's hat. Well, now I gotta help. I was so mad that I started smoking and my skin turned red with anger. Now my fists are stronger than my sword. Looks like the gum gum fruit I ate earlier gives my punches extra knockback. And I'm going to need it because these penguins totally outnumber me. I need to hit them quickly and then dodge. If they surround me, I'm dinner. With a gum gum powered punch, I took down the biggest one and the others retreated. March back home, penguins. Don't mess with the future king of the pirates. You okay, chef? Thanks to you I am, but how did you know I was a chef? Just a lucky guess, based on the fact that you are wearing this slightly oversized chef's hat and a chef's apron. You got me. I am a chef. Name's Skyler. I'm going to the ancient ruins to find a spice that can really cook my cooking up another notch. Wanna come with? I could really use a bodyguard. Sure. I'm headed there myself, looking for treasure. Personally, I think food is the greatest treasure of all. I like both treasure and food, for different reasons, of course. I can't eat gold. Or can I? You really shouldn't try to eat gold. It's not food. I'll take your word for it. You are the chef, after all. On days 9 to 10, I arrived at the ancient ruins, the first of the dangerous terrains that I must explore to complete the challenge. Before going any further, I decided to consult my loyal crew. So, Stan, Skylar, are you excited to explore the ruins? You know what, Captain Zozo. Excited? No. Eager to find the ingredients? Yes. But remember, this place is dangerous. What are you so worried about? Uh, it starts with that giant dinosaur right behind you. I thought these guys went extinct years ago, but it seems like I might be the extinct one if I don't get out of here. Ouch! That bite took away a lot of hearts. If only I knew how to use all of my different gum gum powers. Skylar has a weapon, but even together we're no match for this dinosaur. We've got to run away and fight another day. My crew and I ran away from the ancient ruins. Captain Okilowat wasn't kidding around when he said these terrains were dangerous. And this one was only the first one. That was pretty brave back there, Zozo. Even if you didn't win. My hunger meter was getting low again, so I decided to go back home and grab a bite to eat. Which would be a lot easier now that I had a chef on my pirate crew. On days 11 to 12, I made sure that Skylar felt right at home as the head chef of the new Straw Hat crew. I built her a small house and made the food preparation area even bigger. To make sure we had plenty of ingredients, I also constructed an outdoor farm and a flower garden where we could grow plants and made pens where we could keep animals for meat. Of course, no pirate base would be complete without a flag to tell intruders who we are. The skull and crossbones mean business. Yar! We'll be heading back to the ancient ruins in a few days. Anything else I should know about that place? I heard that Captain Okilowat has members of his own pirate crew 
guarding each of the terrains. No way! He has a crew of his own? Yes, and you are going to become a part of it if you fail the challenge. At least, that's what's happened to all the other ones who tried it before. He forces people to join his crew? That's terrible! I can't let that happen to me! Just be careful, Zozo. The other pirates thought that way too, before he got them. Don't worry about it. I'm not like those other pirates. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. I can talk big, but these former challengers would all be strong opponents. I had to get in gear to face them. I decided to train my battle skills by fighting some cave centipedes underground. I gave their legs to Titus the Craftsman, and he was able to make me a special suit of armor that could climb walls. That'll come in handy later. On days 13 to 15, I was in the tropical woods when I realized I needed a new way to train. Stan, what should I do in order to get stronger? I need to become powerful enough to take on the dinosaur in the ancient ruins. Have you thought of going to one of the other dangerous terrains first? Maybe you'll be able to find something to help you there. That's a good point. Might I recommend the Cloud City? With your new climbing ability, you should be able to get up there through the mountains. I'll leave right away. I set off for the highest point on the map, climbing the walls with my centipede leggings until I reached the top. At the top of the mountain, it started to snow and visibility decreased. But wow, this place is amazing. There was a bridge connecting the Cloud City to the top of the mountain. Who knew there were materials that could be used to build buildings on top of clouds? I'm definitely gonna have to take some of these special blocks back with me. I better grab them fast because I can hear something inside the city. It looks like I've got company. An ice gas is flying towards me. So you must be Captain Zozo. I'm afraid you won't find any treasure here. Are you a member of the Okilowat crew? Yes, I am Ghastly Gust, the keeper of Cloud City. My wind powers will blow you away. I could feel Ghastly Gust attempt to launch me off of the mountain, but I didn't give in. This was a fight I had to win if I was going to complete the challenge. The Ghast had ice ball firing abilities, which trapped me in ice and slowed me down while also hurting me. With my gum gum abilities, I was able to stretch upwards and reach the gas. This way with my punches, I pummeled Ghastly Gust. When I took him down, he dropped some sort of weird key. I wonder what this opens. During the fight, it seemed like I had achieved a new level of strength. I decided to return to the base and placed one of the cloud blocks on the ground. Nothing happened. Oh, this thing is broken. I want a refund. I started jumping on it and I suddenly leveled up. Sure enough, I was faster, stronger, and could jump two blocks higher. Whoa, I've gone to second gear. In this most powerful form, I have 21 hearts. The training was a success. On days 16 to 19, I went to explore the Misty Maze. Since I had defeated a member of Captain O'Kilowatt's crew at Cloud City, I figured I could do the same here. True to its name, the Misty Maze was easy to get lost in. There were also skeletons everywhere, which is never a good sign. Speaking of signs, I found a mysterious note inside of the treasure chest along with another key. The note said, I have searched throughout every corner of the Misty Maze and there is no trace of Captain O'Kilowatt's buried treasure. I did find this key though, so whoever finds this treasure chest might have a chance to use it. What were these keys? It looked just like the one the ghastly gust dropped. Suddenly, I was attacked by the skeletons. They must have been guarding this treasure chest for Captain O'Kilowatt. Take this! You can't stop second gear! I found my way out of the maze with the key in hand. On days 20 to 22, I went to the beach on the edge of the island and fought some aggressive walruses. They weren't that tough now that I had gotten stronger, so I was able to gather their tusks as material. I mined some pearl blocks so I could trade it to the craftsmen in exchange for a better helmet and boots. Here you are, Zozo. New and improved armor for a pirate captain. Thanks, Titus. With stronger defenses, I went back to the ancient ruins. I had the feeling that I could find a third key there. The dinosaur last time was still roaming around, but I was geared up in more ways than one. I made short work of it. Wow, I really have gotten stronger. But not strong enough. Who are you? I am Anubis, the true guardian of the ancient ruins. I have been sent by Captain O'Kilowatt to defeat you here and now. He must really want to protect that buried treasure. Let me guess, it's here, in the ruins? You wish. The treasure is in a place where you'll never reach. Was the buried treasure not in any of the terrains I'd been to so far? Just then, Anubis was struck by a lightning bolt. It was Captain O'Kilowatt. But why did he attack his own crewmate? 
You were a fool to give away clues so easily, Anubis. I have no room on my crew for fools. I was tempted to fight him then and there, but I knew I wasn't strong enough. So I just grabbed the key he dropped and ran away. On the way out of the ruins, I grabbed some spice from the ground. Just what Skylar was looking for. On days 23 to 26, I returned to the base with all three keys and also the spice for Skylar. Thanks, Zozo. Now I can complete my ultimate recipes. Let me know if you make anything with meat in it. You still have to catch some animals if you want a meal to happen. Well, you're the boss, Skylar. No, I am the chef. You're the boss. I thought I was the captain. With the previous dangerous terrains unguarded, I could now gather materials from all of them. Yes. But first, I went into the cave to mine some iron ore so I could upgrade my stone tools to iron ones. That way I could mine even deeper. Just because I know there isn't treasure doesn't mean I shouldn't dig. I decided to go back to the ancient ruins where there are stone brick blocks. These are perfect for building a sturdier wall. And now, I was even able to build floating buildings just like in Cloud City. Borrowing some of the designs I saw in the Misty Maze, I created a series of secret passages that could be used to mislead any enemy pirates who tried to sneak into the base. Skylar came out of the house to give us a leash to help with the animals. I could use it for capturing animals, and I made sure to gather up some of the tastiest creatures I could find. I buffed up my defense by building a wall out of the strong blocks I had found. Even though the base was coming along great, I still wondered what to do with the three keys that I had gotten from fighting Captain Okilowat's crew. I'd have to explore the island tomorrow and see if there was a way I could use them. On days 27 to 31, I traveled to a part of the island I had never been to before. It was a valley covered in smog. I wonder where it's all coming from. Even though it was hard to see, I could sense somebody sneaking up on me. Who's there? A pirate I had never seen before stepped out of the smog. Oh no, I've been found. Forgive me, Captain. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Probably. Who are you? My name is Jovi the Ice Pirate. I'm a member of Okilowat's crew, but I can't stand by and let him imprison other pirates anymore. You should come back to base with me. It's much safer out there than hiding in this smoke cloud. Okay, I'll bring my special materials as well. They can only be found in this valley. Jovi went to mine some of the material, and I left the smog valley with him to return to the base. His special material, bronze dragon scales, were perfect for crafting an even stronger suit of armor. In the meantime, I added another tower to the base, and of course, more pirate flags. I also gave the outside of the wall a decorative wooden layer to make it look more like a pirate ship on land. Wow, that's perfect! Then Jovi came walking up to me and gave me a few samples of the bronze dragon scales. Now to go see Titus about that armor. I went to visit the craftsman and showed him the special materials. It seems like they brought back memories for him. These materials come from an island, far away from here. They're from a suit of armor I made back when I was undertaking the challenge. Wait, these are your materials? Yes, and the armor I built using them was one of my best. It belonged to a very dear crewmate who is sadly no longer here. I'm so sorry, Titus. Do you think we'd be able to rebuild the armor? We have to go back to that valley. The rest of it could still be down there. On days 32 to 35, Titus and I went to the Smog Valley and searched for the remaining pieces of the armor. The smog was so thick that it made it difficult to find anything, but it turned out that it was coming from some kind of huge factory. I noticed there was a door on the side of the factory with three keyholes. Those must be where the three keys go. Just then, we were ambushed by several giant trolls from the smog. There's so many, how can we stand a chance? Captain Zozo, you must unlock the door. I'll hold them off. But Titus, you're not strong enough. Who do you think I am, Captain? I am the craftsman, and these are my crafts. Just then, Titus equipped a really cool set of armor I'd never seen before. Now go, find out what's in there. I ran to the door and unlocked it, knowing that I may never see Titus again. His armor could survive the attacks of those giants, but not for long. Using the time Titus bought me, I put all three keys into the door and it began to open. Yes. Titus, come on, it's not too late. But it was. I turned and saw him fall to the ground after an extremely hard hit from the giants. Titus! I ran in and knocked down one of the giants, surprised at my own strength. But the next one hit me and took away most of my hearts. Captain, I've done all I can. Equip my armor. It's the only way. Okay. With Titus's enchanted armor, I fought back against the giants, fueled by the rage of what they did to my friend. When they were all defeated, the armor vanished into thin air. It was gone, 
and so was Titus. On days 36 to 39, I went through the large door that led to the factory. It was dark inside, but I soon found a light switch. I flipped it on and saw this place was up to something really sinister. Giants, like the ones outside, were being modified on a conveyor belt to become tricked out cyborgs. These must be Captain Okilowat's secret weapons. What is he planning to use them for? Beep boop, intruder alert. Uh-oh, an evil robot. Time to show no mercy. I hit the mechanical menace hard, and he was launched back. Yes. I was ready to go for round two when the robot seemed to stop fighting. Huh? Where am I? Where's the rest of my crew? Where's Titus? You knew Titus, Mr. Robot Man? Yes, we were members of the same pirate crew. I was captured here and turned into a cyborg. No way, that's terrible. I wondered if Okilowat would do the same to me and the rest of my friends if he captured me. Captain Okilowat's first mate did this to me with his powers. He's a man named Retro Gary who ate the Borg Borg fruit. He has my real body. We have to get it back. Don't worry, we will, for Titus. Thank you. It seems like I was able to snap Titus's old friend out of his cyborg mind control. Sometimes you gotta beat the mob inside to save yourself. On days 40 to 43, I built a memorial to Titus on the front of my base. Rest in peace, legendary craftsman. You did everything you could, Zozo. Thanks, Stan. This base is the safest place on the island now. We should let some of the good people from Cloud City live here. Good idea. I built some more floating dwellings inside the walls of the base. That way, the Cloud Villagers could live the way they were used to. We went to the Cloud City to invite the friendly Cloud Villagers to come live with us, and they agreed. There are so many people living at the base now, and all of them are counting on me to find the treasure. I can't let anybody down. I promise I'll become the king of the pirates. I believe you can do it, Zozo. Oh, hi, Jovi. How are you liking the base? I'm really grateful for the fact you took me in. I also thought I should tell you where you can find more of those materials I brought with me. You mean the pieces of Titus's armor? Yeah, there's more of it at my old hideout near the Smog Valley. It's in a badland where Captain Okilowat tests his lightning powers. Sounds like I'll need to be careful, but it means getting the rest of those materials. I have to do it for Titus. If I could complete that armor, I'd be able to face Captain Okilowat and his secret weapons with my friend's ultimate work. I prepared for a journey to the Badlands. On days 44 to 49, I traveled to the Badlands. Lightning strikes had destroyed this place. There were no mobs anywhere, not even friendly ones. But there was Captain Okilowat. He was practicing his lightning strikes, just like Jovi said. I see you there, Zozo. You're almost halfway out of days to complete my challenge. Are you sure you want to take me on now and cut it short? I'm only here for the rest of Titus's armor, O Kilowatt. I'll deal with you later. Oh, how brave. But I'm afraid you have misunderstood whose armor it is. I am the one who controls the island, so everything on it is mine. I have already gotten those materials for myself, and I'm going to use them for my secret weapons. You mean those cyborg giants? Yes. In fact, I have a prototype for you to play with right now. Enjoy, Straw Hat Zozo. Captain Okilowat disappeared by summoning lightning on himself, and one of those giant cyborgs showed up, armed with special futuristic enchantments. I was not going to back down. The cyborg was big and had a huge reach, but I was quick and ran around to avoid its attacks. I launched a barrage of second gear punches at the cyborg, toppling it over. Some secret weapon you are, you belong in the recycle. But even that wasn't enough. The giant cyborg started chasing me towards a rock wall. On days 50 to 53, I was backed into a corner. The giant cyborg was still attacking me in a canyon. I climbed up the wall with my centipede leggings and dropped down to strike from above. Gum Gum Battle Axe! That one looked like it did some real damage. I had to keep going while I had the advantage. The mob was really strong, but I managed to knock it out with some more punches. Man, that was just one of those secret weapons. If more were unleashed, I don't know how I could win. I need to go home and eat some good food. I couldn't worry about that now though, because the giant had dropped some of Titus's armor pieces. When I touched them, I could see Titus and his crewmates in the past. I could see them exploring all of the Misty Maze, Cloud City, and the ancient ruins. All of them were wearing powerful suits of armor. In the ancient ruins, Titus even knocked down a tree with only one swing. That's how strong he was. 
It seemed like they almost defeated Captain Okilowot back in the day. But Retro Gary helped out and turned Titus's friend into a robot. He destroyed the armor, and using a slingshot, he scattered the pieces of it throughout the Badlands in the valley. I had no idea Titus had been holding on to so much sadness. I'll make sure to complete the challenge so that nobody will ever have to face a defeat like that here again. On days 54 to 57, I made my way back to the factory to see if I could learn any more from Titus's robot crewmate. When I arrived on the inside and flipped the switch, I saw that a bunch of the giants had broken the conveyor belt and started to run free. This is probably bad for Captain Okilowot in the long run, but it's bad for me right now. Those giants seemed really angry. Looks like you could use some help. Thanks, Roboman. A friend of Titus is a friend of mine. Working together, we managed to defeat the ordinary giants. They dropped some kind of giant power-up, too. Huh? I suddenly grew bigger and became Luffy, third gear. Yo ho ho! It looked like I arrived at the factory just in time, too, because the conveyor belt was filled with the rest of the armor shards. Yes, I wore these once. When I was fully human, they belong to you now. Thanks, Roboman. I promise to get your body back. When I finally made it back to the base, I went to Titus's chest and picked up the last armor pieces I needed. In the chest, I also found Titus's hammer. I went to the crafting table, and doing the best I could, I put the special armor back together. Somehow, it felt like Titus was watching over me, guiding me through the crafting process. I swung the hammer over the pieces on the crafting table, and the recipe was complete. I equipped the armor, and it looked like it would protect me really well. Almost a bit too much. The helmet provided so much protection, I could barely see out of it. Maybe for now I'll take the helmet off. I like being able to see where I'm going. Now that I had put on the restored suit of armor, I saw another vision of the past. Titus was digging into the ground at the tropical forest. What did this mean? Should I try to search for treasure there? On days 58 to 62, I stocked the animal pens and loaded up the farm with all the delicious ingredients I found while exploring. Onions, rutabaga, sweet berries, and beetroot. Now the meals for my crew would be the tastiest of all time. Skylar made a big meal for everyone at the base. We set up a large picnic table, and for once, things were peaceful around here. Bon appetit! Enjoy your feast! Oh boy! There's meat, veggie, all of the food groups! This is the best! After dinner, I decided to mine so that I could have powerful tools to match my new set of powerful armor. Since one of my moves is called Gum Gum Battle Axe, I figured along with the rest of the tools, I could craft a diamond battle axe to use for chopping wood and enemies alike. They'll never see this coming! Yes. I decided to have the inside of the base look like a pirate ship to match the outside, and lined all the inner walls with dark wood. I made sure to keep lots of chests around to fill with gold. Can't have a pirate base without any treasure of our own. When all of this is over, I'll have Okilowat's treasure in here, too. On days 63 to 66, I went back to the tropical forest with Stan to see if maybe we could find the spot where Titus had been digging in the flashback. I don't see anything that looks like that place. What about you, Stan? Why are you asking me? I didn't see the flashback. Oh, yeah, right. You did say he was digging, so maybe you should try that hole over there. This looks a little deeper than the... Whoa! I'm falling in! I tumbled down into the shaft, leading deep down below the ground. If I hadn't caught myself with my wall climbing, that might have been it. But look at this place. There's a huge, empty chamber lit by torchlight. That's weird. It feels like there should be something in here. I dug around on the floor and found an unusual sarcophagus hidden among the rocks. It flung itself open, and out came a mummy. Back off, you gift-wrapped meanie. Thank you for setting me free. I've been trapped inside that box ever since my captain lost his island's challenge. Oh, sorry. I thought you were going to attack me. Say, what was your captain's name? His name was Captain Anubis. I was the most loyal member of his crew. Is he okay? No, I'm sorry. But I'm putting together a crew to stand up to Captain Okilowat. Do you want in? Of course. I don't like that guy at all. Also, this place was supposed to be where his treasure was, but he only put me here. Where do you think the rest of it is? I don't know, but first things first, you've got to help me get out of here. Oh, we can just climb out. Oh, right. Only I can do that. On days 67 to 70, I used the diamond tools I crafted to dig a tunnel leading back above ground. I broke open some of the blocks, and a devourer jumped into our path. He growled and hissed. Please tell me you're friendly too. It definitely wasn't, because it tried to devour me. I guess that's where the name comes from. If we don't defeat that devourer, 
We'll never get out of here. Don't worry, Mummy. I'm your captain now, and I won't let anything bad happen to you. I meant those words, too. All the other pirates who came to this island before me may have lost their way, but I made a vow that I'd keep everyone safe. That's how I'd become the king of the pirates, and no devourer would stop me. After I finished it off, the mummy and I continued our progress towards the surface. No other mobs showed up to attack us, so the rest of the journey was easy. Before I knew it, we were back near the top of the hole inside the tropical forest. Stan was waiting for us, and he seemed happy to see that I survived. Great to see you, Captain Zozo. But who's that mummy guy with you? I was once part of the crew of Anubis, but after seeing the bravery of Zozo, I've decided to join up with you guys. Well, the more the merrier. We all went back to the base together and had another delicious dinner to celebrate our crew getting even bigger. It was great to see so many people joining the team. I couldn't help but feel like we were all becoming one big happy family. On days 71 to 74, I was in the Badlands when I saw smog was everywhere again. I decided to take a look around. <coughs> it's kinda hard to breathe in here. But this looks just like the smog in the valley where I found that factory. That must be important. But what's even more important is that you <coughs> you find more of my adventures by searching ZOZO -Zo in the YouTube search bar. I walked for a long time before I saw exactly what I expected. Another factory for making those cyborg giants. I might have stolen back the armor pieces, but it seems like Captain Okilowat still hadn't given up on his plan. And there he is. I'll have to take him on. Foolish pirate. Have you forgotten that I train here? Taste me lightning. He started hitting me with lightning bolts. The armor was helping me avoid the worst of it, but he was too fast for me to get a lot of hits in. I realized I was still too weak to beat him, so I hightailed it out of there. I'll have to return to that factory later. But until then, the Badlands are off limits. That terrain is too dangerous to take lightly. On days 75 to 78, I was back at my base and doing some more work on the interior. Mostly by making the dining room bigger and more decorated. This is the place where everyone eats together, so it's gotta look nice. While I was thinking about all the friends that were already here to stay, I was surprised to get a visit from the robot. Zozo, I've come to help you unlock the full power of the armor you are wearing. This armor can become even more powerful? Do you remember back when Titus wore his own special armor? How it made him way stronger than usual while also granting him protection? Yeah, I saw both of you use that armor power in the flashback too. You can use it too. It was powered by the friendship between Titus and myself. That's our secret weapon. But how do I do it? I became friends with Titus while he was alive, but now he's gone. But I'm still here, Zozo, and I've come to give you what you are missing. I'm going to give you my friendship. Right. We fought together at that factory. We're definitely friends now. I accepted his friendship, and the power of the armor began to awaken. At the same time, so did my own power. I grew again, becoming Luffy fourth gear. Now I have 45 hearts. I'm almost strong enough to defeat Captain Okilawad now. I can feel it. On days 79 to 84, I decided to destroy the new factory with my fourth gear strength and supreme armor. For Titus, of course. And also because now I actually could probably do it. There are a bunch of those cyborg giants, but they were incomplete without the armor pieces that now made up my armor. You're no match for the power of friendship. My crew gives me strength. It was amazing to see how much stronger that I had become. These giants that were once going to be an unstoppable army were now completely unable to beat me. I feel like I can unleash even more strength. Gum Gum Super Jump. I grew massively, so I jumped on top of the factory, breaking through the roof. There were more robots inside the factory too. Look. He wears the captain's armor. Were these guys part of Titus's crew as well? Yes, we were captured and made into robotic servants by Retro Gary. Our real bodies are with him. Wow, I really need to do something about him. It seems like he's inconvenienced just about everyone. And how? Also, each of us kept a little bit more special material hidden away in case the captain ever came back for it. Excellent, I could use that to make some tools out of yes. it. Goodbye, diamond tools. Hello, special material tools. Now I've got a full set of armor and everything made of a material that gets stronger with friendship. I might as well call this stuff friend metal. On days 85 to 89, I got back to base, only to find that there were mechanized mobs attacking. Could there have been more cyborgs? No way, I thought I got rid of them all. Don't worry, everyone. The captain is here to help. These cyborgs were made from the devourers rather than the giants. 
It seems like Captain Okilwat had branched out and started making minions out of other things. They started retreating, but I'm gonna follow them back to the source. You won't get away that easily. I ran as fast as I could until I bumped into someone. It was another human, and they appeared to be carrying a bow and arrow. You can call me Sharpshooter. I came here from the Island of Snipers in search of buried treasure. I was challenged by a pirate captain who controlled lightning, that if I didn't- Sorry to interrupt, but I'll need to stop you right there. I'm actually on that quest right now. Oh, having any luck? Luck? Not exactly, but I'm doing pretty well at this point. Well, uh, let me know how it goes if you manage to get the treasure. Thanks? Personally, I think it has been more trouble than it's worth. The real treasure has been the friends I've made along the way. On days 90 to 94, I found that the cyborgs had gone back to a third factory. Man, how quickly can they build these things? This one was the biggest factory of all, and I could tell why. Because Retro Gary was right there, ready to fight with me. Well, how do you do, Straw Hat Zozo? Your crew has become quite the source of trouble for my boss, so I'm gonna make sure that you're no longer a threat. You can't beat me, Gary. I've got the power of friendship on my side. Your power of friendship is no match for the power of my Borborg fruit. Cyborg devourers, combine with me and go into Super Mecha Retro Gary mode. Retro Gary combined with all of the minions to become one super powerful cyborg. This would be a tough fight for sure, but if I won, I'd be able to get all of Titus's crew's bodies back. I swung my special material axe at Retro Gary, and it seemed to do a little bit of damage. He can be hurt, which means that I can win. His attacks were really strong, but so was my armor. I stood my ground and continued to hit him over and over again. On days 95 to 97, Retro Gary still hadn't admitted defeat, but then again, neither had I. Borg Borg Blaster! Gum Gum Mallet! We traded attacks until I noticed some of the cyborg parts were starting to fall off of him. He was getting smaller with each attack. Soon he'd be back to normal, and that's when I could take him out. Captain Okilowat and I are going to create an army of invincible cyborgs created from the world's strongest pirates. And both you and that armor are going to be our finest work yet. Me? Become a cyborg? You're dreaming, Gary. But here's a better dream. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. And with one final punch, I smashed his robotic body into pieces. Before his power faded away, Gary laughed maniacally. Apparently, he had one more secret left to reveal. Zozo, there is no treasure. It was just a story we came up with to lure pirates here to this island. The whole time, our plan was just to gather the raw material of our cyborg project. The other pirates were too weak, so they just became those low-level servants. If only I won against you, we'd finally have a perfect subject. With that, his power reached zero. Could it be true? Was there really no treasure? Either way, I'd have to take down Captain Okilowat to protect my friends, my crew, and the world from his evil plan. On day 98, I returned to the base and told everyone what happened. To my great delight, all the members of Titus's crew had gotten their bodies back when I defeated Retro Gary. <laughs> it seems our friendship with Titus was strong enough to grant you victory in this battle. It's not over yet. I've still got Okilowat to take care of. We'll be right behind you. I stopped by the house to visit Skylar, who had been preparing a welcome back meal for me ever since I left to go fight Gary. Here you go, Captain. This has all of the best ingredients. It was made as a sign of my loyalty to this crew and also our friendship. Thank you, Skylar. I don't know where I'd be without you, and I'd definitely be going hungry. Just then, Jovi and the Mummy approached. It seems you made good use of all that special material. It wasn't the material, Jovi. Captain Zozo's courage is what allowed him to defeat Retro Gary. If I'm being honest, I think it was a little bit of both of you guys. It was material! No, it was courage! Material! Courage! Okay, okay, guys, I get it. Just stop fighting. I was so thankful to see that everybody was safe and sound after the cyborg attack on the base. Well, almost everybody. There was still one important friend that I had to go see. On day 99, I headed back towards the destroyed village where everything had begun almost 100 days ago. That was the place where Captain Okilowat had challenged me, but now it would be the place that I would challenge him. 
But before that could happen, I remembered to walk through the tropical forest and say hello to Stan. Hey, Zozo, it's your toucan man, Stan. It's hard to believe how much we've been through to get here. You're telling me, friend. But treasure or no treasure, we're gonna see this through until the end. Somehow I knew you'd be the pirate to save us all. I knew it from the moment you set foot on this island. Stan and I walked together to the starting point and saw that Captain O'Kilowatt hadn't shown up alone. Your time is almost up, Zozo. You may have defeated Gary, but I still have a few more giant cyborgs left. And once I juice them up with my full lightning power, they will be invincible. Yeah, right. That was Skylar's voice. She was here, and so was the rest of the crew. We've got this, Captain. We'll take on the giants while you settle things with Captain O'Kilowatt. My crew sprung into action. I was so grateful and proud of all of them. But now I had to do my part. I was going to send Captain O'Kilowatt flying once and for all. He flew away into the clouds. By grabbing onto Stan, the two of us flew upward into his last retreat. On day 100, I landed on the Cloud City Island and came face to face with Captain O'Kilowatt. You shouldn't have lied about the treasure or turned people into cyborgs, or destroyed Anubis, or all the other evil things you did. You're a really bad captain, you know that? Oh, spare me. We're pirates. We're supposed to be the bad guys. We steal things. We're selfish. And we don't let something like friendship stop us from reaching our goals. That's where you're wrong, oh kilowatt. I won't even call you a captain anymore. You're just the guy I need to beat before I become the king of the pirates. King of the pirates? Ha! Huh. Keep dreaming. I will. I'll never stop dreaming. I'll never give up. And I'll never let you hurt anyone else. We charged at each other and began our greatest battle yet. His lightning bolts were as potent as ever, but with my courage to guide me, I pushed through. I channeled my inner anger and suddenly grew in size. Then I landed a four-gear punch on him. He looked like that really hurt. Guess he wasn't as tough as I thought. He was just really good at dodging. He was at the edge of the cloud, and I punched him super hard, sending him flying to another smaller cloud. I used my gum gum super jump ability to get to him. One more attack like that, and you're done. You'll never hit me again. I'm going to destroy this cloud with me lightning powers. Feel the storm. Sure enough, the clouds began to fall away beneath me. You can't make me fall. Too bad I had nowhere else to jump. This left me as an open target, and O'Kilowatt launched everything he had at me. This be the end, Zozo. No, it's the beginning of my dinner. I pulled out Skylar's welcome back meal and ate it. My health and hunger were instantly restored. Yummy. What? Good food from a good friend can weather any storm. You still can't hit me. Over here, Zappy. Stan flapped around near the bad guy's head. That was the only chance I needed. I jumped off my platform and smacked him in the face. Bye-bye, gum gum fist. That did it. O'Kilowatt was sent flying into the distance, never to be seen again. As I fell back towards the ground, I smiled because I knew there was no way this was the end. My entire crew sat on a trampoline made of cloud blocks to catch me. I landed safely among all my friends. They were the real treasure, one that could never be buried. And as Pirate King, I treasure them always. On day one, I spawned as a baby hoglin. Oh, I'm pretty adorable. But I only had three hearts. I was small, but I had a super strong sense of smell. I could smell everything I was seeing. Whoa. Great rivers of fire. I'm in the nether. Cool. Oh, look. There's a group of hoglins. That must be my family. I went over to them. They were nice and shared their crimson fungi with me. Life couldn't have been better. That is until a hungry illager came looking for some bacon. Run for cover, little Zozo. We'll take care of this. You're too small for battle. But I want to stay and fight. Leave it to the real warriors, you shroom sniffer. Be up, knock it off. He just likes to pick on other hoglins. He's a bit of a bully. You will join us one day, but not today. You must grow bigger first. Now hurry before they turn you into lunch. Sir, yes, sir. I ran as fast as my little hooves could go when suddenly I was covered in purple smoke. I had no clue what was happening. Suddenly, I was dropped near a river in a green field with blue skies. This didn't look anything like my home. Where am I? I looked around and saw a squirrel with sunglasses on. Bro, you just dropped out of the sky. For real, for real. I don't know where I am. This is 
isn't the nether. No, little dude, this is the overworld. You must have gone through a portal or something. All I know, bro, is it got all purpley and then poof. There you were, dude. I was so confused. I didn't know what this girl was saying, and I didn't know how I got into the overworld. Whoa, bro, something's up. I started to see red, blinking red. I felt weird. Something was happening to me. I was changing. You're going zombie, my dude. Zombie? The blinking red stopped, and I could tell my whole body looked different. You could see my bones, and my mane had gone flat. Oh no, I'm a zoglin now. What will my family think? How will they want me back now? I guess it's kind of cool to be a zombie. 100% my dude. It's the gnarly bones for me. Well, any ideas what I should do now? My guess is to find a portal to take yourself home. I bet you could find one in the forest. Just be careful out there, little guy. Here, take this. He handed me a potion of strength. Ah. Only use it when you're really in a jam. Good luck, bro. I gotta go gather my nuts I dropped when you popped out of the sky. Thank you, Mr... Call me Squeaks. Thanks, Squeaks. It was nice to meet a cool squirrel like you. He hopped away and I started towards the forest, passing by a river. My thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a shark that popped out of the river behind me. Luckily, I jumped out of the way just in time. Someone was feeling bitey today. I then continued making my way into the forest. On day two, I wandered through the forest to find a portal. I wasn't sure where to go next, but that's when I remembered my nose never failed me. Even though I was a zombie, my nose was just as powerful. I took a whiff around. <laughs> Hmm, that's an interesting smell. I followed my nose to a llama eating some berries. I decided to ask her if she had seen the portal, but she just ignored me. Hey, I'm talking to you. The llama turned and spit right in my snout. Okay, you're asking for some drama, llama. I wasn't going to let her get away with spitting in my face. I ran at her full speed and attacked. Unfortunately, I was too weak to do any damage. I didn't even have a weapon. Oh, how sad. Why don't you cry? Wee wee wee, all the way home, little Zoglin. You're much too small to be on your own. Really cool, on someone smaller than you. Listen, I'd love to go home, but my home is in the nether, and I can't get home without a portal. Oh, the nether? I heard they have great crimson fungi there. Yeah, they do. I pulled out a crimson fungi and flashed it at her. Okay, kid, fine. I'll tell you where a portal is if you let me have that. How do I know you aren't lying? You'll just have to trust me. You spit in my face, and you want me to trust you? Tell you what, I'll give you one now and one later if you take me to the portal. She thought it over and finally agreed to the deal. The last portal I saw was up ahead at a waterfall. I threw her a mushroom and she chomped down on it. Mmm, a little spicy with some smoky flavor. I like it. All right, come on, follow me. On day three, we came to a clearing, and up ahead was a glistening waterfall against a big cliff. There it is. The portal is up ahead. This is where we part. Time to hand over the other half of that mushroom. I handed her the rest of my mushroom, and she gulped it down. You know, kid, you're not so bad. You're not so bad yourself, Llama. Thank you for showing me the way. Well, let's not get all mushy. Good luck, and try not to get in any more trouble. The llama trotted off into the forest, and I headed towards the waterfall. It was so beautiful that I forgot to pay attention to my surroundings. Al popped a snake from the long grass. Mind if I slither on by? I guess the snake did mind. The snake was trying to strike me, but I was determined to get to the portal. I didn't have a weapon, but I had my tusks, and I was bigger than the snake. I hit him good and hard, knocking him out. Your history, snake. As he disappeared, I saw he left behind eggs. Oh, nice. I better hold on to these. The portal was just up ahead. I could see it now. Unfortunately, I could also see a pack of wolves. Please, I, I don't want any trouble. I just need to get back home through that portal. I can pay you in eggs? The horned enderman has commanded all zoglins to be taken to him. You're coming with us. Just then, a bunch of skulls came shooting at the pack of wolves. The wolves backed up, but stayed close, guarding the portal. Come with me if you wish to live. This dude was a little creepy looking. I'm sorry, who and what are you? I'm a wither. My name is Smithers. No, come on. Those wolves are going to try and take you to the horned enderman. We have to get you out of here. I have no clue what you're talking about, but I don't want to be eaten by wolves. So yeah, let's go. On days four to five, I followed Smithers into the shadows of the jungle. You need to make some weapons, little Zoglin. Now is a good time. After that, I have a quest for you. I need you to find the Mushroom Field Islands. Only a special hogling can find them. But I'm trying to get home. I need to get to the portal. If you find these islands, I will help get you home. For now, all the portals are being guarded. I think you are the Zoglin the Horned Enderman is searching for. Me? You got the wrong Zog. I'm just your average ham. Yeah, you might not be special, but we shall see. How will I know the way to the Mushroom Island? Follow your nose. If you really are the chosen one, you will have extra strong smelling powers. With that, 
Smithers flew away. He left me with a million questions. And what was that about smelling powers? I always had a good nose, but no, I couldn't be the one they were looking for. One thing was for sure, I needed to be able to defend myself. I started mining wood, stone, and coal. Then I made myself a crafting table. After that, I made a bow, an axe, a sword, and a pickaxe. Take a look at me now. All will tremble before me. Just as I was really getting into being dramatic, I caught the scent of something nearby. I wasn't alone. I looked up and noticed eyes staring back at me. An ocelot jumped down from the tree. He crouched, getting ready to pounce. Easy, little kitty. You wouldn't want to eat me. I'm rotten and don't taste good. But the truth was, I was scared. Those claws were no joke. How would I ever be able to win this fight? Oh, wait, the potion. I quickly pulled out my potion of strength that Squeak gave me and drank it. I grew a little bigger and got extra hearts. It's a good thing I met that weird squirrel. The ocelot pounced as I tried to get out of the way. We kept swinging at each other until I was able to push him out of the way. Luckily, I noticed that there were some arrows nearby. I guess an explorer left them here. I hurried and got on my bow and then started firing. It didn't take too many hits and I was able to take him out. So much for cats having nine lives. Just then, my nose picked up a different scent on the tree. Cocoa pods. Wow. Oh, these would be great for making a color or a snack for later. It was then that I could hear a crunching sound coming from somewhere in the jungle. I decided to follow the sound. I rounded some trees and saw a thicket of bamboo. It wouldn't be a bad idea to collect some of that. The crunching continued and I soon saw a panda relaxing on the ground, enjoying some bamboo. I hope you wouldn't mind if I took some for myself. Hey there, I'm Zozo. Could I take some of that bamboo? The panda looked up at me and shrugged, then went back to munching. Sweet, that was easy. It was definitely a relief to come across an adorable animal that didn't want to attack me. I mined a good portion of the bamboo, but made sure to leave some for the panda. I was very excited about my new supplies. Goodbye, Mr. Panda. Thanks for the bamboo. On days six to eight, I decided I liked the jungle so much that I'd take a couple days to go jungle glamping. After all, who knew if that wither was even trustworthy? The mushroom fields could wait. I sniffed around for a good spot and went to sleep in a cavern. Later, I woke up and decided to explore some more. Hey, check it out, a wild patch of pumpkins. I'm pumped. This would be a cool spot to build my glamping base with my bamboo. I'm thinking a yurt would be cool. I even found some melon seeds while cutting down plants. I trotted happily to the patch and began to make my jungle yurt. This would be a great little place to sleep and hide from mobs. Once I had the outside done, I put some finishing touches inside, including some jungle plants. Then I put a little fence around the pumpkin farm, melon farm, and my yurt. I also built a small melon and pumpkin farm outside. Yurt, sweet yurt. Ouch! Something had just hit me. A monkey was in a tree. He was throwing stuff at me. Hey, knock it off! As you wish. I'll knock all the blocks off your little house thingy. It's a yurt, you uncultured baboon. Now stop! The monkey didn't stop. He just wanted to be naughty and aggravate me. All right, enough monkey business. I grabbed my bow and fired a warning shot. The monkey screeched and swung off the tree. Hopefully he had learned his lesson. With the monkey gone, I could focus on some much needed dinner. Pumpkin chocolate bean cookies sounded good. I'd better hurry. It was getting late and mobs would be showing up. I crafted the cookies and went outside to enjoy the mood. Hey, this is pretty peaceful. It's just me, the trees, these pumpkins, and that horned enderman over there. <gasps> a horned enderman! A very tall horned enderman was staring at me from outside the fence. Well, hello, little Zoglin, without a care. I am the horned enderman. No need to fear. You! You're that evil enderman trying to capture all the Zoglins, and you probably are the one who teleported me here. I searched for the perfect Zoglin, but as for this teleportation, that is the wrong accusation. You're very poetic for an evil jerk. And you are very cheeky for a Zog who is not very beefy. You are coming with me. Do not try and flee. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. There's nothing that won't make me win. Oh, look at that. He even got me rhyming. I whipped out my bow and shot at him, but he teleported and suddenly was right next to me. I pulled out my sword and tried to attack him with that, but it was no use. The Enderman punched me so hard that I was stunned. There was no way I could do anything to fight this guy. Just as I lost all hope, the Enderman was hit with a big rock in the head. Something kept hitting the Enderman with all sorts of objects. Eventually, he got fed up and teleported away. There was that crazy monkey sitting on the roof of my yurt. Oh, you saved me. You chased the Enderman away by being annoying. Most impressive. I think we started off on the wrong foot. Would you like some pumpkin cookies? The monkey liked that idea and threw a banana at my head playfully. <laughs> Aren't you glad I didn't throw a rock? What a silly monkey. I'm glad he decided to come back after all. Soon the monkey left and I went to sleep. On days 9 to 10, I thought I'd sniff around to see if the mushroom field was anywhere nearby. I set off around the jungle. I didn't smell mushroom fields, but I did smell a village nearby. I figured I could sniff it out. Maybe there would be some shops. I exited the jungle and kept sniffing and walking until I finally found a village. I walked into the village and all the villagers were looking at me. They didn't seem too excited about me being there. I walked into a shop and the shopkeeper didn't want to sell me anything. He said Zoglins were dangerous to 
to have around because it might bring the horned Enderman's cronies around. Man, this Enderman is ruining everything for me. I was about to leave the village when a chicken went flapping past me. The villagers were upset. They chased the chicken around, but it got away and ran out of the village. She is gone. The heavenly hen has left us. We will be cursed. Hey, uh, maybe I can help. You? What are you going to do besides bring the horned Enderman around these parts? I've got a very sharp smelling nose. I can follow her scent and track her down. Very well. Find the heavenly hen. Okay, but if I do, I get to pick some things out of your shops for free, okay? Fine. Whatever you want. Please hurry. And whatever you do, don't look her in the eyes and don't threaten her or you will regret it. Okay, that's strange, but fine. I won't. I had seen some really cool armor in the shop, but I probably couldn't afford it. So this was a good deal for me. I headed back towards the jungle to find the chicken. On days 11 to 13, I trotted toward the jungle mountains. I climbed up a hill covered in foliage. It was kind of hard to see, so I started chopping down some of the jungle leaves. Whoa! Oof! The leaves were so thick, I didn't see the quarry below my feet. Oh no, I disturbed a nest of scorpions. Yuck, these guys were nasty. I'm in a real pinch. I tried to tell them that I meant no harm, but they were not going to leave me alone. I did not want to get stung. I swung my sword to get them to back off. Yikes, that was a close one. I jumped above them and pulled my bow out, hitting a few of them. I wanted to just get out of there, but the problem was, I smelled the chicken down there. Maybe she got eaten, but it was just then that I saw a mine shaft below. Maybe the chicken had hidden inside there. I'd have to take these guys out. One by one, I finished them off, except for one. It was gold, and turned out to not be a scorpion at all. It was a scorpion-sized gold statue. I decided to enter the mine shaft and check the statue out. On day 14 to 16, I was inside the mine shaft and had a smell around. It didn't just smell like chicken. There was something else, too. Oh, jackpot! So many resources! But most importantly, iron! Something was a little creepy about this place. Okay, Zozo, ignore the creepy feeling and just keep mining, just keep mining. After that amazing song, I created a crafting table and furnaces to smelt the iron I just collected. I had enough iron that I could craft myself some iron armor and tools really quick. Something told me I was going to need it. I continued deeper into the cave to find the chicken. Hold up, what's that? I pulled my axe out. It was a spider. But wait, it was another gold statue. What is going on here? I just need to find this chicken and get the creep out of here. Soon enough, from the shadows, crawled a mob of spiders. I knew my spidey senses were tingling. They weren't deterred. They just kept coming. One of the spiders hit me good. It was a big hit. I swung around like crazy and finished off all of the spiders. He left behind a bunch of webs, a crafting table, an iron sword, and some arrows and a slime ball. I guess some explorers must have left in a hurry. I collected them all and made a lead out of some of them. I kept walking down into the cave and eventually saw some lava. Across from the lava was that crazy chicken. You are lucky you aren't fried chicken by now. The chicken stared at me with angry eyes. My body felt weird. I suddenly remembered what the villager said about not staring at the chicken in its eyes. I tried not to look directly at it and started making a bridge across the lava over to the chicken. Listen, Miss Hen, I'm just trying to help you. I've got some cookies for you. I'll give you some if you follow me out of here. She didn't say anything because she was a chicken, but I assumed she was okay with this. She ate them and then followed me across my bridge. Well, that worked out. Come on, let's get you home. Everyone is worried about you. On day 17 to 19, we had made it out of the cave and were on our way back through the jungle when the ground under my feet felt funny. It was so soft and squishy. Then I realized I was sinking. It was blue quicksand. Help! The chicken just stared at me blankly. She was no help. Quack, what's wrong? It was a group of parrots. I'm sinking. Quack, what are you sinking about? Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Okay, might have been about to die, but that was pretty punny. <laughs> nice one. Thanks, we have been working on the stand-up routine. Neat. Well, I'm sinking about how I need help getting out of here. We have the sinking feeling you are in some real trouble, but what can be done? Do you think you could pull me out of this quicksand with my lead? The quicksand had almost swallowed me up by this point. Sure thing, hand us the lead. They were able to pull me out just in time. Phew, that was a close one. Thank you for saving my life. Mark, no problem. I was just escorting this chicken home. Quack, quack, what chicken? I looked around and the hen was gone again. Oh no. I told the parrots thank you, but had to run off to find her. I followed my nose. She was close, but so was an ocelot. Look out, chicken! The chicken stared at the ocelot with angry eyes. I took out my sword, but before I could do anything, the ocelot turned to solid gold. Did you do that, Miss Hen? I can see why you're so special now. She pecked at the ground. Come on, let's get you back home. On days 20 to 22, a fox was watching us run back to the village and tried to cut us off. Sorry, fox. Trust me, you don't want this chicken for dinner. I ran at him and punted him into the sky. I knew I was doing him a favor. Better than dealing with gold winger over here. We made it back to the village and the villagers were super stoked. I was super stoked about picking out some items from the shop. Our sacred hen has returned. What is your name, Sir Zoglin? Zozo. Great cheers for Sir Zozo. Shucks, I just followed my nose. At the shop, I picked out diamond armor and some TNT. Mission accomplished. With my swanky new treasures in hand, I was ready to go back to my yurt. On the outside of the village, I was stopped by an iron golem who offered me a poppy. He told me his name was Geo. He was a super nice guy. I told him I had to get back to my yurt before it got much later. As I came out to my yurt, it had already gotten dark. Oh, just fantastic. My yurt is 
swarming with creepers and red-eyed spiders. It's a jungle out here. Time to test out this armor and explosives. The mob saw me and started coming for me, so I ran into the trees. I set the TNT on the ground and then punched it, running for my life. As the mobs came by, the TNT exploded. It didn't kill them all, but it took out a lot. I handled the rest of them with my weapons. With the mobs gone, I trotted back to my yurt. I checked on my melons. They were growing well. I'd harvest them tomorrow and then set out to find that mushroom island, or field, whatever you want to call it. On day 23 to 26, I woke up and went outside. To my surprise, Geo was standing around my garden. Huh? Hey there, Geo. How did you find me? Geo here, big boo. Geo come to say Zozo. That's super nice of you. I tested out some TNT on some mobs. Sorry to worry you. I explained to Geo that I had to go on a mission to find a mushroom island. Geo insisted on accompanying me. He said he could help protect me from the horned endermen. I agreed, then harvested my melons and pumpkins. I took a bite of the melons, and it helped me to grow some more. Ooh, check out these tusks. Wow. Then I went inside to get some more materials. After that, we were ready to set off. My nose led us out of the jungle and across some icy plains and glaciers. There were a lot of polar bears. I was relieved Geo decided to join me because there's no way I'd be able to fend them off by myself. When some of them wanted to give us trouble, we gave them trouble right back. Geo was able to fling them up like pancakes. Hey Geo, wanna build a snowman? I decided I might as well mine some snow while I was there. It might come in handy. I threw together some snow and a pumpkin head to make a snow golem. Geo clapped excitedly. Snow friend, snow friend. B -b -b happy birthday. <laughs> yes, happy birthday to you, Ice Golem. My name is Zozo. This is Geo. What's your name? B -b -b Burr. Burr, huh? That checks out. Play with Burr. Sure, we can take some time to play. Hey, I know. What if we build a snow fort out of snow? Play. Burr, play. I made a little snow fort and we had a snowball fight. It was very fun, but Geo was a little too strong and hit Burr too hard, and he poofed into a giant pile of snowballs. Don't worry, Geo. Snowmen don't last forever anyways. We collected his snowballs and added them to our supply. At least he could always be with us now, in a weird sort of way. On days 27 to 31, we wandered to the seaside. The smell of Mushroom Island was super strong. I was led to the seashore. We looked out and saw an island with funny red trees. I think that's it, Geo. Now to get over there. I crafted a boat, but it wasn't big enough for Geo to come with me, so Geo agreed to hang out on shore until I came back. As I sailed closer, I realized the red trees were actually giant mushrooms. I started to drool. Someone was on the island already. It was Smithers. You found me. You truly are the chosen one. Only a Zoglin with the strongest sniffer can find this secret place. Why does the Enderman want me? I will explain everything. Let's show you around first. I ran around the island exploring its resources. This ground was so spongy and bouncy. Oh, look, cows. Wait, those are mushrooms. That gave me an idea. A huge statue would be pretty cool in this field. I gathered up some supplies and started working on the first part of the statue. The cocoa beans would also be perfect for some brown dye. I'd want some red though too. I'd need to get some red flowers on the mainland. Smithers showed me the base he had made. It was a nice little cube. You know, Smithers, this is awesome, but are you okay with me doing some renovations? Just so it's big enough for all of us, including some of my friends I've met along the way. I mean, this is already a pretty elaborate cube, but okay, I'm cool with it. Great, I'll start tomorrow. On day 32 to 35, I decided to make the base look like a giant red mushroom with spots. I wonder what gave me that idea. But first, I'd need to make the stem. It would be a staircase, and then I could make the top a big mushroom-shaped room with a loft above that for bedrooms. We'd have a nice view of the island while we hung out in the base, and we could keep an eye out for danger, too. We wandered around the main area and Side. There's so much room in here. Get it? Mushroom? Much room? You should stick to sniffing and leave jokes to someone else. I can't please everyone. Outside, I created an awning for Geo to stand under and keep watch. Our base was ready for action. On day 36 to 39, I went back to shore to get Geo. Once on land, he and I mined some flowers and some other things for the base and statue. I smelled something familiar. Hey, I smell another Zoglin. I wanted to follow the scent, so we went looking. I had to see if they were okay. I followed my nose to a pillager base. A fire was roasting, and there sat a Zoglin chained up to a log. The pillager was humming and wandering around the yard. We walked up to the hut. Excuse me, but what are you planning to do with that Zoglin? The pillager nearly jumped out of his skin. He hadn't seen us sneaking up on him. Geo, kill pillager. Have at it, Geo. Geo, smash. That pillager didn't stand a chance against Geo. Wow, nice going, Geo. And look, there's an emerald on the ground now. I picked it up and put it in my supplies, then walked over to the Zoglin. Hey, my name is Zozo. I can smell you from miles away. I'm here to rescue you. Thank you. My name is Hogatha. The horned enderman sold me as dinner because I wasn't the Zoglin he was looking for. That's rough. I told Hagatha how to find my base and invited her to meet us up there. She liked that idea. There were voices in the distance. A mob of pillagers came into view. We better get out of here. We don't need that kind of trouble. Yep, time to run. I'll find you later. Good luck. On days 40 to 43, I was back at the base and Geo and Hagatha had joined us. Hagatha added some grass around the base. It was looking pretty gnarly. I went over to the statue and kept adding to it. Things were coming together for this epic statue, but it wasn't done yet. Do you know what it's going to be? I'll have to keep working on it later. Smithers called me into the base meeting room to finally tell me all about what's been going on with this horned enderman dude. It all began with greed. 
I could tell a flashback was coming because the music got all dramatic. Flashback. Called it. The Horned Enderman had been taking over the overworld, enslaving and destroying. He seeks to control this world, and the Nether too. Everyone is afraid of him. He summoned the Witches of Fate. He asked them to reveal the location of a weapon called the Black Trident. It was powerful enough to raise up an army of the undead. They didn't tell him the location. We only know it's somewhere in the ocean. They did give him a prophecy of a Zoglin with a powerful enough nose to sniff out the location of this weapon. But they also said that this Zoglin could be his undoing. I believe that Zoglin is you. I know this because I was there. I was part of the Horned Enderman's close advisors. But I couldn't stand by any longer and see him destroying so many lives. I deserted him and went in search for you myself. We can't let him find the Dark Trident. I would never lead him to it. If you can get me home, he won't be able to use me. Fate has brought you here, my boy. You must give in to your destiny. And your destiny is to rise up against the Horned Denderman. I've run into him before. I couldn't defeat him. I have no idea how to do that. I just want to find a cure for my zombie form and go home. You will find a way. This was a lot to take in. I wasn't sure how I felt about it all. Of course I wanted to help, but how? Thanks for telling me all about it. I need to do some thinking outside. I went on a walk around the mushroom field at night to think about everything. The mushrooms were grazing in the field with their babies. Agatha came and joined me. You okay? Not really. Want to talk about it? I just, I just don't know what to do. I don't know how to fight Enderman at all, let alone an ultimate Enderman bad guy. I know that Endermen don't like water. Maybe that can help. That is something. I was hoping I could just cure myself and get home. Do you have a family, Hagatha? No. The Horned Endermen took them all. It's just me now. I'm sorry to hear that. I guess he really does need to be stopped. We sat and looked at the ocean. It was so peaceful to watch the waves and smell the mushroom aroma. Hey, do you see that light out there? I could make out a small roof on the mainland. There was purple smoke coming from the chimney, just like I had seen when I teleported here. Maybe it was where the witches lived. Maybe they could help me. I decided to go investigate in the morning. On day 44 to 49, I got into my boat and set sail across to the hut. It didn't take too long to find it in the daylight. The purple smoke smelled just like when I teleported. This had to be the witch's cottage. I made my way up the stairs. I knocked and there was some scuffling around inside, and then the door opened and a wand was shoved into my face. Who are you and what do you want? I'm looking for the witches of fate. Is this their cottage? Of course it's not. This is my cottage. Who are you? I am Flim Flam, the mediocre wizard. So don't try any funny business or I'll turn you into a mediocre newt. Did you by chance cast a spell recently that could teleport someone from the nether to the overworld? How did you know that? Bless my soul, my spell did work. You're the Zoglin I summoned and then promptly lost. I think you better explain some things to me. The mediocre wizard let me into his hut. He had all sorts of magical looking items. He then suddenly shot his wand at the wall. I turned around and saw a call to action. An action to subscribe, that is. What you should do. And also search for more of my videos. Zozo. Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. Anyway, Mr. Mediocre, you were explaining something? So you see, I knew I needed to get to you before the horned Enderman did. I admit that although I've been practicing magic for a long time, well, I mess up a lot. So I found this spell to get you over here, but then I wasn't sure if it worked because you never showed up. It worked, but you dropped me into a random place in the overworld. I wish you wouldn't have done that. I used to be a handsome hogland. Now look at me. Oh my, yes, I can see what you mean. But you know, there's a cure for that. There is? Of course. I know it takes a golden carrot and something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. And if you got me here, you can get me back home, right? Of course, but I brought you here for a reason. We need to find the Dark Trident before the Horned Enderman does. If I help defeat him, can you cure me and send me home? You got yourself a deal. I was so glad I was finally getting answers. All this excitement really tuckered me out. I asked the wizard if I could sleep off some of my exhaustion. He was cool with it. On days 50 to 53, I looked around the wizard's hut and saw so many magic potions and wands. I see you are admiring my collection of magical objects. I like your wizard hat, too. Oh, yes, this hat is awesome. I can use potions and they last forever. Maybe one day you can get a wizard hat of your own once you've learned some things. So do you have a plan for how to defeat the Horned Enderman? Of course, you. And that was as far as I got. Hmm, I bet some of your wands and potions will come in handy. Can I try one of your wands? The wizard agreed and selected a nice wand. I was pretty excited and I ran to the water to test it out. Abrica free stuff. I froze the water into ice cubes. I definitely like this idea of learning magic. I think you should come with me and meet our other friends. We have a mushroom base across the way. We can all make a plan. Can I take this wand with me? The wizard agreed, got in his own boat, and we sailed off. As we sailed across, we noticed something splashing on the surface. We got closer and saw it was a mermaid surrounded by a shark. Looks like it's a good time to use that wand, Zozo. I jumped out of my boat and jumped on the rock the mermaid was on and excitedly took out the wand and started pointing it at the water around the shark. The water was turned into ice and the sharks were frozen in ice cubes. You sharks need to cool it. Are you okay, mermaid? The mermaid came closer to me. Thank you for helping me out. That was a close one. Who are you guys? My name is Zozo and this is Flim Flam the wizard. We are just some friends who are trying to stop the horned enderman. You probably don't know who that is, huh? I 
actually, yeah, I do. Those sharks work for him. They were trying to get me to tell them where the Dark Trident is. What? Are you serious? That's why they want me too. We were just meeting up on the Mushroom Island to make a plan on how to stop him. How about I follow you over there? I can team up with you. That's a great idea. Follow us. We were assembling a pretty epic team. On days 54 to 57, we sailed up to the Mushroom Island. I told the mermaid to wait at the shore and walked up to the base. I introduced Flim Flam to the group. Smithers and Flim Flam were both suspicious of each other at first, but after some explaining, they both realized they were on the same side. I took some time to break away from the group and work some more on my statue. I added some good red coloring to it. I was halfway there. It made my way back to the base, and then I heard splashing in the water. I almost forgot about the mermaid. I went and spoke with her at the beach. Her name was Dolphin, but she went by Dolly. Dolly told me about why the sharks were after her. She knew of a portal called the Whirlpool of Want. They wanted the location. This whirlpool takes you to the Witches of Fate. I didn't think you could get to them. That's what they want you to think. What if you take us to this whirlpool? Maybe we can ask the witches if there's a weapon that can destroy the Dark Trident. Dolly agreed to this plan, and I went and let the team know where I was going. Before we left, I did what I could to make sure my health and weapons were ship-shape. I was ready to follow the mermaid to the Whirlpool of Want. On days 58 to 62, we were out in the middle of the ocean when the mermaid pointed ahead. There it is. Just sail straight into it. You sure this will work? I didn't want to get stuck at the bottom of this whirlpool. Besides, I hardly knew this mermaid. This could be a trick. Pretty sure. Here, let me go in ahead of you. Let me see what happens. She swam right into the whirlpool and it swallowed her up. I waited for a few minutes. The whirlpool started to gurgle and out popped the mermaid. There she blows. Well, it looked like it worked. Onward. I jumped off the ship and into the whirlpool. The whirlpool had a portal at the bottom and it spat me out onto dry land. I was in the end? And what do we have here? A wayward soul. A voice cackled from the sky. It seemed to come from all around me. You seek how to destroy the dark trident. We know everything about all of you. But we don't do things out of the kindness of our hearts. We are witches. <laughs> we make trades. What did you bring to trade? I panicked. I didn't know I needed to trade something. Three witches appeared in front of me. Well, what will it be? If you want the Wand of Weather, you will have to give us something that interests us. Wand of Weather? This wand will destroy the Dark Trident? You bet your little zoglin britches. I offered them my wand, my swords, my potions, anything I could think of that seemed really neat. But they didn't want any of it. They already had piles of that stuff. Hmm, I wonder if they would take something that only has sentimental value. I offered them the poppy that Geo had given me. A poppy? You have got yourself a deal. Oof, they disappeared appeared, and in their place was a wand. We forgot to mention one little thing. Only a true heroic act can activate this wand. <laughs> their voices trailed off. A heroic act? I do those things all the time. That doesn't seem too difficult. I wanted to stick around to sniff around, but suddenly there was a whole mob of zombies headed my way. I ran for the portal and jumped through. On day 63 to 66, I was ejected out of the whirlpool. I told Dolly about everything and then sailed back to our base. There was smoke on the horizon. We got close to the island and saw our base had been attacked. The horned Enderman must have discovered our base. I jumped out of my boat and made my way to my base entrance where I saw Smithers. I found out that they had kidnapped Hagatha. They thought she was me. No, Hagatha, I will rescue you. I will fly fast and try to find her. You need to continue on your quest. If you can defeat the horned Enderman, Hagatha will be spared. I wanted to go with Smithers, but I knew he was right. Smithers would take good care of the situation. He quickly flew away. I was going crazy with worry, so I had to distract myself. Those henchmen had really done a lot of damage. We had so many repairs to make. There was only one way to handle this situation. A rebuilding montage. We upgraded a lot of things and then got started building a moat around the base. Flim Flam suggested that we add a water path for Dolly to be able to swim in and out, so we added that too. Afterwards, I stepped back and admired our work. It's amazing what you can do when you're motivated. Just then, I wondered if my statue had been destroyed. I ran over to the field, and luckily it was just how I left it. I finished off the face. Can you tell what it is? I guess it's pretty obvious now, but I still needed to add the piece de resistance later. On days 67 to 70, I tried out the wand of weather, but couldn't get it to do anything. Maybe it only worked around the trident. We had better locate the trident to try and destroy it. I hoped it would work for me. Flim Flam appeared behind me and said, Zozo, you're the one with the magical nose. Where do you think we should go to find the trident? I closed my eyes and I sniffed the air, focusing on where it could be. All I smell is Hagatha. I'm worried about her. I'm right here, silly. Hagatha and Smithers were back. Smithers had found her wandering back to the island. They had let her go after realizing she was the wrong Zoglin, but Hagatha was certain they were tracking her. We can use that to our advantage. We can have Hagatha stay here as a decoy while you sneak off to get the trident. I didn't like the idea of potentially putting Hagatha in harm's way, but she insisted on the plan. Everyone else would stay at the base to protect Hagatha. Meanwhile, Dolly and I would go on our quest. I got on my boat and followed the 
the faint scent of the dark trident. We eventually came into a desert with cactus and pyramids on the shore. Wow. Dolly pointed out that there were ancient ruins in the water. Perfect spot to find a trident. And I can tell we are close. Just then, my ship started to shake. What was that? I looked over the edge. Dolly, there's a lot of angry noodles wiggling around the water. I don't think that's a noodle, Zozo. I think it's a giant octopus. Yikes. We would have to think fast. I shot arrows at it, but that just made it more mad. It hit my boat and busted it. Oh no. He even managed to hit me a few times. He really packed a punch. I would have to swim my way out of this. I'll use my siren song to lure it away. You head for a cove to hide. What about you? I'll be fine. I can outswim these guys. Dolly started singing and the octopus was put in a trance-like state and started following Dolly. Meanwhile, I booked it for the shoreline. I saw a cove that had a very strong smell coming from it. I knew I was hot on the Trident Trail. Dolly was nowhere to be seen, though. I hoped she was okay. The cove wasn't empty, though. A pirate ship was there as well. Where there is pirates, there is treasure. I looked around and sure enough, I found not one, but two treasure chests. What does this one have? Whoa, it's a Respiration 3 helmet. Now that's convenient. I opened the other one up and it had a heart potion. I moved topside and took it and got 10 more hearts and I grew into a large size Zoglin. Now we're talking. I was ready for some underwater exploration, but Dolly hadn't showed up yet. Well, I hope she can find me. On day 71 to 74, I started to swim through the shallow waters of the cove that led to a watery underground cave. It was very dark. I noticed some obsidian floating around in the cave and picked it up for later. The dark trident had to be around me somewhere. The scent was so strong, I could also smell trouble. I dove under the water to have a look around, but it was so dark. Suddenly, someone grabbed my hooves. Ah! Oh, oh my goodness. It was just Dolly. She had found me. You scared the ham right out of me. I'm glad you're okay, though. She held out her hand. <laughs> Sorry, Zozo. Look at this. This is a glowstone. It will help light our path. Awesome. It was so nice having Dolly to help me. She set the glowstone on the floor of the cave, and we could see a little opening. We swam through it. It led into a big space with large wall ruins. There were lots of tall vines growing all over the ruin. Hey, look. The dark trident was just sitting on top of a mound of sand. Just then, out popped hordes of drowns. I didn't come this far to be beaten by a bunch of water zombie punks. You're going down. We fought with all our might and wits. We had to win. There were many, but we were mighty. Sure enough, we were able to take care of all of them. Hi, Finn, Dolly. We gathered around the trident. I got out my weather wand and nothing. Nothing happened. We had just defeated all these drowns. That was super heroic. Shouldn't that heroic act have activated the trident? What are those witches lying? I don't know. Well, grab it and let's go. We can try to destroy it some more back at the base. I was hesitant, but I agreed. Now that you have obsidian, you can build a portal back home. Really? That will be awesome. Although, I'm still a Zoglin. We need a cure so I can fit back in at home. I like you as a Zoglin. I think you look cool. Thanks, Dolly. I just don't know what my family will think. Suddenly, everything started to shake. I reached and grabbed the trident. We had to get out of here. We swam back through the hole in the cavern wall and back up to the surface, and then back to the mouth of the cove. Everything was crumbling. We barely made it out in time. On day 75 to 78, I sailed back to our base. I thanked Dolly for all of her help, and she told me she needed to return to her kingdom before her family started to worry. I'll never forget you, Dolphine. At the mushroom base, I peeked through the window and saw my friends had finished my statue for me while I was gone. It looked great. It was a mushroom with a pumpkin on top to remember Burr by. You guys are the best. After that, we all gathered around the trident. I needed to destroy this thing quickly. I tried the wand again. Nothing. I've done so many heroic things. Why wasn't it working? I pointed it at the sky and thought about my awesome friends and how brave they always were. This time it jiggled a little. A few clouds came out and made it rain a tiny bit. Well, that was something. You'll get the hang of this in time, Zozo. I believe in you. I was so distracted by the wand that it took me a while to notice the strong odor of evil floating into the base. The horned Enderman had to be near. I picked up the trident, started sniffing around, and went into my base. On day 79 to 84, I looked outside our window. A bunch of Endermen surrounded our base gate, and there was the horned Enderman, standing there. You have got to be kidding me. Little Zog, little Zog, let me in, or I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your base in. That dude is terrifying, even when he speaks in rhymes. I'm going to start building that portal, and maybe we can take the trident to the nether. You escape with the trident. I'll fight them off. Smithers ran out of the room. I built and lit the nether portal. You can't do this alone. Agatha joined him to fend off the base. I thought to myself and decided not to run. I had to be a hero if I wanted this wand to work. I told Flim Flam to guard the trident. I pulled my sword out and ran out as well. After fighting for a bit, I swapped my sword out for the bow and started shooting. With each arrow I fired, the Enderman teleported away. But suddenly, they charged me and I took a big hit. Ouch! I started swinging my sword and I did my best to take them all out. At long last, all of the Endermen were defeated. Where was the horned Enderman though? I noticed he wasn't around. I looked up into the mushroom base windows and there he was. He was in the room with Flim Flam and the Trident. Oh no! Smithers! The Trident! Smithers flew up where they were. By the time I got there, Flim Flam had been injured and Smithers was facing off with the horned Enderman. With ease, the horned Enderman grabbed the Trident and teleported out of the base. Smithers followed him outside and I did too. The Dark Trident can only work with a heart of pure evil. 
Watch as I turn this thing lethal. With that, the horned Enderman hit Smithers with a dark trident. No, how could he? I pulled out the wand of weather and pointed it at the trident. Storm clouds gathered and it started to rain pretty hard, but it didn't seem to do anything to the trident. The rain did, however, scare off the horned Enderman since he teleported away. With the enemy gone, I ran to Smithers' side. This is the end for me. Promise me you'll stop him. Then Smithers disintegrated, leaving behind a nether star. I was so sad and picked up the nether star. I placed it down at the entrance of the house. It would forever shine bright on us, as Smithers did. On days 85 to 89, Hagatha and I went through the portal to the nether. We knew time was short. The horned enderman would be marching through with his undead army at any moment. We landed in the crimson forest. Welcome to my homeland. Wow, everything is so hot and spicy looking here. Home sweet and spicy home. I miss the smell of lava. We started to walk around a bit when suddenly a mob of piglins was coming toward us. Well, looks like it's never a dull moment. Let's kick some hams. We used our arrows, swords, and strength to take down the mob. We continued exploring the nether for a bit until we got to the edge of a cliff. The lava was hot below us. I carefully laid down dirt to get across. I noticed more piglins coming at us, so I broke off a brick of the block bridge so they couldn't follow us. Well, that was a very lava hot welcome. Where's your family? They aren't far. I can smell them. On days 90 to 94, I heard some low oinking. It was my family. They were munching on fungi, as usual. Hey, you guys, I'm back. Who the oink are you? Oh, great. It was Bebop, the bully. It's me, Zozo. I look a little different now. I'm bigger and... And freakish looking. You're not one of us anymore. I just returned from the overworld, so I got zombified. But I'm still Zozo. And these are my friends. We have come to warn you. Warn us about what? Are you threatening us? You think you could just disappear one day and then come back and act all tough? That's it. No one threatens us. No, I'm not threatening. Bebop came charging at me. I put my head down and got ready to return his blow. I hit Bebop a lot and he simply backed off. I'm bigger and stronger than you now, Bebop. Time to stop picking on others, or I'm gonna have to teach you another lesson. I told the rest of the Hoglin family what I'd been up to and where I went. These are my friends. They've been helping me. You see, we got a weapon that can stop this evil dude from coming here and destroying everything. He's known as the Horned Enderman. Bebop must not have learned his lesson because he butted in. We will never believe you. You're just a bunch of freaks. I'd much rather be a freak than a boring old piece of bacon. I pity you. You can't see past your own snotty snout. I used to worry about what you all would think of me as a Zoglin, but now now, I don't care. I'm proud of who I am on the inside and out. My friends taught me that. You can either show respect for me and my friends, or you and I can settle this again. For good. Hog to Zog. I pulled out my wand of weather. It was suddenly glowing and surging with energy. I had been heroic by standing up for myself and my friends, even against my own kind. I was done being ashamed of what I looked like. I loved my zombie self. I held the wand into the air and created rain in the nether. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I won't pick on you or anyone else. Please make it stop. I put the wand away and the crazy weather stopped. It was all the proof the Hoglins needed. On days 95 to 98, we decided we would make a big hill with a fortress on top so we could have the high ground. Flim Flam also came over from the overworld and insisted on making me wear his wizard's hat. It would keep my health up even after being attacked. Our hill fortress was looking pretty cool and we were able to recruit some other nether mobs. We got mobs of piglins and wither skeletons. We set up inside the fort. It was then that the sky opened a portal and outpoured all sorts of undeads. Drowned necromancers, skeletons, zombies, zombified piglins, and husks. Fight hard and stay safe. We just need to stay alive long enough until I can attack the trident. The Zoglins attacked with their tusks to punt them away into the lava. The mutant piglins used their quality swords to cut them down. The mutant husks smashed with their fists. We were all fighting hard, but still, some of our allies didn't survive. Oh, I needed to find the horned Enderman. The longer this went on, the more deaths there would be. The hordes of undead just kept coming too, but we fought with all of our might. After defeating some of the undead creatures, the piglin commander gave me a health potion. I drank it and my hearts leveled up. I got 20 hearts, and then I became even bigger. I couldn't lie. I looked pretty intimidating. After that, we returned to the fort. On day 99, I heard something happen at the portal again and ran out. The Horned Enderman finally emerged from the portal. Horned Enderman, you are going down. <laughs> what are you going to do? Sprinkle me with water? Oh no, how will I ever survive such hullabaloo? Ha, see my mighty undead army. This world is doomed. There is no way to disarm me. Go ahead and laugh, but this, this is for Smithers. He threw the trident at me, breaking my armor. He was terribly powerful. Thank you for bringing me this trident. I think this is a death well spent. I heard my friends shout and they came to my side. For Smithers! Their chant brought me strength. I shot the wand into the air. For Smithers! It started to rain. Thunder boomed loudly and there was a mighty zap. A powerful bolt of lightning struck the trident. The horned enderman exploded and the trident shattered. We did it, just like that. The wand had worked. We all cheered and celebrated. On day 100, after we had finished celebrating and honoring those who had fallen, I had to figure out what I was going to do with the rest of my Zoglin years. I said goodbye to my family and promised to come home every Sunday for Crimson 
and dinner. I would be the Zoglin wizard of the newly named Smither Island. But in the meantime, I would study more magic and defend the weak, always keeping a balance to good and evil. And most of all, I'd spread heroic courage, a love for others and oneself, freakish looks and all. I knew Smithers would be proud. On day one, I spawned in as a zebra. Wow, I'm so little and I only have three hearts. I need to be extra careful. I looked around and saw some antelope. Then I heard someone calling me. Zozo, you're here. We love you so much. I turned and saw two zebras running over to me. These must be my parents. They nuzzled me with their noses. Oh, I love you guys too. Then out of nowhere, a savannah jeep sped by. A human, dressed like a hunter, jumped out and started capturing the animals. Run, Zozo. My parents leaped in front of me so I could have a chance to escape. I ran away and hid behind some rocks. I watched helplessly as the hunter caught my parents parents and put them in the back of his jeep. I was too little to do anything and I felt really sad. I barely had any time with my parents and now they're gone. I couldn't just wait around though. It was getting dark and I needed a safe place to stay for the night. I dug a little hole for myself behind the rocks and went to sleep. On day two, I woke up confused. I was in a hole all alone. Then I remembered my parents and I felt sad again. I climbed out of the hole only to be attacked by some snakes. Oh no! I didn't have any weapons so I had to dodge and run away. They chased after me but I started to cross a river and they stopped. Phew, that was close. The water was really strong but I finally managed to get to the other side. I really need to make some weapons for myself, otherwise I'll be snake food. I went to work, gathering some materials to make myself tools. Once I had collected plenty of stone, I put up a crafting table and used it to make a full set of stone tools. It wasn't much, but it made me feel a little bit better. This'll just have to do for now. I figured I shouldn't cross the river again, so I found a spot near a tree and made myself a little shelter for the night. It's okay, Mom and Dad. I'll find you. I promise. And with that, I fell asleep. On day three, I woke up feeling hopeful. I knew I could find my parents. I just needed a little bit of help. I'm sure someone knew where the hunter kept the animals he captured. I set out across the savanna when I noticed a baboon getting attacked by a boar. Someone help me! The baboon screamed and tried to run away, but the boar was too much for him. I'll help you! I jumped into action, distracting the boar while the baboon attacked. We managed to defeat him, and we jumped for joy. Not bad for the little guys. Hey, I'm Zozo. What's your name? I'm Barry. Thanks for saving my life. I owe you one. No problem. Hey, do you know where I can find the hunter that keeps trapping animals? He got my parents, and I could use some help getting them out. I can try. The hunter caught my family, too. I followed him to his base, but it's basically impossible to get inside. Maybe we can do it together? Sounds like a plan. But first, we should rest up. You can come live at my hut with me if you want. It'll be safe there. That sounds great. Mary and I headed back to my house, and I made him a little hut right next to mine. It was small, but it was better than living in a hole. Good night, Barry. Good night, Zozo. On days four to five, Barry and I made some adjustments. We set up a perimeter to our base and made our huts a little bit bigger. We also found some seeds so we could plant some food. It was actually starting to feel a little bit more like a home. Let's go hunt a hunter. Barry tried to look scary as he said it, but it sounded a little silly. Too much? Eh, yeah, too much. He shrugged and we headed out. We passed through the desert and made our way further into the jungle. We crouched down as we approached the hunter's fort. It was huge, but I didn't see any guards. Just then, a bunch of baboons came running toward us. At first we thought they were going to be friendly, but then they started to attack us. Oh no, Barry, we need to run. We ran as fast as we could and eventually the baboons stopped chasing us. Why were those baboons attacking us? We're not the bad guys. I think the hunter can control the animals somehow. He wants us to be his servants. That's terrible. Were any of those baboons your family? No, I didn't recognize them. Them. My family must be inside somewhere. We started to head home so we could reassess our situation when we saw a human up ahead. Oh no, it's another human. He's probably working with the hunter. We started to run away, but he called out to us. Hello, friends. No need to run. All I want is to take your picture. He held up his camera. He seemed harmless enough and he approached us slowly. My name is Patrick. Could I perhaps stay with you so I can get some good shots? Sure. You'll be safer with us than out by yourself. Maybe you can help us get our families back from the hunter. Patrick took our picture. I would be happy to help you. The more animals, the more pictures. Then he showed us one of his pictures. We went home and helped Patrick to build a little house for himself. He seemed to really love it and took pictures of everything. Eventually, we all got tired and went to sleep. On day six to eight, I woke up to Patrick taking pictures of me. Beautiful. Even when you are drooling, you look great. He printed out the picture on his Polaroid. Yeah, take a look. I looked at the picture. It had me drooling, along with some weird symbols underneath. Huh, maybe it's a weird human thing. Patrick left to go take pictures of the rocks when Barry walked in. I don't know if we can do this, Barry. We are just a small zebra, a baboon, and a very odd human. We are going to need a lot more help in order to free our families. I think I know someone who could help. It'll take a little while to get there, but he's our best shot. All right, let's go. We headed out, leaving Patrick to keep watch of the base. We made our way across the savanna. It was really hot, but we finally made it to an oasis with a watering hole and trees. There were elephants everywhere. He's over there. He doesn't like strangers. Let me talk to him first. Barry turned toward a large tree where an elephant was sitting on a rug. Barry walked over and chatted with him for a minute before waving me over. Welcome, my young friend. What is it you seek? We want to rescue our families from the hunter. He has captured a lot of innocent animals, and he needs to be stopped. The elephant nodded. Yes, I know the perfect artifact that will help 
help you. It is a necklace with the tooth of a lion. It has been lost, but rumor has it that it is buried at the base of a secret underground waterfall. Find the waterfall, and you'll find your necklace. How is a necklace going to help us? Oh uh, yes, it has the power to give you the strength of ten men, or in your case, zebras. Oh wow, thanks so much. Barry and I were much happier as we went home. We could finally defeat the hunter. On days nine to 10, we arrived back at the base. Patrick was taking pictures of some hippos he had befriended. Wow, what magnificent creatures. We talked to the hippos and found out that the hunter had taken some of their family too. We offered to make them a little enclosure in our base. After finishing up, they were very happy and thanked us for taking them in. I went out to go gather some materials and maybe locate the waterfall. I went back to the river because maybe the waterfall was close by. I crossed the river and saw the snakes that I had met before. Get back, you noodles. I smacked them and was able to defeat all of them. I really have gotten stronger. Maybe it won't be so hard to beat the hunter after all. On days 11 to 12, I kept exploring. I found a rock formation and inside of it was a cavern. I found some more materials and decided to go a little bit deeper. As I went down further, I was suddenly attacked by some nasty spiders. Oh, gross, none of that. I got a few hits in, but I defeated them all pretty quickly. It was then that I felt a surge of power and I transformed into a bigger zebra. Whoa, I feel amazing. I feel like I can take on anything. I continued down the cavern, hoping to find the waterfall, but there was nothing. I felt sad about that, but at least I'm stronger now. I made my way out of the cavern and headed back to the base. On days 13 to 15, I was making my way back to the base when the hunter drove by in his jeep. I'll be back for you, Zozo, right after I collect your little friends. I was so confused. How did he know my name? What did he mean about my friends? He drove away really fast and I tried to catch up, but it was hopeless. By the time I got back to the base, I realized what the hunter meant. All of my friends were gone. He must have captured all of them, but how did he get in? I looked around and found Patrick's camera on the ground. The last picture he took was of the hunter shaking hands with Barry. Traitor! Barry sold us out! I was so tired from my journey that I barely made it to my bed before I fell asleep. On day 16 to 19, I woke up discouraged. I figured I needed to move my base, so I went about collecting some stuff. I was looking around the hippo enclosure when I noticed Patrick hiding behind a rock. Patrick, you're okay. Yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm just so grateful that I was able to hide before that awful hunter took everyone away. I can't believe Barry made a deal with him. I know, it's crazy. But hey, I found your camera. I thought you might want it back. Patrick was so happy, he took a bunch of pictures of me. Then we went to scout out a new spot for our base. We worked on clearing out an area near some trees and started to build from the ground up. I built everything I thought we could need and even a little bit of extra just to keep us safe. I sure hoped no one would attack us because it was a lot of hard work. Soon, everything was complete. Patrick, we need to do all that we can to protect the animals on the savanna. I think we should build some sort of statue that will help them know that they can come here for refuge. I think that's a great idea, Zozo. We started to gather some supplies and built the base of the statue. Can you tell what it might be? On days 20 to 22, Patrick and I went looking for the underground waterfall that the elephant had told us about. We followed the river up a little ways before running into a pack of lions. We didn't know if they were friendly or not, so we approached slowly. Hello, have you seen any underground waterfalls anywhere? The lions seemed nice enough, but they were looking confused. Waterfall? Why are you looking for a waterfall? We were told by a wise elephant that we could find a special necklace buried at the base of the underground waterfall. It's actually a lion's tooth. The lions looked even more confused. There is no such thing. If anyone would know, it would be us. Now it was my turn to be confused. Then I realized it was the elephant that told me about the necklace. An elephant that Barry knew. It must have been all made up. Come on, Patrick, we need to go find that elephant and see what he actually knows. Patrick finished taking pictures of the lions and we headed to the oasis. Once we arrived, we noticed that all of the elephants were gone. Oh no, what are we going to do? I think I actually hear something over there. Patrick pointed to a large rock formation and sure enough, an elephant was hiding. It was the elephant we had talked to before. Hey you, we need some answers. The elephant trembled. He actually looked pretty scared. Please don't hurt me. My family was captured by that awful hunter. Barry told me if I lied to you, the elephants would be safe. He's a traitor. The elephant looked really shaken up. I felt bad for him. I understand how you feel. Barry betrayed us too. And now the hunter has our friends and my parents. But if you come with us, you can have a safe home at our base. The elephant perked up. Oh, thank you. I would love to come with you. Of course. I don't think I know your name though. I'm Zozo. I'm Neville. Nice to meet you, Neville. We'll take care of you. We headed back to the base and made it home just in time for the sun to set. On days 23 to 26, I went to make some improvements to our base. I added some new fencing, a large garden, and fixed up a place for the elephant to stay. He seemed pretty happy about it, but I was feeling a little discouraged. What's wrong, Zozo? You've done a great job with the base. No way anyone is going to get inside. It's not that. I'm just upset that the lion's tooth necklace isn't real. It was my only hope to get my parents and friends back. I'm sorry you feel that way, Zozo, but guess what? The necklace is real. What? Then you didn't lie to us. We still have a chance to save my family. Well, it is real. It's just not a lion's tooth necklace. It's a special totem. It has the ability to turn you invisible, but it only works on those with pure intentions. That's perfect. It's going to be easy now. I guess I should also mention, the totem is guarded by a crocodile. Nobody can get past him. 
Between the three of us, I'm sure we can get the totem. Using the materials I had on hand, I made some weapons and armor for the whole team. Then I went ahead and passed them out to everyone. We were ready to fight. We locked the base up and headed out towards the river. On days 27 to 31, Patrick, Neville, and I went looking for the crocodile. We passed a group of hogs on the way, and they tried to attack Patrick. Hey, I only wanted a picture. He tried to run away, but they kept getting hits on him. Neville and I charged at them, and after a minute, we defeated all of them. Great job, Neville. No way is the crocodile going to get us. We started to head out when we noticed Patrick wasn't following. He was looking down at his feet. Hey, are you okay, Patrick? I just feel pretty sad. All I've done is hide or run away. I couldn't even save any of our friends earlier, and it just makes me feel useless. You're not useless, Patrick. You're a friend, and you've helped more than you know. We all have different strengths. Just use your strengths. Patrick seemed cheered up by this and nodded his head. Thanks, Zozo. You really are a good friend. Patrick hugged me, and then Neville hugged us. It was a little squished, but it was a nice little moment. Neville even managed to take a selfie with Patrick's camera. Nice! We kept trekking through the savanna, all feeling a little bit better about ourselves. On days 32 to 35, we finally reached a watering hole. This is the watering hole, but I don't see the crocodile. I looked around, and sure enough, it looked empty. Maybe he went to go hunt somewhere else. When all of a sudden, there was a commotion. I felt something try to grab me, and I ran out as fast as I could. Whoa, that was close. It was the crocodile, all right. He was just super stealthy. How dare you disturb me? Can't you see I'm resting? We didn't mean to disturb you. We just want the totem you're guarding. And why would I give it to you? There was a hunter driving through the savanna, capturing innocent animals. He's captured our family and friends. We only want the totem so we can defeat him. How do I know you deserve it? You could just be lying to me. Well, if I didn't deserve it, then it wouldn't work anyway, right? The crocodile paused. I suppose that is true. But I can't just let you take it. You have to earn it. Bring me the golden apples off of the tree on that hill, then you can have the totem. The crocodile pointed toward the hill. On top was a small tree. All right, we'll do it for you. Not all of you, only you, little zebra. Prove to me that you are worthy. I wasn't sure I could do it myself, but I had to try. A lot of animals were counting on me. Okay, I'll go. I headed up the hill to retrieve the golden apples. On days 36 to 39, I made my way up the hill. But it wasn't just a hill, it was a mountain. Wow, this is a lot taller than I thought. I finally made it to the top and saw the apple tree. Whoa, that tree is bigger than I thought too. How was I going to reach all those apples? Just then, a monkey with a fancy robe appeared right in front of me. Hello, traveler. Come to retrieve some apples, yes? Yes, the crocodile down the mountain needs them. Ah, uh, yes. It's been a while since he has sent someone up here to retrieve some. The last wasn't so lucky. What the heck does that mean? I shall present a scenario to you, and then you must answer a question. Answer correctly, and the apples are yours. Answer incorrectly, and you will die. Wait, die? Are you serious? Here is the scenario. Two monkeys are traveling together down the bank of the river. When they see a banana lying on the ground, it seems to be a normal banana. They look across the river and see a tree. In the tree is a third monkey. He seems to be gathering bananas. What if the traveling monkey says to his friend that they should take the banana on the ground, since the monkey in the tree is already harvesting bananas? How should the friend respond? I thought about it for a moment. They shouldn't take the banana. It's not theirs to take. The monkey nodded and smiled. You are correct, young zebra. In fact, if they had taken the banana, they would have taken the only good banana, since the ones being gathered were indeed rotten. They would have taken the only banana that the third monkey could have found for days. He would have starved if he didn't have that banana. These are yours for the taking. Wow, thank you. Stay true to yourself and remember what is most important. I thanked him again and he disappeared, along with the tree. Whoa, where did they go? I didn't know, but I didn't want the apples to disappear too. I hurried to collect them before heading down the mountain. On days 40 to 43, I arrived at the base of the mountain. My friends had set up a little camp next to the watering hole. I went over to the watering hole where the crocodile was barely visible. I retrieved the golden apples, just like you asked. You've done well. The crocodile submerged for a moment before returning with a rock in his mouth. Use it well, young zebra. You have earned it. On the outside of the rock were those strange symbols, just like the ones in the picture Patrick took of me. Maybe it wasn't just a human thing after all. I twisted open the rock and saw the totem. There it is. I better hurry back to the camp. As I arrived back at the camp, Patrick tried to take a picture of me, but I immediately activated the totem and turned invisible. Whoa, Zozo, where did you go? He took a picture of nothing because I was gone. I walked behind him and then deactivated the totem. I'm right here, Patrick. Wow, that's amazing. That hunter doesn't stand a chance. On days 44 to 49, we traveled back to the base. Patrick and Neville went to the river while I went to look for some food. We had been walking a long time and needed a rest. We even found some nearby plants we could eat. All of a sudden, a horde of boars came out from behind the plants. Oh, sorry, are these your plants? Without a moment's hesitation, they started to attack me. Hey, I just wanted some food. You don't need to hurt me. I managed to dodge and defeat all of them by myself. 
Just then, I felt a surge of power, and I leveled up into an adult zebra. Wow, I'm a lot bigger now. I noticed that it had more hearts, too. I felt like I was the strongest zebra in the world. Taking down that hunter was going to be super easy. I went back to my friends, and we talked about our plans. I think we should continue to build our statue once we get back, and then gather some supplies for better weapons. That's a great idea, Zozo. You can teach me to fight better so I can help you. Yeah, we'd love to help with the statue. We need as many animals as possible to know that they have a safe place to stay. Mm -hmm. I agreed, and we headed the rest of the way back Back to the base. On days 50 to 53, we arrived at the base. Using more of our supplies, Patrick Neville and I got to work on the next part of the statue. It was really starting to come along. Can you guess what it is now? It was looking really good, so we took a break and tried to work on our base. We set up some new enclosures, just in case we had more animals come by. We felt really good about our progress when we heard a knock at the door. I looked outside, and there were a bunch of lions. Hey, you're the lions we met earlier. Yes, hello. We saw your statue and wanted to know if we could stay here. Some of our friends were taken by the hunter, and we have nowhere else to go. Could we we stay here with you? Of course. We opened the door and the lions sauntered in. We showed them one of the enclosures we built and they loved it. They immediately made themselves at home. Thank you so much. We would love to give you a gift as a token of our appreciation. One of the lions gave me some diamonds and gold as a present. Wow, this is incredible. Thank you so much. I immediately began working with the diamonds at my crafting table and made myself some better armor. Wow, this is amazing. That night, we all gathered around the campfire and had a fun time. Patrick even tried to juggle for us. It was a good way to end the night. On days 54 to 57, I woke up to someone screaming. I raced out of my house to find animals running around like crazy. I noticed that the base's front door was open and there were hyenas running around. Oh no, we've got to get them out of here. The lions and I were able to defeat some of them and drive the rest of them away. Phew, that was close. But how did they get in? One of the lions stepped forward, his head hung low. I am so sorry, Zozo. I went out during the night to do some hunting and I must have forgotten to close the door all the way when I came back in. You can kick me out if you want to. I deserve it. He looked so upset, but I knew it was an accident. It's okay. Nobody got hurt and nothing was taken, so we are okay. He seemed relieved, and we all headed back to our houses. When I walked inside, it looked like one of my chests had been opened. I ran over, and I realized my totem of invisibility was gone. Oh, no! Neville heard me from outside and peeked in. Is everything okay, Zozo? No, my totem is gone. Those hyenas must have taken it. Oh, no. We need to get it back, and fast. We told Patrick what had happened, and he agreed to come with us to find the hyenas. I think I might even know where they live. I saw them once near a cavern, and I tried to take a picture, but they tried to eat me, so I ran away. That's awesome, Patrick. Not the almost getting eaten part, the knowing where to go part. He nodded and smiled. I know. I talked to the lions before we left and told them to let in any other animals that needed help. They agreed, and we headed toward the cavern to retrieve my totem. On days 58 to 62, we traveled toward the cavern that Patrick told us about. We ran into some Daegus on the way and told them to go to our base if they wanted a safe place to stay. They happily agreed. We also ran into some ostriches and some frogs. We extended the same invite to them as the other animals, and they accepted. Wow, I hope we have enough space for everybody. The whole savanna wouldn't be able to fit in our base, but we could sure try. We kept traveling and gathered some food and seeds as we went. We were going to have a lot more mouths to feed when we got back. We finally arrived at the cavern, but it looked empty. Are you sure this is the right place, Patrick? Yes. See, look. I picked up something off the ground in the middle of some tall grass. This is the lens that I dropped before. I was too scared to come back for it, so I just left it. We continued into the cavern, which eventually turned into a large underground cave. We peered over a rock and saw the hyenas down below. There were a ton of them. Some of them were just lounging around, but some were fighting over something. I took a closer look and realized it was my totem. Hey, they have my totem. I whispered to my friends and motioned toward the group of hyenas. There are so many of them. How are we ever going to get your totem back? I thought for a minute and then came up with a plan. I whispered it to my friends and we got into our positions. One, two, three, now! Patrick started flashing his camera from the opening of the tunnel. The hyenas all saw the lights and went running towards Patrick. He hurried and hid behind a rock by the opening as all the hyenas came rushing out. Neville came out from behind his rock and tried to roll a large stone in front of the entryway. I ran out from behind my rock and went down to grab the totem that the hyenas had dropped in the chaos. Got it! I ran up to see Neville struggling with the rock. The hyenas were trying to push it back open. Zozo, can you turn us invisible? Then we can sneak out. There's too many of them. Even if we're invisible, they'll bump into us and find us. Go and defeat the hunter. Zozo, make sure all the animals are safe. Neville, what are you saying? Don't do it. Neville then pushed the rock out of the way and ran outside. No, Neville! Neville ran outside as the hyenas chased him, getting hits in. There was no way he was going to survive. I heard and had Patrick climb on my back, and then I activated the totem. We both disappeared, and we ran. We watched as Neville was defeated. We had to get out of there. We had no choice but to leave. On day 63 to 66, we arrived back at the base. Patrick and I were very sad that Neville was gone, but we were going to make sure his sacrifice wasn't in vain. I had my totem, and there was no way I was going to let anyone steal it again. I made an even better safe and hid that in a secret spot in my room. Nobody would ever find it here. We helped all the animals in their new homes and planted some more food in the garden. We went to work on the statue, but noticed it was already finished. Who finished the statue? We did. 
The lions came up to me and all bowed at my feet. We owe you our lives, young zebra. We hope you accept our work on your statue as a way to show our gratitude. Wow, it's not every day that the king of the savanna bows to you. Thank you, but I'm not the true hero. Neville sacrificed himself so that I could get the totem back. You should be honoring him. Then we shall honor our fallen friend and build a statue of him as well. We all worked together and made a statue of Neville standing on the landing of our other statue. He was raising his trunk in triumph. It was perfect, and I knew Neville would have liked it. On day 67 to 70, I woke up to Patrick huh? taking pictures of me again. Wonderful. Patrick, not now. I'm trying to sleep. Sorry, but I had a thought, Zozo. What if the totem gets stolen again? Or even lost while we are inside the base? We definitely need a backup plan. We should scout out the base, just in case. That's a really good idea, Patrick. Perfect. I'll meet you outside. Don't forget your totem, just in case. He left, and I looked toward my safe. I actually felt safer with it here, so I didn't bring it. I would tell him later. We gathered the animals to let them know we were leaving. We told them that if any animals came by, they were more than welcome to stay, unless they were hyenas. And don't forget to shut the door all the way. One of the lions looked away in embarrassment, but he understood. All right, we will be back in time to make some final preparations. Then we will get our friends and families back. Everyone cheered to that, and we took off. On the way there, Patrick took some pictures while I gathered some seeds. We also ran into some small monkeys. We told them where our base was, and they started to head that way. It felt good to know that we were helping. On day 71 to 74, Patrick and I snuck around to the same spot where Barry and I had been earlier. We looked around the base, and it seemed bigger than the last time. I can't believe it. I looked where Patrick was looking, and I saw Barry. It looked like he had gotten bigger. There were other baboons there, and Barry seemed to be bossing them around. He sold us out so he could be the boss of the baboons? Well, I guess so. I still couldn't believe it. Barry had been my friend, and he seemed genuinely interested in helping me. Hey, Zozo, I'm glad you are my friend. Thanks, Patrick. Where did that come from? I was just thinking, and you've been really awesome to me. Just wanted to thank you for everything you've done. Then Patrick hugged me. Thanks, Patrick. All of a sudden, we were surrounded by baboons. How did I not even notice? Huh, <laughs> right on time. I looked, and I saw Barry looking down at us. We don't want to fight you, Barry. Well, that's funny, because I do want to fight you. Barry swung his arm and smacked Patrick. No, stop it. As soon as you give me the totem. What? The lion's tooth necklace? It doesn't exist. You know that. No, Zozo. The totem of invisibility that you got. What? How did you find out about that? I have friends on the inside. All of a sudden, Patrick got up and walked over to Barry. No, Patrick, you're working for him? Why? I had to, Zozo. After our base was attacked the first time, Barry told me to keep my eye on you. He threatened to hurt you if I didn't help him. The hunter wanted more animals, and they told me to gather them all in a safe place so they could collect them later. How have you even been talking? I've been sneaking out at night. I told them about the totem a few days ago. The lions thought they had left the door open, but it was me. It's all my fault. Neville is gone. Patrick hung his head down low. He looked so sad. Barry hit Patrick again. Enough, you. Now, Zozo, give me what I want, and maybe I won't hurt Patrick again. I don't have the totem with me. What? Why didn't you bring it? I thought it'd be safer at the base. Why do you need it anyway, Barry? Why do you think? The hunter will be able to turn invisible and trap any animal he pleases. And I'll be its right-hand man, or baboon, king of the monkeys. It won't even work for you, Barry. It only works for the pure of heart. I had to earn it. So you say, I think you just think you're better than me. He hit Patrick again. Stop it. I'll take you to our base. That's just what I wanted to hear. Move it. On day 75 to 78, we slowly traveled back to the base. Patrick and I were bound and dragged behind the other baboons. I wondered why they even agreed to help Barry. I tried to talk to one of them. Psst. Hey, we can get you out of here and you can live with us. You'll be safe there. The monkey looked at me sadly. We'll never be safe. Not with the hunter and Barry around. It isn't the worst, actually. The hunter gives us food and a place to sleep, but we are basically his servants. We can't leave because they'll just find us again. I felt really bad for the monkey, but we couldn't give up now. We can defeat them. If you help us escape, we can all work together. The monkey thought about it for a second, but then Barry started yelling. Hey, no talking to the prisoners. He hit the sad monkey, who immediately ran up ahead, pulling me along. Well, at least I tried. We soon stopped at a water pond to rest. I walked over to Patrick. He wouldn't even look at me. Patrick, I know why you did all of this and I don't hate you. He looked at me. Really? Yeah, you were just trying to protect me, but I'm not giving up. We will defeat Barry and the Hunter if it's the last thing I do. Patrick looked back down at his feet and sighed. I don't know, Zozo. We are kind of in a sticky situation. I think maybe we can get the baboons on our side. All of a sudden, Barry hit me. No talking, prisoner. Keep moving. I tried to formulate a plan the rest of the way. At this point, we just had to hope for a miracle. On day 79 to 84, we were getting closer to the base. Suddenly, Barry stopped. Bring Zozo forward. The sad baboon brought me closer to Barry, still keeping me bound. Zozo, you will go in and retrieve the totem. You will then tell all the animals to gather outside for a meeting. You won't tell them about us, or I will destroy Patrick. I'll do it. Just don't hurt him again. I made my way to the base and went inside. A few animals greeted me, and I quickly said hello, then walked away. I went to my house and opened the safe. The totem was still inside. I grabbed it and went back to the middle of the base. Everyone, I need your attention. Patrick and I have an important announcement to make, but we need you to come outside to see. The animals all gathered together 
together and we started to go outside. I felt so bad, but I hoped that maybe we could defeat the baboons and bury together. As we walked out, I didn't see anyone. Where did they go? Then the baboons and Barry jumped down from the trees. They ambushed us and my friends started to panic. Zozo! It's okay, I'll handle this. I was just about to attack one of the baboons when all of a sudden they surrounded Barry. Wait, what? What are you doing, you fools? Capture them! Stay down! It was the baboon that I had talked to. I guess he had gotten the other baboons to agree to fight. Hey, you're helping us. We want our freedom back and you seem like a capable guy. We'll help you. Perfect. Wait, where's Patrick? I heard Barry laugh. It's too late for your friend, Zozo. He's gone. No! I ran further into the trees. I looked around and I finally found Patrick. He was sitting up against a rock. He didn't look good at all. Hey, buddy. Did we win? This one? Yeah, but we still need you for another fight. Patrick laughed weakly. I'll try my hardest, but I'll need some help. Of course. I helped him up and let him ride on my back as we slowly made our way back to the base. We got back to the clearing, but we didn't see Barry anywhere. Where's Barry? The animals all looked at each other. I thought you were watching him. Me? I don't even know who that guy is. The animals all grumbled and pointed at each other. I shook my head. It doesn't matter. He's gone now. Wait, look. Barry had gone into our base. On days 85 to 89, I chased after Barry. He had some flint and steel and was going to light our base on fire. Barry, stop. This is crazy. You can't stop me, Zozo. I'm going to be king of the monkeys if it's the last thing I do. Strange. That's what I was thinking earlier, but about my friends. Barry, stop. It isn't too late for you to change. Why would you want to be king of the monkeys when you can be a friend to all animals? You sound like a hippie. What's a hippie? Never mind. I'm done talking. Barry set the side of the ostrich enclosure on fire, when all of a sudden a big splash of water rained down on him, extinguishing the fire. I looked up and saw the water had come from the trunk of the Neville statue. We had the day water feature while you were gone. One of the lions was pressing a button on the side of the wall. What absolutely perfect timing. I walked towards Barry. This is your last chance, Barry. Come join us or I'll have to defeat you. He looked so angry. No, I will be king of the monkeys. I will. I... <laughs> All of a sudden, he slumped down and started to cry. I stood there, shocked. I don't want to be king of the monkeys. Honestly, I just wanted some friends. Well, to be fair, you have a weird way of showing it. I still didn't trust him completely, but I helped him up. It's okay, Barry. You have a home here. On days 90 to 94, Barry moved back in. Some of the animals weren't too happy about it, but he tried his hardest to make it up to them. He made some cool improvements to people's houses, the base, and even helped Patrick. He seemed to really feel bad about what he had done but he was making it better. Later, he came up to me. Zozo, I need to tell you something about the hunter's base. Okay, what is it? I know a secret way I can sneak into his base around the side. Oh, awesome! So you can open the door. It's not that simple. The controls for the gate are in his private room. Ah, I see. I thought for a moment. You need to go back and pretend to still work with him. You need to betray him now. What if he catches me while I'm trying to do this? He won't. I'll be sure to protect you. Okay, I trust you, Zozo. On days 95 to 97, we all made our preparations. We forged armor and swords for everyone, just in case. Now, Oh, Zozo, I'm too weak still. I need to stay here. But Patrick, I need you. We've come this far together, and I need you there with me. He can ride on my back. One of the lions bowed to Patrick. I shall carry you, and I will promise your safety, good friend. Patrick agreed. I'm proud of all of you. Today, we are going to rescue our families and our friends. The Savannah will be free again. Everyone cheered, and we headed out to the hunter's base. On day 98, we arrived at the hunter's base. It looked the same as usual, which was good. Barry came up to me. All right, Barry, this is your cue. He looked looked nervous. It'll be fine. You remember the signal, right? He nodded. Thanks, Zozo. You're a good friend. He headed toward the side of the base and disappeared around the corner. We waited a few minutes and then we heard a loud monkey call. That was our signal to go. Then we saw the front gate start to open. Good job, Barry. We charged through the front gate and into the courtyard as we started looking around. I even saw my parents. Zozo! Mom! Dad! We're here to rescue you! My friends started working on getting the cages open while I headed upstairs. On day 99, I found the lair of the hunter. He had all sorts of animal pelts all over the place and even more guns. Sheesh, this place gave me the creeps. I knew we would meet again, young zebra. I turned around, ready to attack. The hunter was there, but he was holding Barry hostage. Give me my friend back, hunter. Oh, you mean this traitor? I don't think so. I think instead I'll just add him to my collection. He waved his gun around the room full of pelts. No! I activated the totem and disappeared. I knocked the hunter away from Barry and told him to run. Then I charged the hunter. He blindly shot around the room, but he had no idea where I was. Barry wasn't so lucky, though, and got hit as he made his escape. That's a cheap move, Zebra. Disappearing so I can't see you? Says the guy who captures animals and then enslaves them. He got a few lucky shots in, but I was able to deliver the final blow. I unequipped the totem and ran over to Barry. He had been hit and he looked pretty bad. Oh no, Barry, I'm so sorry. I promised I would keep you safe. 
It's okay, Zozo. I did what I needed to do. Thanks for being my friend. Barry put his head down and was gone. He had made many mistakes, but in the end, chose to do the right thing. On day 100, I felt a surge of power, and I leveled up into a large adult zebra. I was stronger than ever, and knew that from now on, I could protect all of the animals in the savannah. My friends had figured out how to open the cage doors, freeing all of the animals from the hunter's base. I was finally able to talk to my parents. It was a beautiful reunion. We were all free at last. If you want to see what I'll do next, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching. On day one, I spawned in as a cute and not so ugly little duckling. I'm so tiny. I've only got two hearts. I guess that checks out. I'm not strong. I'm just a square of fluff. At least I can fly. Nope, I can't fly yet, but I can swim. And check out my duck family. I've got a mama duck and a bunch of duckling siblings. They were all swimming in a pond. Hey guys, wait up for me. Wow, this sure is peaceful. Just paddling along. My siblings and I had a great time splashing around together and following Mother Duck around. We didn't even run into any trouble. As the sun set that night, we made a little shelter and all huddled together to go to sleep. Maybe this will be an easy 100 days of survival. Hey, a duck can dream. On day two, we were all awoken by the sound of loud barking. I looked around and saw we were surrounded by some mean looking dogs. Our little duck shelter was super weak. The dogs got right in and started attacking us. Oh no, I would have to be brave. Feel the wrath of my mighty beak. I tried to fight back, but I instantly realized that a little duck stands no chance against big mean dogs. We would have to make a run for it. My duck family and I fled away, waddling as fast as our little webbed feet could take us. But it was no use. The dogs ended up surrounding us again. I have to do something. Whoa! Next thing I knew, I was tumbling fast down a steep hill. Ouch! Oof! You could definitely say I was on a roll. I fell with a splash into some water at the end of the hill. I was nowhere near my family anymore. They were all still far above me. My family was being kidnapped. I did what I could to find my way back in time to save them, but by the time I arrived, everyone was gone. Oh, no. This is not good. What'll I do without them? I made my way back to where I first saw my family. I wish I was playing with the other ducklings right now. I don't want to be all alone. If I wanted to survive long enough to find out what happened to them, I'd have to find some place to hide. I noticed a little hole along the edge of the pond and ducked into it. No pun intended. I waited out the night there and decided to track down my duck family in the morning. On day three, I woke up without any issues from the other predators. I hopped out of the hole in hopes of seeing that my family had returned. But to my great disappointment, there were no signs of other ducks around. With nothing else to do, I went around and started collecting and mining materials to build a better shelter. I didn't want to be out in the open if the dogs returned. I'll have to be smarter than the average bird brain when I build this shelter. I need to keep the big, bad dogs out. Eventually, I had a good amount of supplies and started crafting my craft table, wood tools, and then began the beginnings of my little house by the shore of the pond. Location, location, location. This house had a great view. It was the perfect spot for a duck like me. On days four to five, I still needed lots more materials for my base. I had to waddle off a little farther away from the pond to get more materials. Suddenly, I saw a peacock in the distance. I came closer and asked the peacock if I could get some wood. I explained my situation to him. The bird gasped. My family was kidnapped by a group of dogs, too. No way! What are the chances of that happening? Do you know where our families were taken? The bird wasn't sure, but explained that they were being kept somewhere so their feathers could be harvested over and over. That's awful, ruining lives just for some measly feathers. We heard a rustling and out jumped an ocelot. The peacock was instantly spooked and ran away. I wish I could get away. But that wasn't an option for me. I would have to be tough. I was only a tiny duck, but I wanted to find my family. I couldn't let this cat ruin my chances to do that. I was able to dodge a lot of the attacks the cat threw at me. Then, without too much trouble, I defeated that rascally cat. You were a bad putty tat. Once the cat was gone, I could feel myself changing. I was leveling up. I wasn't a little duckling anymore. I was a little bit bigger duckling. I had extra hearts and let's test out these wings. Hmm, I can fly a little bit. I'm a flying talking ducky now. I could only fly a short distance, but it would give me some much needed advantages. This was neat. On day six to eight, I returned back to my base and started crafting some stone tools. As I worked, I started hearing something outside. I carefully went and looked around. I was hoping to see my duck family, but instead I saw one of those awful dogs sniffing around my house. I wasn't going to let him get away with his evil deeds. He would be sorry for stealing my family. Hey, you, dog, who are you? And what have you done with my family? The dog refused to give any information. Instead, it lurched at me. The dog probably thought that this would be an easy fight, but this time I had my stone tools. I was ready to take him down, and that's just what I did. Once the dog was gone, I saw that it dropped a note. I picked it up and read it. The note was in order for the dog to find the duck that got away and to bring me back to the farm located in the Badlands. Aha, I will quack this case soon enough. Now I knew they were somewhere in the Badlands. Having that dog come after me proved to be a very helpful thing after all. On days nine to 10, I did not want to waste any time. I traveled towards the Badlands. 
Having my new ability to briefly fly came in handy. Whenever I'd come across ravines or other obstacles, I could flop my way right across them. Up, up, and away! By and by, I made it to the Badlands with no harm done. I spotted the farm, but it didn't look so much like a farm. It looked more like a prison. There were so many sad animals fenced in and caged up. So many birds in cages! That's so mean! Birds need to be free to flap and fly. They shouldn't be cooped up. I noticed all the depressed animals, but I didn't notice the big wolf guard staring me down until I was close to her. I assumed she would yell at me, but instead, she lowered her voice. You shouldn't be here. I would run far away from here if I were you. Wait, huh? you're not going to try and capture me? Not if I don't have to. I'm not exactly happy with what is happening here. I'd leave myself, but things are complicated. Who is in charge here? I shouldn't be telling you any of this, but if you must know, he is a powerful monster. A big, big, big dog. Fearsome and powerful. No one dares go against him or you'll be destroyed. Just then, another guard came out of nowhere and attacked me. You need to go to obedience school. Didn't anyone tell you not to bite? I tried to fight back, but the guard was too strong. There's only one way out of this. I would have to run. I didn't like the idea of running away from my family, but I knew if I wanted to help them, I'd have to live to fight another day. I took my chance, flapping my wings. I dashed away from the farm. On days 11 to 12, I ran away. I decided to take a rest in a tree. My wings and legs were getting so tired. I was new to this flying thing. I was getting ready to rest my eyes when I heard hooting. At first, I wasn't sure where the voice was coming from, but then I noticed an old owl on a branch. Who, who are you, young duck? Oh, I didn't see you there. Pardon me. I'm Zozo. What's your name? Who, I am Wayma the Wise. Who are you running away from? I'm running from these dogs that are rounding up a lot of birds and other animals. They are throwing them in cages. They took my whole family. You should be very careful. You don't want to end up in a cage. Who? I know of who you speak. For this happened when I was a young owl, not much bigger than yourself. Animals were being taken from their homes and forced to do the bidding of their captors. We fought together and eventually defeated our foe. I'm much too old to fight again, but I can see the world is in need of a hero. Perhaps that hero is you, Zozo. Who? Me? I don't know about that. I wasn't so sure that I could save the day. I couldn't even defeat one of the guards, but I knew I would do whatever I could to help my family escape. I bid the old owl goodbye and thanked him for his wisdom. I headed back to my base. I needed to regroup and figure out a plan. On days 13 to 15, I woke and realized what time it was. Upgrade time! I wasn't strong enough yet to go up against these dogs in the Badlands, but I could make my base more secure. After all, they could be sending more dogs out to grab me at any minute. So I started improving my little lakeside home. Man, I can't believe Big Dog is capturing all these animals. It's so messed up. If I didn't figure out something quick, more animals would be in trouble. I finished my upgrades and really wished my duck family could see the home I was building for them. I think they would get a quack out of it. Thinking of them made me get an idea. I could totally have them with me, just in a different way. A statue way. You know what time it is, right? Statue making time! I began building and thought about how the ducks taught me a lot. Life should be spent with the ones you love and being free as a bird. I liked the way it was coming along. The statue family would keep me company until I rescued my real family. I was really getting into building the statue when I heard a bird chirping excitedly. It was the peacock that had run away from the wild ocelot. Well, bless my soul, it's you. Good to see you're still alive after that run-in with the cat. Yeah, me too. My name is Zozo, by the way. I'm Taffy. I noticed your nice lake house. Did you build that all on your own? Yep, now I'm working on a statue of my duck family that got taken away. It's hard living on your own, isn't it? I miss my family too. Say, you could live here with me if you want. We can keep each other safe. I am working on a plan to rescue our families. Taffy thought that sounded great. As long as I won't be too much of a burden. I went inside and I made sure that she had everything a bird could need. On day 16 to 19, I decided it was past time I got around to making some iron weapons. I wandered around the area and after a bit of flying around, I spotted something interesting. It was a mine shaft. Ah. Bingo! I entered the mine and followed the maze tracks to some iron. Of course, it wasn't a walk in the park down in the mines. It was a walk in the dark. I met some zombies and skeletons down there that were interested in ending my life. Back off, I've got a sword and I know how to use it. I started swinging my sword at them and had a couple close calls, but I knocked them out pretty quickly. It was good to see I was learning how to hold my own. Still, I didn't care to run into any more creatures, so after I had enough iron, I booked it out of the mine as fast as I could. Back at the house, I readied my supplies and got to work, crafting my stronger weapons and armor with my crafting table. These will give me the edge I need to go up against those tough guards. On days 20 to 22, it was time to release the Quacken. I told Taffy to keep a bird's eye on the base while I returned back to the Badlands. This time, I would be ready. Those guards won't see me coming. 
because this time I wasn't going through the door. I was flying overhead. I know what you're thinking. I wasn't the most accomplished flyer, but I could fly better than those dogs could. It was worth a try. As I approached the walls of the farm, I took a running start and launched into the air. I'm like a flying ninja. Yay, there's a duck flying over our walls into the farm. Now that's what you call a bird brain. Well, I guess I wasn't as stealthy as I hoped I was. I landed near the guards. Wait a second, it's that troublesome duck that keeps getting away from us. Get him! I jumped into the air, dodging attacks. Toucan, play at this game, on guard! I got out my weapons and started handing out damage. I, I couldn't lie, it was a bit daunting. They would get a hit or a bite, but with my armor protecting me, they were toast after a few hits. What a rough day for you dogs, getting your tails handed to you by a little duck like me. Finally, I had finished the guards off. I didn't waste any time searching for my family. I started running all around the ground searching for my family. I wanted to save all the other animals I saw, and I I promised myself I would help them. But first, I had to locate my family. But they weren't in any of the cages or fences. Where are they? What is all this squawking and hollering? A chill ran down my spine. A giant creature stomped loudly out of the foreboding base. It was enormous. A big dog. I was terrified. Guards, why are you letting some pipsqueak cause such a ruckus, eh? Looks like somebody ought to teach this quacker a lesson. Big dog let out a pss, pss, pss. Out came a tiger. He charged at me. I tried to fly away, but it was no use. This big cat could jump. Hi! I used my weapons, and his attacks broke my armor quickly. I was exposed, and I was losing hearts fast. Hiya! A big wolf came bounding into the fight. It was the nice guard. She told the tiger to back off. Let's get out of here. We ran for it. Who knew how many more guards would come running after us? Or worse, big dog. Shockingly, the tiger didn't chase after us. After a while, we felt safe enough to stop running. You saved my life! I couldn't stand by any longer, and you're really brave. You might have what it takes to take down the farm. I failed to save my family for a second time. I think it's pretty obvious I can't do that. The wolf assured me that she believed in me. It was nice, but I still felt awful that I hadn't saved them yet. Where are you going to go now? Honestly, I didn't think that far ahead. I just couldn't let you become catnip. I have a base I'm building with another bird friend. Why don't you come live there until you figure things out? I'd be very grateful to stay with you both. I led the way back to the lake house. By the way, I'm Zozo. What do I call you? Awoo is the name. Mm, seems fitting. On days 23 to 26, we got back to the base. Taffy greeted us, and I introduced Awoo to Taffy. I'll need to do some upgrades and add a room for you, Awoo. It shouldn't take too long. I made sure to make the room nice and spacious for Awoo. It was the best room in the house. I noticed I hadn't added to my statue in a while, so I got to work on that too. You know, I think I'll add my friends to this piece. I'd like to honor all my good friends and family. Just then, a woo came trotting up. Wow, this is looking great. Everyone watching should subscribe so that they can see all the other cool stuff you'll make. What do you mean everyone who's watching? It's just us here. Uh, they know who they are. On days 27 to 31, I went out exploring to find new resources. I was pecking around when I heard someone who sounded very upset. I followed the voice and came upon a raccoon. Hello, is everyone okay? No, everything is not okay. I've been kicked out of my house by a big old monster. He thinks he can just push me out of my home because he's mean and can destroy me super fast. Huh, nobody ain't got no respect these days. I tried to calm the raccoon down and asked him to show me to his house. He walked away and showed me to his home. I approached the door and sure enough, there was a monster cooped up inside. The monster growled and told me to get lost before I became its next meal. Listen, this isn't your home. You really shouldn't take things that aren't- Are you still talking? Be gone! Be gone or be eaten! Silly food talking back to a predator such as I? If I weren't so cozy in here and already eaten three meals today, why I'd gobble you up in one bite. Scram, pests! It was clear this rude guy wasn't going to listen to anything I had to say. I'd have to teach this guy some manners. And I had an idea. On days 32 to 35, I started digging near the raccoon's house. What we had here was a reverse three little pigs situation. In this scenario, the big bad wolf is inside the house and I need to blow the house down. And to do that, I started to dig a tunnel deep down under the house until I found some lava pools. Wow. This was one pool I did not want to get my feathers wet in. Now that I knew where the lava was, I headed back out of the tunnel. The next part of my plan was to find some creepers. As I came out of the hole, I quickly found some. I'm just here for your gunpowder. Don't mind me. Now that I had gunpowder, I just needed one more thing, sand. I headed to the riverbed and gathered a bunch up. With the gunpowder and sand, I crafted some TNT. I think you might know where I'm going with this. I returned to the tunnel that I dug under the raccoon's house and ran down to the lava pools. I carefully set the TNT next to the lava and began setting a fuse up and out of the tunnel. Match, set, light. Everything was going according to plan. 
On days 36 to 39, I waddled up to the front door and called out to the monster. The door opened to reveal the grouchy foe. Hello again. I thought I'd let you know that you have a limited time offer to leave this house before I huff and puff and blow this house down. And how do you suppose to do such a thing? Easy. I have a brick of TNT nearby and a fuse that's ready for me to light. TNT? It's dynamite, and I'll win this fight. I would slither on out of here if I were you. This house isn't worth your life. You talk too much, duck. I yield to no one. Be gone. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. I activated the fuse and down the signal went into the tunnel. I took cover. There was a giant explosion and the floor of the house gave way, sending the monster to his fiery grave. Yes, my plan worked. The raccoon was nearby and watched the whole thing. Was your plan to destroy my entire house? The raccoon was not exactly happy, despite the fact that the monster was gone. I felt bad. Maybe I had been a little intense with my plan. Now how am I going to afford to rebuild my house? Put it on my bill. That was a joke. I don't actually have any money, but what I do have is a really big lake house that would totally fit you. I have other friends staying there too. Why don't you come stay there with us? The raccoon grumbled but agreed. He was still a little sore about his house being blown to smithereens. I showed him the way to the lake house and we made our way there. On days 40 to 43, we arrived back to the lake house. The raccoon sure was a grouchy fellow, but something about him was endearing too, like an angry little elf. They are just adorable when they get mad. You can't help but smile when they yell at you. I showed the raccoon around and created him a raccoon-tastic space for his home. I went over to my statue creations. We had my duck family and taffy. I loved how it was looking. It was only right to build a statue of the raccoon too. I started building the raccoon statue. Looking at all these family and friends in the statues made me think about another creature that had been so nice to me, Waymar the wise owl. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Maybe I'll go visit him and see if he would like to stay at the house. We are safer in numbers. I don't want him getting captured. On days 44 to 49, I returned to the tree where the owl lived. I found him sitting under the tree, but he didn't look so good. Huh? Mr. Waymar, are you okay? Who? Who? Ah! Zozo, my dear boy. <coughs> I was worried you might have been one of the henchmen. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. It's hard to get food and such these days. I can't fly, you see. I'm kind of stuck in this tree. That was not good. I couldn't stand by and let Waymar suffer. I told Waymar that I wanted him to come live at the house with us and we would help take care of him. He was so grateful but didn't know how he would get there. I'll figure out something. I'll find a way to carry you there. I immediately thought of the minecarts in the mines. Oh, those would work great. I just needed a way to push it along. I headed back to the mine and started collecting the tracks for the cart. I would make a track from the owl's tree to the base. That should be enough. I took everything back to the owl and laid some tracks down and rebuilt the cart. Climb aboard! Once he was in, I pushed Waymar along in the cart, picking up the tracks as I went along and setting them ahead until I made it all the way back to the lake house. I was excited to build him a room in the house. My little misfit family was growing so much. Waymar was super grateful for the help. He couldn't believe he had us to care for him now. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I'm an owl. On days 50 to 53, I decided to go deeper in the mine to find some diamonds. I hadn't seen diamonds yet, but I was certain I'd run into some if I went a little farther in. As I went deeper, I ran into a big stinky toad. I smell something most foul, and it's not me. Aha! Care for a slice of my sword? I swung my sword while the toad tried hitting me with his tongue. He was no match for me though, and I quickly took him out. I went a little farther and ran into some tarantulas too. Ooh, these guys creep me out. I made quick work of them, swinging my sword as hard as I could. They too were soon gone. That's when at long last, I had found the diamonds. I mined them up as quickly as I could and then headed back home to make them into things. I made a strong pair of armor and some super strong weapons. As they say, diamond weapons hurt forever. I definitely felt I had a better chance of kicking bad guy booty with these upgrades. I just needed to figure out where my family was being held. As I was crafting, one of my friends told me Waymar needed to see me, so I went to his room. Hey, Waymar the Wise, you wanted to see me? Oh, oh, Zozo, I have loved being here. I feel so much happier. Oh, <coughs> I hate to seem ungrateful for asking you anything, so you know what? Never mind. It was silly anyways. No, please, I want to help. I'm happy to do anything. Anything at all. Well, okay, if you insist, I have the most overwhelming craving for a tropical fish. I loved eating it when I was younger. My siblings and I would devour them when we were in the nest together. <coughs> oh, how I miss those days. Sure, that's no trouble at all. I'll go right away. Waymar was so excited to hear I would help him. I started on my quest immediately. On days 54 to 57, I finally reached the water. There was a perfect spot for catching tropical fish. Now if I was a gorilla or hoglin, I might have trouble getting this fish, but I was a duck, so I was in luck. I paddled out into the water and dove after the fish. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. 
I spotted a school of fish and started swinging my sword. Eventually, I got one. I kept swinging until I had gotten a few more. Well, now to simply swim back to the shore with no problem. Ah! Somebody bit my tail feathers! It was a shark! I was under attack! Actually, I was more over attack as the shark was below me. Oh, you like picking on smaller fish, do ya? Wait a second, don't you eat smaller fish too? Well, yeah, but that one was supposed to be mine. Now scram! I fought the shark. It was tough, but eventually I won thanks to my upgrades. Oh, check me out! I'm growing! I'm a much bigger duck now! Wow. I had leveled up! Finally! Hey, maybe I can fly now! I thought a happy thought, took off running, and started flapping my wings. I zoomed into the air! This was amazing! I can fly! I can fly! I can fly! On days 58 to 62, I arrived back in the base with the fish. As I climbed into the base, I saw that Waymar was even worse off. Oh no, Waymar, you don't look so good. Here, I brought you your favorite fish. This should help. <coughs> Thank you, Sozo. I don't have the energy to eat it just yet. Let me just put it here. I remember when Mother would return home with the fish back in 1932, just as you just did. <coughs> she liked them lightly pan-fried <coughs> and put a dollop of cranberry sauce on, on, on the side. Waymar? Waymar? Waymar suddenly passed away with a smile on his face. I wondered if I had gotten him the fish sooner if I would have saved him. But I was also glad he took his final breath, knowing he was cared for and not alone. He was going to be very missed. On day 63 to 66, I was moping around the base. I felt so sad, and that was okay. I just needed to let out my feelings and be upset. I went over to the statues and had a good sob while I added another one to the bunch. I wanted to honor Waymar's memory by adding him to the group. The statue made me feel better, and I could smile again. There was my wise friend Waymar staring back at me. This place was becoming a whole museum full of statues. It was beautiful. On day 67 to 70, Awu came up to tell me that they had found something. It's a note from Waymar. You're going to want to read this. I took the note and read it. Zozo, check out the old fort east of here. Your family might be there. And remember, things aren't always what they seem. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Believe in yourself and your plans. What was that supposed to mean? It was a nice sentiment, but I feel like it was some kind of coded message. I'd try to remember that. Well, Awu, looks like I need to follow these clues. Can you help keep watch over the lake house while I'm gone? Awu was up for the task. In the morning, I would take my leave. On day 71 to 74, I went in search of the hidden prison in the tundra. As I traveled across the snowy forest, I spied a fort hiding in the mountains. Is that it? I saw that the fort was active and that there were guards that looked just like the ones from the farm. They were carrying large shipments of feathers out of the fort. This place must be a prison where the other ducks and birds are being held captive. They are harvesting their feathers. My blood boiled. I didn't waste another moment. I drew my diamond weapons and with my diamond armor, I charged in. I started swinging my sword with all my mighty duck strength. Those guards didn't stand a chance. I couldn't believe how easily I blew through them all. Feel the wrath of my revenge. I made my way into the prison, cutting down anyone who stood in my way. I was feeling like I could take on anything at this point. On day 75 to 78, I reached a room that looked important. I barged in, unafraid, and saw the tiger that had almost destroyed me back at the farm. I felt a tinge of fear creep back into me. Did I have what it took to go up against him? Regardless, what choice did I have now? My family could be in this very room. I shook off my fear and went head to head with the cat. Or clawed a sword, rather. This tiger was still tough. I got lots of good hits in, but he was so strong. It wasn't doing that much damage. He was good at blocking, too. He even scratched me a few times. And I saw tons of birds in cages. Maybe my family wasn't here. As we fought, I noticed a big lever. It looked important. I took a chance and hit it hard. All of a sudden, the cage door swung open. The birds were free. The tiger was in shock at his sudden misfortune. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Some of the birds started to attack him. While he was distracted by all of the birds flying out of their cages, I was able to attack his weak spot. He was done for. The tiger was no more. I looked around the room and saw my baby duck siblings. They were so excited to see me and couldn't believe how much I had grown. I was so relieved to see them. And where's Mama Duck? The ducks look sad. Mama got taken by the big bad dog to his mansion. The other birds say that it's on some sort of volcano. That seems like a bad place to build a mansion. This dog isn't as smart as I thought. Don't worry, little ducklings. I will rescue Mama. On day 79 to 84, I spent some time searching the room where I had originally found the tiger. You never know what kind of information you can find, and this tiger was clearly a leader of this operation. 
He had all sorts of confidential information laying around, and if nothing else, I could take his valuables. He didn't have any use for them now that he was toast. I looked all around and found a treasure chest. Bingo. I opened it up and found a map. I looked closer. Well, waddle you know, a map right to the Volcano Mansion. Wow. And what else do we have here? I saw that there was a whistle in there too. I blew it, but nothing happened. Huh? Why he kept a broken whistle, I'll never know. But uh, I'll just keep it, just in case. With the room fully inspected, I went back to the ducklings. All right, you guys, let's get the quack out of here. I built you a home that's super secure. Let's go. I saw some of the birds that had helped in the fight against the tiger. They looked unsure of where to go and what to do. I invited them back to the lake house with us. They were very grateful and agreed to come with us. We waddled as fast as we could back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I returned safely home with all my ducklings in a row. I immediately started expanding the house and made more rooms for all of the birds. They loved their new living quarters. Sure beats a small cage. Awu and Taffy had something exciting to show me while I was away. We built something very enchanting. They had found items to make an enchanting table and had what we needed to enchant my armor. Wow, thank you, this is incredible. If I wanted to rescue Mama Duck, I needed to be as ready as possible for going up against Big Dog. This would give me a fighting chance. On days 90 to 94, I walked over to my field of statues. They were almost all done. I just needed to finish building the rest of Waymar's statue. I was so excited to reveal all of my statues to my friends. As I looked at Waymar's statue, I thought about the strange note he had given me. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Huh, you know, that gives me an idea about something. I put the finishing touches on the statues and it was finally finished. A field of all my favorite friends. What a sight! On days 95 to 97, I knew it was time to go rescue my mom. I followed the map to the mansion on the volcano. This place was spooky. I could see the appeal of building a mansion on the volcano now. That is, if you're an evil villain, it's perfect for that vibe. I had to admit, I felt a bit scared. And that was okay. That didn't mean I was going to run away. No, I was saving my mother. Come dogs or lava. I brandished my weapons and started fighting my way through the guard dogs along the path to the door. On day 98, I was exploring the mansion when I went into a room with a strange looking bunny man inside of it. What the? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh wait, I'm you! You're me! Yeah, you're me from my bunny video! Oh yeah, that was an awesome adventure! When everyone is done watching this video, they should go check that one out! Amazing! Well, I've got a family to save! See ya! On day 99, I made it into Big Dog's lair inside of the spooky mansion. After defeating tons of guards, I felt something funny happening. I was leveling up! This is just what I needed! I needed to be a mighty duck to defeat a massive dog! I'm as strong as I can get now! I was super buff! I was going to give Big Dog some trouble with my new strength. He's going to have to answer to this firequacker. It was time for the ultimate smackdown. I looked around the room and saw Mother Duck in a cage. Mom! Zozo, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question, troublesome quacker. Huh, looks like you haven't learned your lesson. And you've been hitting the gym, I see. Like that's gonna help you. I'm here to take my mother home. Can't you see me and your mom are madly in love with each other? Huh? Trying to split us up, are you? I'm not in love with you, you freak. You will be if I keep you locked up long enough. It's called Stockholm Syndrome, love. Look it up. Works in the fairy tales all the time. Dude, you've got some serious issues. This is no way to treat someone you like or love. That's no way to treat anyone. What a weirdo. This dog needed to be put out of his misery. I drew my weapon and attacked Big Dog. I gave him everything I had. Every bit of strength I could muster went into every hit. But he was still too strong. I was barely making a dent. Compared to him, I was like a yappy chihuahua. My blows were just not dealing enough damage. Maybe he was right. Maybe I couldn't defeat him. Had I come all this way just to fail? Then I remembered the broken whistle in the chest. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. I pulled out the whistle and blew it. Nothing. But that's how it was supposed to work. It was a dog whistle. Wow. Only dogs can hear it. Big Dog stopped attacking and sat politely. Good boy. Now play dead. Big Dog's armor came flying off of him. Go look. Big Dog was completely hairless. Big Dog explained that he wanted all the feathers to cover his naked self. There is nothing wrong with being hairless, and I'm sure many of us would have donated feathers to you, but you chose to ruin people's lives over this. I have had enough with your silly excuses. You aren't going to cage up anyone ever again. With that, a gladiator kicked him out of his window and down into the river of lava. On day 100, I let my mom out of the cage and we went back to the lake house. The ducklings were so excited to see their mother. We all had a wonderful reunion. I introduced everyone to my new family. 
Everyone couldn't stop raving about all the crazy adventures we'd had and how great the lake house was. We were going to live happily ever after. No more living in cages, just freedom and family.